Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We have an epic day of action today. We've got a double header for you. If you love chess, if you're a fan of anybody, today is the day for you. And for the first time, I get to commentate with my good friend, Grandmaster Benjamin Buck, and I'm Grandmaster Daniel Narodisky. Benjamin, good morning to you. Are you as excited as I am? Good morning, Daniel. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be joining you here today for commentary. And yeah, I'm pretty excited for this match. I think, uh, I honestly have no idea. Who do you think is the favorite, Ding or uh, Aronian? Yeah, I <laughs> will definitely delve more into it as the match goes on. But we have, uh, we've got Ding against Aronian. And as with many of these matches in the SEC, uh, as we remind ourselves here of the bracket, uh, I, I just think the players are so close in strength, Benjamin, that I could see this match going any one of like five or six different ways. So, and, and that's what makes these matches so awesome, at least for me, is, is the unpredictability and the strength of both of these players. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, yeah, both players are not real uh, regulars, you know, on chess.com. You know, they're not playing casually. And uh, Aronian won his match against Dubov by a three-point margin, but there was a bit of luck involved because as Dubov was catching up, he had a few disconnects. So they definitely played a role there. Uh, Ding knocked out uh, Mamajarov, so, uh, but also by like a two-point margin. So I think, uh, I think it's going to be a very, very close one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Aroni and I remember that match with Dubov, uh, and it was very frustrating to see that from Dubov. But here, hopefully, both of their internet connections will be fine throughout the match, and uh, the prizes that they're playing for are certainly fine as well. We are um, in the quarterfinals, so there's 3,000 to the winner, and then 3,000 divided by win percentage. And once again, that's a great touch uh, because obviously, even if the match has already been decided, uh, the players are still giving every game their all because there's quite a bit of money still on the line, Benjamin. Wow, this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a lot, lot uh, very exciting. Um, yeah, I uh, like I said, I have no idea who who's gonna win. Um, yeah, well, yeah. If if you have to if you have to pick a player now, who who would you pick? I'm going to pick Ding, but I'll explain uh -huh. that choice on the other side of the break. You know what I would also pick if I uh -huh. wanted to make a crypto account, I would pick Coinbase to do it because the Speed Chess Championship is presented by Coinbase. And whether you're looking to make your first crypto purchase, how's that transition, or you're an experienced trader, Coinbase has you covered. Visit coinbase.com slash chess and receive $5 in Bitcoin when you sign up and verify your account. All right, we're going to go on a quick break. And on the other side of this break, we are going to start our first SEC match of the day. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Be right back.
How many brilliant moves have you played? When do you play your best chess? How many games have you won by castling in the end game? How many opponents have you played from New Zealand? And most importantly of all, how many Botez gambits has Alexandra Botez played? Find the answers to all of these questions and many, many more at chess.com slash insights. Our new tool that lets you dive deep into all of the fun and instructive data behind your chess. Try it today. Make sure to check out your own stats by going over to the brand new insights page at chess.com slash insights. And speaking of insights, we have a few for you uh, as this match gets started. Benjamin, we have Aronian ending games in the end game 15% more often. Ding ends games in the middle game 15% more often. Does that tell you anything about how you think this match is going to go? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I'm a little bit surprised. Um, I, I would always think of Ding as more of a grinder and Aronian as more of a dynamic player. So you think Aronian would win more games in the middle game. But um, yeah, I think um, I think we're going to see a pretty exciting match. Both players are very enterprising players. Um, yeah, what do you uh, what do you think Ding's main opening is going to be? And what do you think Aronian's going to stick to? Yeah, the openings are are a mystery to me. I mean, it's been so hard to predict any of the openings in any of the SCC matches. And I think broadly speaking, you can put SCC matches into two categories. Uh, category one are matches where the players basically choose an opening uh, and, and, and stick with it throughout the match. The second type uh, is the match where players keep varying across different openings. And I also just before the games begin, wanted to take a look at our smarter chess prediction because right before the break, Benjamin, you put me on the spot and I, uh, I did, you know, again, you put me on the spot. I predicted a ding victory. Smarter Chess disagrees with me, and I love that. I love disagreeing with Smarter Chess. It's giving a small edge to Levon Aronian. I don't know what I make of that. I'm not too familiar with their bullet play. How does that sound to you? Yeah, I think Aronian is probably a small favorite in the Blitz portion. I think he also won the World Blitz Championship. Um, I don't know what year, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that he won uh, one championship. However, I do expect Ding to be a favorite in a one plus one portion, especially since Aronian was struggling there against um, against Dubov. And the one plus one portion is always very tricky because there's still a lot of games to be played. So Ding maybe could make a huge comeback if he sees himself behind in the match. What do you think? And that's what happened in Aronian Dubov, right? Aronian had a big lead, and then yeah. Dubov. I, was it in the bullet that Dubov started coming back? I think it was. Yeah, in the um, bullet. He was like uh, six games behind or, or a huge margin. He and was I think as he was, mm -hmm. yeah, as he was about to come back to two games, he then lost by disconnect. And then, and then it became four and it was over. Man, but you could tell that Levon was, he was losing confidence in the bullet. And I agree yeah. with you. I think he's going to have to patch that up in this match because it's, there's a high probability that the score is within two or three heading into the bullet. As the gong sounds and the games begin, and Ding Liren ha having the white pieces in game one, we have a Queen's Gambit accepted. Yeah. Um, is... So, yeah, here after a6 from black, there's a ton of options. There's knight c3, queen e2, rook e1, b3, rook e1 played. Yeah. Rook e1. So is the idea here to play, because uh, I'm not a specialist in these positions <laughs> at all, I guess white's, is white actually preparing me for, or is it more of a waiting move? Yeah, I think the point is to go for e4. Um, which So rookie one can be seen as more of an aggressive approach. Mm -hmm. You can also play this a bit more positionally, like, positionally, as I said, with a move like b3. So, not, so knight c3 and b5 are played. So I think it's kind of funny. Since white put the rook on e1, I think he's happy if black takes on d4, because then after e4, his rook is on the open file. Uh -huh. um, but we see a different direction. Interesting. So we have a... A, a trade on c5. Currently, white is up a pawn. Bishop yep. takes f3 can be met with queen takes f3, hitting the rook in the mm -hmm. corner. Now, clearly, this is some sort of theory, but Aronian taking the first serious think of the game. Ding still almost all, having all of his time left. Well, black is the one that has to prove compensation. I guess Aronian can maybe just castle here and basically procrastinate yep. on the question of winning the pawn back. I don't know. He's taking a while here. 
Yeah, you made a good point Just about seven. the tactic. Um, the bishop takes of three could be met with queen takes. And uh, yeah, it looks like a tricky opening for Levan because white has the two bishops. And black, you know, potentially the a6 pawn could be a bit weak, but white still has to finish his development. The bishop on c1 feels right. slightly awkward. So how do you think he's going to deal with that? Well, ideally, you would go b3, bishop b2, and, and establish these, you know, slicing bishops. You know, bishop d2 is also possible, but I feel like there's always awkwardness associated with this kind of development. I think that's the question Ding's asking himself right now. He could also stall and, and just play a move like bishop f1 or get his queen to e2, for example. So there's a lot of options here. For Aronian, I mean, I guess he wants to play knight c5. He wants to castle. The eval bar is showing a slight edge for white. I guess that's a lot of that is due to the to the two bishops. But I mean, a big question is whether Ding can finish his development successfully here. Yeah, you make a good point. Uh, I think like if he manages to consolidate, white should have a small advantage. But on the same hand, black is going to play knight c5 pretty soon, I guess. And indeed, the bishop on d3 will be under attack. A4 will be always, you know, a bit of a target. If white plays b3, that will be a target because black can play knight c5. And knight a5, knight e5 is also an option for black. So I think it's, it makes a lot of sense for black to just castle on the next move. Maybe followed up with rook to c8 and not show his cards yet where he wants to put the knight. Uh, so then he always has annoying uh, responses to whatever white is going to do. And Ding taking, I want to say almost two minutes on this move, which is a pretty long yeah. thing for a five-minute game. This always reminds me, Benjamin, of this well-known video on YouTube of, um, I want to say, Vichy taking two minutes on his third move in an over-the-board blitz tournament with Maurice Ashley right. commentating. And it was just a shocking moment. Literally, <laughs> E4, E5, Knight F3. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and he took two and a half minutes and then won the game. So Yeah, but that was insane because that was without increment. Right. Yeah, and it was even particularly here, crazy. Even here with the increment, I do agree with you. It feels like Ding is taking way too long. He's taking yeah, I mean, way over two minutes. Um because five plus one is a lot of time, but you know the one second is not a lot. If you get uh, if you get to the increment, you're very prone to blunders. Right, Ding continues to ponder his next move. I mean, I, I I can tell that he's concerned about I think the danger of him not being able to develop his, his dark skirt bishop because white could end up being worse here. Black could institute this clamp on white's position, as you mentioned, knight c five, knight a five. Yeah. But man, oh man, he's down to two minutes. This is one of the longest things I think we've ever seen in an SEC yeah. five-minute game. This is up to three minutes. And finally, yeah. Ding plays B3, mm -hmm. which you know is one of the more uh, tempting moves in the position. I wonder what he was calculating. I guess it was knight C5. Yeah, uh, so I guess he wants to mean knight c5 with bishop to c2, because if you go bishop c4, black probably has uh, has knight a5, or trading a knight a5. Right. Uh, and then b3 is weak, the bishop is under attack. Um, so yeah, let's see what Lovana's is going to do. I feel like if someone has chances for an advantage, it's probably white, because he has the two bishops. I think Lovana needs to be very careful here. But things could, could uh, turn the other way. Yeah, and, and clearly I think something was concerning Ding. Something also concerns the eval bar. Queen f6 by Levon. Mm -hmm. So he yep. hits the rook. He vacates the d8 square, I would imagine, for his own rook. So mm -hmm. he wants d-file pressure. Okay, rook a2 by Ding. A2. Interesting choice. Yeah. I think knight c5 makes a lot of sense here, hitting the bishop. Then maybe you followed up with rook to d8. Aha, uh -huh, it goes for knight, knight e5. e5. That's an uh -huh. uh, interesting move because after knight takes e5, knight takes now he's threatening rook d8. White's Wait, king is also bishop, in a little danger. I was mm -hmm. gonna say, if you go bishop f1, is there a knight f3 check? Ooh, takes takes. Oh, but there's queen d6. Oh, and then the queen, queen comes d6. back to g3. But, but maybe, maybe in this position, like rook d8 first, but then rook d2. Mm -hmm. But you take a knight f3. Probably works, right? Take and knight f3. Yeah, because if you take with the queen, I can. No wait. Yes, that that does work. Wait, but in which actually bishop e2 has been played, so I think he yeah, was worried about that. Played. Yeah, 
Um, so yeah, let's see. Once again, Black has some initiative here on on the with the attack on the G two square. Mm -hmm. But once again, if White manages to consolidate, he has the two bishops. A six can be weak. B four can be weak, and we see Levon castling. I think. Right. I think what you want to do here with White is go rook d two, bishop b two. What do you agree? Because if you play bishop b two immediately, then your rook looks kind of dumb, and you're allowing Black to seize the d file uncontested. Mm -hmm. And you're right. making an important point, I think, about the long-term um, promise of the position for white. I think a lot of people will look at this and say, well, black's got this really strong bishop and an, clearly an initiative against white's king. But Levon, you know, has to be very precise in how he conducts this initiative because, you know, Ding plays bishop b2, maybe f3, e4, uh, black could end up in quite a bit of trouble here. Exactly, yeah. And we see rook a8 played by Levon. Um, bishop b2 looks like the natural move, but there could maybe Oops, be uh, some <laughs> maybe move like queen g5, which becomes very awkward to me because how do you defend g2? So he plays f3, blunting the bishop on the b7 square. Mm -hmm. Um, I think white should have a clear advantage here because I don't see black having any tricks, and then the two bishops should come in handy, but but white only has 40 seconds. Right, and I was thinking about queen g5 with the idea of rook d4, and then maybe there is a trick here. The bishop takes f3, and then mm -hmm. rook takes c1, and knight takes f3. Uh -huh. So queen g5 here? Yeah, I feel like that's a tricky move in white's time pressure. How does white actually uh -huh. defend but, e3? But doesn't white have e4? Oh, simply e4. Yeah, yeah, I completely forgot about that move. And queen e3 check is innocuous due to king h1. Right, yeah. Nice. Um, so he could have played queen g5 on the last move, because then if you go f3, you can pick, uh, you can you can take the pawn on e3. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, here white can't go f3. White might, might have had to go g3 in that position, which is quite weakening. Okay, so h5 by mm -hmm. Aronian. So he uses his pawn here to carve out some of these dark squares. I like that approach. I feel like yeah. in, in time pressure, it's very hard to deal with weak squares. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, but yeah, the annoying thing for Aronian is that like the dark squares of, her, of Ding are weakened, but uh, Levon only has a light squared bishop. So it's very hard for him to do any damage on those squares. He can go queen g5, knight g6, knight f4, but I don't know how effective that's going to be. What, what do you think? I think that's, I mean, I think you should try that um, because yeah. 39 seconds for Ding. If you can create threats against White's king, Mm -hmm. um against ding's king <laughs> see that even rhymes then <laughs> okay 30 seconds this is getting into very dangerous territory i would go knight g6 yeah. here quickly yeah i agree uh yeah but we're talking a lot about ding's time but levon is also under a minute he has 45 seconds uh knight g6 is played yeah the knight is coming to f4 and there will always be tricks so it, it it's going to be a little bit annoying for ding to deal with that yeah bishop f1 very solid mm -hmm. defending g2 and the knight can swing around to h5 and then to g3 yeah wh oh, wherever yeah. there's a knight and a queen you're always going to have annoying threats bishop to d4 Tricks, yeah brings his bishop out potentially to e3 or maybe to f2 right yeah i like that move by ding bishop to d4 um yeah it looks like lavana sort of improved his position to the maximum i don't really see how he can improve any further like he can oh he goes f5 interesting wow very bold move opening up the position yeah, obviously could backfire the... now he's Rook down out. to 10 seconds oh my goodness yeah. takes with the queen that seems a little bit off ding. five yeah we need one looks good here yeah queen takes a five i wonder if he just missed rookie five because now it's just down a pawn Oh, yeah. Like how, what is it? Ding just, okay, knight takes h3, oh, rook a7. Yeah, but now the bishop's hanging, and you can't move it because g 7 is going to fall. I think black's just losing after rook takes b7. Yeah, you just take and now take the knight. It was very important to not take on h3 right away because after bishop takes f3, you'd lose the queen. But right. now, um, yeah, Ding has a two, two bishops for the rook, and oh, and he wins on time. He wins on time. I mean, the position's yeah. already hopeless for black. In right. kind of a weird game because Ding, he took two and a half minutes or almost three minutes, mm -hmm. and Levon had a huge time advantage, but almost imperceptibly, that time advantage slipped away from Levon. And then yeah. Ding just, you know, didn't allow any any kingside play. 
And rookie, yeah, missing exactly. rookie five was the probably the actual decisive mistake. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm quite surprised he missed that. But it's it's actually kind of funny. Like, of course, we talk a lot about the time management of the players, but if you do get a position that is more pleasant to play, it's easier to make moves fast, and then you can easily catch up with your opponent on the clock. And right. Um, wait, is this the opening of the world championship or not quite? Right, like. I think Not Magnus White Knight A5. In instead of, which position? In after H3. I think he played Knight A5 instead of Bishop B7. Oh, that's right. That was the, the rare yeah. move that he essayed uh, in the in the very first game of the match. God, that feels like yeah. an eternity ago. That that feels like <laughs> that feels like 2008, you know, Nepo Carlson <laughs> game one. Because the match has yeah. changed so much in the last couple of days with, with Carlson jumping out to the two-point lead. Um, yeah, no, I agree. But okay, so this game, Ding, by the way, is one of the top proponents of the Marshall, the Marshall mm -hmm. attack, which is which he plays almost exclusively, especially in Blitz. Okay, so interestingly, Levon uh, doesn't take the pawn on e5, and th they yeah. both see that the pawn is hanging. It's just that Black often gets this kind of initiative, Bishop f6, Rookie e8. So Levon, for the moment, playing the sort of typical Ray Lopez maneuver, getting the knight to g3. What do you make of yeah. this? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Like those, these uh, Marshall players really have this sort of obsession with sacrificing the e5 pawn because he hangs <laughs> it yet again. But yep. it is true that Black does get a lot of initiative, and and Levon goes ahead and takes. Finally, it. So, he takes it. Yeah. So how do you think Ding is going to try to develop an initiative here? Yeah, but I mean, Bishop f6 is tempting. I, I guess then we'll have a rook trade. Bishop c5 might run into mm -hmm. c3 and t4 later on. I honestly yeah. have a very poor handle of, of these types of positions. Sometimes I see people moving the knight back, but that doesn't make much sense uh -huh. here. Right. I, I would have yeah. to vote for bishop f6, but yeah, we'll see. I think bishop f6 makes a lot of sense because it makes it difficult for white to develop his queen side. Right? Like the bishop on c1 is stuck defending the pawn on b2. And if you ever go c3, there might be you know b4 from black to soften up the pawns um, that way. So he goes knight to g3, but yeah, I feel like I feel like it is it is really up to Black to prove the compensation. What what do you think? I agree. I, I'm honestly I'm not seeing it entirely just yet because the knight can go to e4, and right. if Levon does that, when Black also has this weak c5 square, and you know the, there's no attack to speak of against White's king for the time being. Okay, c5 is a very typical yeah. typical move in such positions, clamping down yeah. on the queen side potentially preparing various c4 tactics there's potential for black here no doubt about it yeah no i definitely agree with that but i do wonder how he's going to meet knight e4 because if yeah you go, me too because um, bishop e7 is kind of passive bishop, bishop d4 can be met with c3 so yeah i think knight e4 is a good move here well yeah what do you think i, I agree uh, knight e4 maybe there's uh, is, is there maybe the immediate c4 Okay, 94 uh -huh. has been played, so we're about to find yeah. out. <laughs> uh huh. C4 is a good question. Yeah. Um, I, I don't guess feel like calculating to... it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Don. Yeah. Well, nah, Ding, I... Ding can do it. Ding can do it. I don't yeah, I can just is, right, that's sip his my job. coffee yeah. and watch him, okay. watch him suffer. <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, um, can't you take on C4 with the pawn? And if you take on E4 with the rook, I take on D5. Right. And if you recapture on C4, I'm going to I'm I'm just going to take everything. I can see what you want to say. That wasn't that hard, Daniel, was it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Was just, there just any need to puzzles. complain? And yeah. Okay, yeah. Bishop E7 uh for that reason uh -huh. I think. It, it and when you have to make a move like that, that's often a sign that you know that, that your your play has quote unquote failed. I, I still think Black yeah. is very solid here. Uh he's down a pawn, but you know, C3 by Levon, definitely white is white is better without question but things can yeah. turn around in these types of positions really quickly yeah but yeah this is sort of the tricky thing about uh about the marshal like black has some initiative but if white does a good job of neutralizing it you're just going to be down a pawn uh, but i think right now he's looking at c4 hitting the bishop and trying to take away the the d3 pawn so the knight will become undefended so levant still has some problems to solve here how, how do you think he will go about doing doing so well, you could play bishop c2 sort of prophylactically aimed against mm -hmm. c4. Um, I'm also 
flirting with a move queen g4. There's a cool line here. Black goes f5 oh. and screams fork. Here's one pin, two pins, and knight f6 is a really pretty fork. Even, this is actually not even the end of the story. Black can move the king aside. But right. in a liquidation, white's going to just take a second pawn. So yeah. I feel like that's tempting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is a very nice line that you highlighted. Um, I guess queen g4 will be met with takes and c4. Takes and c4, right. That has to be calculated. Yeah. And then bishop c2. c2. So yeah, black can but... try Benjamin's idea here of c4. Bishop right. C2. Or wait, after wait after bishop c2, can't you take on d3 and take on... No, you can't take on c3 because you, you can just block the bishop f1. Oh, you were but... thinking about taking going rookie one check. Yeah, but there's a very there's a very pretty line. If you go king h2, oh, bishop e6, yeah, nice. th that is pretty, but it doesn't work. Yeah, so g3 meets with mate, and what Benjamin is saying is that f4 meets with rook takes c1 and bishop takes f4, but big time, but bishop f1 shuts down all the play. Okay, Ronian, in the meantime, has indeed gone bishop c2, to which mm -hmm. Ding has replied queen c6 in creating this battery yeah. and probably threatening f5. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. What about f5? And then the knight moves, and then there's some rookie one ideas later to distract oh. the white queen from the g2 pawn. I'm not sure I can yeah. make that work, though. Right, and Ding, Ding could not make it work because he played knight of b6, but I feel like it yeah, wasn't that so, possible instead of knight b6. Didn't he have f5? And if the yeah. Moved, knight... I mean, it was complicated because the knight would move and black would move his knight, and then white, white, white wouldn't have to take it, but that was definitely something to explore. In the meantime, right. yeah, Ronian has got F3 and basically mm -hmm. shut down Black's diagonal, but obviously at the cost of weakening some of these squares near the king. Near the king. Yep. And Ding moved his knight back. I feel like two Tempi is not worth spending. You know, White has weakened his king side a little bit, but he did shut down the, the long diagonal, which is really one of um, uh, Black's main, you know, attacking... Um, uh, you know, uh, I wait avenues. So he moved the knight back to g3. I th I feel like if white gets a rook trade in on e1, he should just be up a pawn. Oh, for sure, yeah. And a move like queen f2 here looks good. I guess Ding yep. is attempting to continue to make threats, but there's no no real targets. And like you said, as soon as white plays rook e1, black the the remaining the remnants of Black's compensation are going to largely evaporate. So Ding doing everything he can uh, to discourage rookie one. Right now, he threatens knight takes h3 and invites a trade, which exactly, is perfectly yeah. reasonable for white. Yeah, no, I... Ah, but rookie yeah, so one we... takes and bishop f3. Right, yeah, if you go rookie one now, Black can take and take an f3. Uh, I think Black, you know, has some de decent compensation here. The two bishops... Uh, are pretty tough to deal with. The knight on f1 is very passive. And your extra pawn is a pawn on d3, and you can really use that very easily. So I, I think I think Ding has pretty good compensation. And, and he's up half a minute on the clock. Yeah, he somehow succeeded in manufacturing compensation. I would go king h1 here with white to prepare rookie one. Levon gives the check on b3 first. I mean, I still think king yeah. h1 is a move you should throw in. Uh, I mean, again, I, I think being able to play rookie one here is crucial for white. And there it is. Yeah. Yeah, so king h1 is on the board. Uh, so know that the c5 pawn is... Although, yeah, the c5 pawn is on her attack because rookie two can be met with queen f8 uh, checkmate. So let's see mm -hmm. how Ding will go about defending that pawn. Yeah, no, it definitely needs to be defended and Levon's most likely going to go rookie one next. Okay, queen d6. Yeah. Rook rook one. one. Yeah. Yeah, the nice Evolver is showing equality, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like Black's two bishops are just too strong. Because let's say you play a move like queen e6, right? Then after the queen trade, uh, Black can always go bishop to c1 to go after the white pawns. And once again, this knight on f1 is so passive. So I feel like Black should be completely fine here. Yeah, it's weird. I, I felt like Aronian was, was better. And... After this trade happened on f4 and he got the two bishops, right. that's, I think, when the game had a turning point. And Ronin does play queen e6. And Ding, yep. notice how this bishop just totally dominates 
over the night, at least for the time being, because if Ferronian goes king f2 and knight e3, again, he's going to start consolidating. He's going to get some winning chances. So yeah. for Ding, big decision. Does he go bishop c1? He does. Let's see how he follows uh -huh. it up. Oh, oh, oh. oh, this is a very nice maneuver. Yeah, he he attacks the white pawn. So he gets bishop d4 in before white can play king f2. So now the king is forced to a passive square. And there goes Ding's king. The, the, <clears throat> the dark squares are wide open for his king to enter. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a pathway, a runway through e5. And he can yeah. even move the bishop away from d4 and infiltrate with king d4. Ugh. Bishop e5 here forces a move like king h3. Yeah, that definitely looks awkward for white. So I think Levan wants to put the knight on e2 mm -hmm. to block all of the entry squares for the black king. That's right. So first he's going to play king h3 to defend h4. And just in time, yeah. he goes exactly. 92 and he's hanging by a thread. I mean, if yeah. King D4 is allowed, White can resign, so. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like White should not be risking much here, but can Black really win? That is the question. What do you think? I think Ding actually is going for this idea of going A3 and then Bishop A4 at the right moment, and Levon just blundered Bishop F3, and it's... He's oh, lose. and he hangs the knight, yeah. Yeah, and... now he's got some passers, but just Bishop D4. Oh, look at that Bishop, just stopping everything. Yeah. And you know exactly what you can enough. do is put a bishop on g7 and a king on e7. That is a very nice idea. But I, he went for another idea. His idea was to go a3 and then bishop b1, pick off the pawn, move the bishop, and then make a queen. Right. So we see Ding taking a two-point lead. Um, yeah. Zero. Not looking good for Levon. How do you think he will try to recover from that? Yeah, I mean, he needs to... I mean, it's way too early, of course, to talk about it. He needs to win. But yeah. <laughs> we haven't, also, we haven't had a lot of SEC matches where somebody has jumped out to a big lead. Um, mm -hmm. So, if, for example, if Ding wins this one, I think that would be a first. Uh, right. And for Levon, I don't think the openings have been the problem so far. It sounds like, it just seems like when they hit a critical moment, Ding has mm -hmm. just been sharper in reacting to the specific nuances of the position. So let's yeah. see how Levon handles, handles the middle game in this game. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, I was just wondering what what are the what are the times for the players? I, I guess for Levon, for Levon it must be pretty early, because um, he's in uh, St. Louis, so it's like so it's eight thirty for him. Uh, but what is the right. time for for Ding? Well, if he's in China, then I, I mean I would imagine it's around uh, six p.m. Maybe I'm I'm really bad at estimating time differences i feel like there's probably a nine hour difference with the east coast maybe even more yeah um which is a great time to play chess like 6 7 p.m exactly. for levon and probably a lot of viewers already know this but uh, as of five days ago levon has officially uh changed federations to the united states and now lives in st louis so yeah. that's where levon is playing from not that anybody couldn't tell that i mean the white wall that Levon is playing from that you see in Levon's view. I you can only <laughs> find those walls in St. Louis. I mean, exactly. How could anyone confuse that for any other city? <laughs> right. Yeah. So the the American flag next to his name, uh, it is not you know a glitch. Levon indeed uh, switched five days ago. I think it was already initiated, um, like half a year ago or something. But it finally uh, went through. So yeah, a huge pickup for the for the US. Uh, their Olympic team is now stacked. Do you think anyone can can stop them in in Olympiads? I mean, it's like what do I compare this to? You know, it's like when the Golden State Warriors got Kevin Durant. You know, like they had Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, and they basically already had an All Star team, and now <laughs> now you get Kevin Durant, now you get Levon Aronian. Uh, yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be very fun to watch uh, the next Olympiad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything about basketball, but I totally agree with you. Right. No. Yeah, yeah. as it should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, I, I mean, I'm sure there's a soccer, or I, I apologize, football equivalent as well. Right. But I just um, can't put my finger on it. In the meantime, me... Ding again taking a long yeah. think here in the opening. Yeah, I think I think this should be pretty comfortable for Levon. Um, so I think he should just develop here with a move like, you know, bishop b7. And black shouldn't have too many problems. Um, the position should be slightly more pleasant for white. 
because a6 is always a little bit soft. Um, you know, he, he has the bishop on the long diagonal. He can go rook knight d2, rook c1, rook fd1. And we see Levant trading on e5. What do you what do you think of that trade? That's a very committal trade because this pawn on e5, it, it, it acts as a clamp. White can later get a knight to e4. I, I've never loved playing against this kind of pawn. I mean, sometimes there's f4, f5 ideas, although that's also very weakening. Yeah. And here we have here we have Ding getting his knight to e4. And one other thing I'll point out is if white gets his queen to g4, you have to reckon with constant knight f6 ideas. So right. I, not to overstate the case, I think Levon is completely fine here. But you know, the next the next seven, eight moves are going to be pretty important because we're going to see whether black is able to consolidate or whether ding creates chances on the king side. Even knight d6 here is interesting. Yeah, so do you think he do you think Levant traded on e5 going for an imbalanced pawn structure because he's down uh two points in the match, but also because uh he's up two minutes on the clock? I think probably more the second thing than the first thing. I don't think he's too worried about the deficit just yet. Right. Um, but it is annoying when you know when you've got a big, big time advantage and you're not exploiting it. So uh that might be playing a role in his decision. Okay, so there's queen g4. A knight uh -huh. f6 is not a problem yet because of knight takes f6. And then... Oh, oh, you can take everything, right. You right. can take and everything the and then take f6. Yeah, the queen is forced away from the g4 square, so then there's no more pin. Good point. So, um, yeah, interesting position. Um, maybe why should you play a move like h3? Make sure he never gets back rank checkmated. I agree. Especially... Oh, but is there knight takes... No, there's no knight takes e3. Yeah. Because if rook takes There's... e7 first and then you take the knight. Yeah. So he goes for h4, making a square for the for the king. That's uh, that's good habits. Um maybe move like wait, maybe black can play queen c6 to threaten knight takes e3. I think that's a nice uh -huh. move. getting the queen away from the line of fire of white's rook. So that rook takes e7 doesn't come with tempo. I like that move a lot. Yeah. Um Levon also can't fall asleep here because Ding, uh, you know, is, is going to go h5. Although yeah. even h5 can be met with h6. I don't think Black's king is in any mortal danger. Right. But um, something has yeah, to be done I wonder, nonetheless. I wonder if Ding wants to use that h pawn, you know, get, go h5, h6 to try to induce weaknesses around the Black king. And we've been talking about this earlier, how... Levan got a two-minute advantage right in the in the first game, but then he catches up with Ding on the clock. I feel like he needs to try to keep up the pace and really try to use his time advantage. And he goes h5. That's an interesting idea. He's I think he's gonna yeah. meet Queen takes h5 with knight takes e3. Uh -huh. And this yep. very nice it's very messy, but I think it works out for black because white's knight cannot move aside. And in the event of a trade, you know, this goes without saying that black is is winning here. So yeah. probably Ding, he might have to, yeah, he drops his queen back to g3. Yeah. Um, so let's see what Levon is going to do here. There are some tricks with moves like knight to f4. Because if you take there's knight e2, but then white moves the king. I don't, so I don't know if that actually works out. He can also probably just keep it solid. Two. Yeah, no, knight f4 is really interesting. Yeah. Rook takes d7, knight e2 check. And the, and the funny thing is you can't move the king to f1 or h1. Because you give up the queen with check, so you have to go to h2. But then after rook takes d7, yeah, queen f3 probably. White is fine, right. so. Yeah, so more it than makes five. me wonder. Like, he spent a minute on h5. Queen g3 was played by Ding. So was that not a move he took into consideration? Or I think he was probably queen? mostly calculating queen takes h5, and he considered this to be kind of a win. The fact that yeah. the queen is now not protecting the knight. But mm -hmm. somehow, concretely, it's it's kind of hard to find a move here. Because if you move your knight elsewhere, then you allow knight f6 check. Maybe just king exactly. h8. I don't know. Right, yeah. I, I still like the move, you know, queen c6 to make sure that once you move the knight and white takes mm -hmm. on d7, your queen will never be, be hit by the rook. But he goes g6. So I guess if white ever goes knight f6, uh, then after potential trade, white is not threatening checkmate right away. I'd be worried about knight d6, though, because after a yeah. trade, you've got this bishop wide open along the long diagonal. So if I were Ding, I'd play knight d6 pretty quickly here, just saving some time, yeah. and there, there it is. 
Yeah, he goes neither D6 and Lavon does not want to touch <laughs> that knight. Open that. up the diagonal. <laughs> no. Being... <laughs> then he goes E4, hitting the knight. Um, I think in a blitz game, this is definitely easier to play with white, but it could backfire because, you know, the knight on, on D6, if it comes under attack, white can easily lose a pawn. For sure. Yeah, and, and one thing Ding could consider doing here is actually just doubling on the D file, just trying to solidify this knight on D6. But somehow... Gosh, Levon's position already looks a yeah. little bit dubious. All the bishop f8 is a nice move. Maybe get the bishop around to g7 at yeah. a later point. Yep, and there's rook, rook to d3. d3. Yeah, trying to so, go rook f3, I guess, hitting the pawn on f7 or oh, doubling b, up the rooks. Is there knight b5, maybe? And he goes for it. Uh huh. So now the question is how does Ding defend the pawn? But I guess Ding but can it's... still double on the default. He goes a4. a4. Right, because if you take the diagonal opens up. Ooh, and it's the same problem here with like queen f6 and stuff. Yeah, so huh. can you actually take? I feel like, yeah, it, if you take it, I, like after a trading, let's say queen f6, how do you even defend? No, I think you either have to go knight d4 and try mm -hmm. to bail it out or, or go back to c7. I, I think Levon's going to go knight d4. I feel like, again, the yeah. time situation is equalized and... Yeah. yeah, he goes knight to d4. Oh, rook c1. Takes. Oh, uh, oh, that is very that's nasty. A nasty move. Right, because now you have to go back to a8. Ew, very and, then, and, then, and then why can take the pawn? Oh, that was missed yeah. by, by Ronian and by me. Oh, that's yeah. such an easy move to miss, right? You're calculating. You're like, okay, rook takes d4 has to be played. But the mm -hmm. c file just opened up, and white's queen is perfectly positioned to support the rook here. Yeah. And as we speak, Levon's getting under 20 seconds. I mean, queen eight is the only move in the position, and he goes for it. Ding instantly yeah, snaps he... on d4. Uh, Levon goes b5. Trying now to white should be winning. But you know what white can also do here? You can also go for g4 and just blast open the king side. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's a great eight. idea too. Rook c6, just infiltrating from all sides. Rook b6 maybe. Yeah, or even queen c1. Okay, Ting goes rook c3. Very, um, very methodical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bishop so bishop g7 seven. by Lavon. Rook d3 by Ding. But are there no tactics like okay, b4? He just yeah. There's like the 90, 98 ideas. I mean, I think Ding should just put his king. Oh, he had ninety eight. I think how ninety eight was winning. I think it was in the previous move. I'm not exactly sure but why. There was, there was still rook takes d4. Uh, oh, God. Levon is down to 0 0.1 seconds. Okay, <sighs> queen c7. Ding looking for the final blow. Maybe queen g5. Goes rook f3. Oh, man. Okay, Levon hanging on to the final seconds, but I don't okay. see a win. Rook c3, queen a8, rook d3. He brings the other rook to d3, and Levon with one second. Look, uh, this is so close is to gonna... flagging. Like Every move, rook c7. I mean, Ding is just going to win this. The yeah. evil oh. bar is getting a workout. Okay, just takes the pawn. Oh, okay. oh and he hangs and the slip. queen. <laughs> okay, yeah. and resignation by Levon, yeah. and he's dug himself into a 3-0 hole. And Benjamin, yeah, he's he's up on time. I feel like every game is the same structure. He, he's up a minute and a half, two minutes. Then he takes yeah. all of it on some critical moment, and a Ding has been out uh, out playing him in the in the time scrambles. Quite frankly. Yeah, I feel like Levon, he, he, yeah, he gets a time advantage and he goes for a thing, but he can really, you know, come up with the right sequence of moves. So perhaps, you know, very often in Blitz, uh, uh, it, it was funny. I was playing a tournament in, in Moscow. I think it was back in like 2016 or 2017. And then Vidit was there. And I was telling him like, yeah, I had a good position. I was up on the clock and then I messed it up. And then he told me, well, but uh, Benny, the, the moment you start a thing is the moment you start to mess up. Right. And I feel like that's very much the case here. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're not in, in the greatest form, you start overthinking everything, right? You, you, yeah. you don't trust your intuition because you, you're telling yourself, uh, you know, I, I need to calculate my way out of this slump, but that only exacerbates the problem. Right. Um, although maybe Nepo should have been relying a little bit more on his calculation yesterday. And he played B5. <laughs> it's all a balance. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, 
Yeah, we see uh, a pretty standard nine maneuver here to G3 by, by Lavon and Knight G5 mm -hmm. going for the trade. He's got a what great position. This? He's got a great position. I mean, it, I always love the knight coming to F5 in almost any position. Mm -hmm. uh, bishop back to D2. And one thing to consider here, this bishop may look passive, but white's got a tremendous attacking potential here after he goes knight f5. He's going to have a potential rook lift, uh, a sacrifice on h6. I'm not trying to overstate the case here, but if I'm ding, I'm, I'm seriously considering uh, the, pros the prospect of going d5 or, or trying to get something done on the queen side pretty quickly here. Yeah, he goes c5. I think indeed he has to get d5 and quickly because if white goes like queen f3, knight f5, white indeed does have great winning chance, uh, uh, attacking chances. Also with the bishop on b3, so that um, he always has that pin. Like, let's say he gets knight f5 and queen g3 and black goes g6. Excuse well, me. guess what? You can always just take that pawn. Oh, so man. I think Ding has to do something quickly. And he has to be really careful here. <laughs> you could lose the... Yeah. <laughs> I've lost these kinds of positions in blitz. In like five moves. Knight f5, queen g3, checkmate. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But on the flip side of that, you've also won a lot of those games in blitz. That is all. That is That is a true statement. So I, yeah. I probably Ding is considering D5 here. I, I can almost yeah. uh, hang my hat on the fact that he's thinking about either D5 or Rook C8 and C4. One way or another, I think he's going to have to put this light squared bishop out of commission. Yeah. No, I think D5 has to be played here because, yeah, like I said, if Knight F5 lands on the board, I think the threats are just going to be too tough to deal with. Um, so after D5, do you think White can take on D5 and try to take the pawn absolutely i think that's a viable option and after knight takes d5 you're thinking of just taking it even here right because if you move the knight f7 is whole, always hanging so i'm curious ah, how that's true ding will try to solve this pro maybe c4 oh c4 takes and then like knight and then move the knight then six might or something six, yeah something like it's... this and as we speak like levon is once again up uh one and a half minutes on the clock, man, it just keeps repeating itself like every game. Yep. So, I mean, but this time I feel like he's he's just in control of the situation. Let's see if Ding decides on D5. Yeah. Gosh, Ding has sunk a lot of time into this decision already. And that's another psychological thing. When you take a, a think that's this long, you, you want something to come of it, right? You don't just want to play yeah. a random move like Rook ADA because then why were you spending all that time thinking? So I think yeah. the longer Ding thinks, the higher the probability that he plays d5. No, I agree with that. And yeah, I mean, sometimes it's tough. Like he knows he he knows he's got to move, right? Like he's got this voice extension in his head that, that's yelling at him, like you, you got to go, you got to go, dude. But like, like Kamara it, voice. <laughs> it is <laughs> it is tough. Like you're sitting there, and yeah, time's ticking. Knight f4 and d5. Magnus Carlson comes with the <laughs> boarding lear and taking long time. What to do now? He's down to minute and a half. <laughs> Lavan Aronian, bishop d8. <laughs> bishop d knight f5, queen g3. <laughs> Very that's, dangerous that's the attack by Lavan Aronian, king h7. Queen g3, maybe a rook g8. And the maybe a sacrifice on f7. What is going on here? Yeah, Levon thinking. So he, Levon is thinking, <laughs> no, sacrifice on f7 doesn't actually get anything done because you just get two pieces for a rook and that's not impressive. Right, um, yeah. Queen g3 is, is rook g8. Ding's point here. He, so he doesn't go d5. I, I think he has to, right? Because if you go knight to h5, I just go queen g4. And if you go g6, you hang h6. So I think rook g8 right. has to be played. And then I don't see how exactly... Lev like, this This might be slightly annoying for Levan. Like, he knows his position is great, but he doesn't see an immediate breakthrough. Yeah, this is, again, uh, same type of situation repeating itself. And then he ends up sinking, you know, a, a lot of time into trying to find some way forward. But yeah, queen g3, rook g8. Yeah, queen h4, not impressive. Knight takes e4. Ding's bishop on t8 right. is like yeah. a heroic defender here. King yeah, h7 kinda, is such a nice move. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it, it looks very weird. You think the bishop belongs on f8, so it always defends g7. But if the bishop was there, there would always be knight takes h6 tactics. So, yeah, and Lavon is going into the tank. I feel like 
yeah, he just needs to move quick. Yeah, he, he just needs to move fast here and, and just sort of keep up the pressure. Yeah, I mean, and okay, so he plays queen g3. We're likely to yeah. see rook g8. There it is. Yeah. And another, and this is a big moment. Okay, Lamont goes c3. I, okay, I like that decision. I think one thing he might be preparing here is, is something like bishop c2 and then d4. Uh -huh, and right. trying to open up this other diagonal. Ding yeah. plays c4 himself. Yeah, and he takes on d3. I think Lavon should take with the queen, hitting the pawn on uh, d6. And black never wants to play d5 because indeed white's going to take. And then guess what? You put your king Ooh. on the same diagonal of the bishop, and that's going to be trouble. Correct. So queen takes d3 has been played. Yeah. Now ding is definitely worse here, no doubt about it. Bishop c7 maybe has to be played. Yeah. Not a move you want to play. 98, I don't know. It should, should be, be six. six. Uh -huh. So he jettisons the pawn. Right. So what actually happens if white goes ahead? And I guess he just wants to take him uh -huh. rook to d8. Yeah. And in fact, after, for example, knight takes b7, you know, in this end game, white can end up in serious trouble. That knight on b7 is, is yeah. uh, not the happiest. And if you play queen takes d6, something very similar could happen. Just... In fact, you could have a, essentially just a black win here. <laughs> Knight takes b7. Yeah. <laughs> Rook takes d2, okay. and white can resign. Yeah, because indeed, the, uh, yeah, white has all the problems indeed after Rook takes d2 to deal with, but also the knight on b7 is simply. Wait, Wait didn't Bishop he just hang e4? Bishop takes e4? What, what is I'm trying that? Trying to get, uh, wrap my head around what's. Ding is as puzzled as we are. Uh, in fact, Ding was so puzzled that his internet connection just like, couldn't froze, take it. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. That, that is unfortunate. I feel like this game was sort of a must, like, it's too early to talk about a must win, but I mean, Levan had a great position. He was up on the clock. And if he's three, if he's behind, you know, 3-0, at some point you have to get in the win, right? So, yeah. No, but this is bishop e3 is just a clear sign that something is something Wait, is ding... off with Levon in this part of the match. Is Ding still there? Like yeah, yeah, he's still making moves. I just think it, his cam temporarily froze. Levon giving up his queen here, mm -hmm. and it, he, I think he's going to go bishop takes b6. It, obviously, Black can't take the knight, but after d5, I mean, is this really yeah. a serious attempt at, at counterplay? And then Black can move the king away. No, this is just a lot losing for white. Yeah. No, I Levon agree trying you. bishop takes e4. But again, I just think black can play bishop takes e3 here. We, you know, you don't care that white can take the rook on a8. White black will still be winning. Or d5. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if your friend would play this against you in a bullet game, you're just thinking like, okay, this is complete nonsense. And here in a in a game with increment, um, it definitely feels like this, this should never work. Um, so Ding yep. takes on e3, Levon recaptures. I think White is just lost. Yeah, he gives up the bishop for the, he takes a rook on a8, but black has a queen and a pawn for a knight and a rook. That should be a winning material advantage. Yeah, and you know, of course, White's got the d5 square, but one important point here is that the knight on d5 will not be supported by a pawn because black mm -hmm. has this pawn on b5 that's stopping any potential c4. Yeah. So it, that knight is not the end of the world for black, although black has right. to demonstrate some technique without a doubt. Yeah, but what black needs to be careful of here is if white gets another move, white is going to play knight to b4, hitting the rook. And as I said, at right. a5 was played to stop exactly. that. Exactly. Okay, queen e6. Hmm. Five. And I think Ding's plan here should be to advance his king side pawns. Like f5 would even go yeah. f5. Maybe not here, maybe defend the pawn first, but at some point. Exactly. Yeah, I like that idea. Like f5, f4. Um, black should be winning, but there's still some technique required. And both players are getting low on the clock. So do you think Lafon has any chances? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, anytime you have a knight, period, you have a chance. Yeah. And oh my god, dig one is the fork. Yeah. And you could just see the BMUs like, what? Did I just miss that? And yeah, that's and all your fault, Benjamin, because you asked me that question precisely the moment that he blundered the fork. That's crazy. 
Yeah, well, you said he has a knight, so I, I I'll say that you're to blame. Um, now, Levon should Lafon... be able to win this now, or at least make a. I guess it's more of a draw because Ding is gonna go e4, I guess. But rook d7, Ooh. and then your king will be stuck on the eighth ring. Goes g5, interesting. So rook d7 by Levon takes on h4 now. Yeah, yep. takes on f7. I... Clock is stressing me out. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I would feel this should end in a draw because White's game is so open there should always be a perpetual. Yeah, and Ding just took yeah. that very important pawn. Levon's gonna gonna try to milk this. Anybody, yeah. I mean, it's anybody's game. Anytime both sides have two seconds, you nobody's yeah, you safe. Can, you can easily blunder something. Oh yeah. 24 hitting the rook, hitting oh. the pawn, but yeah, you just take yeah, this this, this just looks like a draw. H4. I think it's one. Point. Oh, the king four. Rook four. Rook four. Rook four. Rook oh my god! It wanted the queen. Oh my oh land. Oh my god. Dang, wondering. That is insane. Ninety five, and then the queen. That is insane. And yeah, Levine with the rook, and then the queen. Wait, the d five square. The d five square indeed is cursed for him in this game. Yeah, something's going on on that square. First, there was a knight there. That yeah. was not. I would not the finest tactical showing from the two players. But hey, Levon. You know, when you're struggling in the early part of a match, you take everything that you can get. That's a big win for him. He, yeah. he sticks with it, and he turns the game around uh, to get on the board. Yeah, but yeah, a very, very important win for Levon. He uh, he gets into the match. Um, a two-game deficit, I think, is definitely... He can still overcome that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, there's almost all of the match still ahead. We are going to go on our... First short break of the match. Give the players uh, a chance uh, to have a breath. I think both of them maybe needs a little bit of coffee. We will be back in just a few. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Be right back.
Chess.com is proud to release Game Review, a simple streamlined tool to help you learn from your games. Immediately see your accuracy and your opponent's accuracy and how many brilliant and great moves were played. Then select Start Review to dive into the game. Learn about the opening and get helpful stats on your performance. Retry mistakes to learn and improve your accuracy score. See why moves are played thanks to the coach's feedback and click Show Line to see helpful engine recommendations. Play a game, start review, and try it today. Chess.com is your exclusive Twitch home for the video feeds for this year's FIDE World Chess Championship. Join us for the best coverage around as we watch this year's players, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomnishi battle for the title. Magnus, of course, has a two-point lead. It's crisis time for Jan. You will not want to miss uh, tomorrow's game, which starts at 4 a.m. Pacific time. Robert... Fabi, Danny, who you fun. It's an all-star crew. No better place to be than the chess.com world championship broadcast. Benjamin, yeah, that last game was, uh, speaking of this match, of course, and of the world championship match, two slightly rugged last games <laughs> by Jan <Yeah>. Bonnishi <laughs> and now by Dingley Ren, who still leads with a score of three to one. So Levon with his work still cut out for him. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I mean, a two game deficit is definitely quite, um, you know, uh, dramatic for Jan, but not the end of the world for Levon. He still has plenty of chances to come back. Um, I'm going to, I'm pretty interested. I'm pretty curious to see how both players will come back after the Blake. Who, who do you think this, this favors? Um, I think it's hard to say. I mean, it must be frustrating for Ding because if he won that last game, we would be talking about a 4-0 leap. Right. Um, as it stands, you know, if Aronian wins one more game, you're, we're talking about a one-point lead. So just a single game can completely change the arc of the match. We've talked about that before. So I think the break was probably almost good for both of them, I want to say. And we have another uh -huh. Wings Gambit, except that I mentioned two categories of SCC matches. This is sort of a category one match. It, it has that sense where, where the players are not going to deviate that easily from their main opening choice. Exactly. Yeah. And I wonder if Ding, you know, looked up a line very quickly during the break. I think in game three, right? Uh, I think he played Bishop B2 instead of Knight XD7. I guess mm -hmm. he felt that uh, after Levant's Rook D8, Black was just fine. Um, and yeah, you're right that both players are just sticking to their guns. Um, Levon going for the Queen's Gambit Acceptor with black and uh, Ding going for the Marshal with the black pieces. So right. yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who will uh, who's, whose openings will work out better. Right, or who, who flinches first in the event that yeah. you know one of their openings just gets underwater. All right, so again, I would say slightly more pleasant for white, like you've indicated, just, you know, I just probably because of the Bishop and, and the a six pawn being loose. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is right up Ding's alley. He's just so, so good at these technical positions, squeezing out advantages. Yeah. And yeah, it's a little bit annoying for black. He takes some D four, but he, he has some concrete problems to solve as well. Cause now to be six pawn is under attack. So he goes to be five, but a four here. Isn't that awkward to meet? annoying for sure and if yeah. you go b4 you give up the c4 square why well, can get a knight there and yeah. ding indeed going a4 yep yeah. and yeah ding is playing fast in his game uh he's up like almost a minute on the clock so yeah i mean yeah, you can develop with a move like bishop e7 i guess because white will just take on b5 and there'll always be rook a7 ideas yep um and this is yeah. very annoying Exactly, yeah. I mean, this yeah, is it, this is concerning for, for Levon. I mean, no, I agree. Uh, what does he do? If he, if, if he could just magically go Bishop B7 and castles, he'd be he should be fine. But yeah, that's not how chess works. I mean, he has concrete problems to solve here. Oh, yeah. I mean, you just gotta sometimes everything comes down to one tempo, right? And this yeah. is the reason why white's play is as effective as it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe black should take on a4, but then. I mean, Rook takes a four. Black's probably going to lose the, the a six pawn. Yeah, 
No. So I agree. not sure what black should prefer here. Well, I do wonder, like let's say we let's say we take an f3, for example, ding recaptures, and we go bishop e7. How bad is that? Because after it takes some I guess b4. He's go he goes b4, so there's something there that he didn't like. I mean, I like yeah. the prospect of going bishop b7 because now he's got static problems, permanent yeah. problems on the queen side with the knight potentially coming to c4. Yeah, the knight's coming to c4. Then it can also hop to e5 and c6. Uh, yeah, b4 is kind of weak. a6 is weak. I think, yeah, like you said earlier, this is right up Ding's alley. But actually, uh, white has something to calculate here. Because if, if you go knight to d2, there's e5. Oh, right. There is e5. And that's probably not the end of the story, but... Right, because it takes takes and then rook d1. No, you lose on a spot. Rook d1. A rook d1 is just overwhelming attack. Yeah. Could, oh, rook takes d. Bishop should, takes f6. Yeah, for instance. So bishop e7, I guess. It goes queen d5. Okay. Yeah. Now again, question for white is: Okay, do we trade queens? Do you play knight c4? Yeah. Yeah. If you and... go queen e2 here, then e5 is a serious option. So he goes knight to c4, but now Lavon can trade. And of course, it's not ideal, but the end game should not be that bad. Yeah, the, the eval bar, not a huge fan of Ding's decision making here. I, okay, Lavon going knight d5. Maybe he wants to play f6 yeah. and blunt this bishop. Yeah, I like that idea. I think, yeah, if Lavon gets a couple of moves like f6, c5, bishop b7, king of seven, it should not be that bad for him. But Still some problems to be solved. Yeah, there, there's some annoying ideas. I mean, knight a5 looks looks a little concerning. Levon might be preparing something like knight c3 against it. Mm -hmm. You know, with the yeah. idea that taking twice allows either bishop b4 or bishop f6. Exactly. Yeah. So but yeah, indeed it feels like this is a this is a ding position. Right? It's you know, some some typical annoying Catalan <laughs> type ish. Right. Uh, pressure um and black is never white is always going to be a little bit better yeah white's always going to be a little bit better there's no risk and like you said it's annoying is the best word to describe this i just realized that knight c3 can be met with the annoying king f1 just like stopping the threat of 92 yeah. and black can never escape you know the problems of the queen side squares so exactly Ish, more issues here for Levon, who's down to a minute and 45. It's yeah. not an easy end game to play with, with little time on the clock. Yeah, no, I think Ding is doing a really good job in this game. I mean, the position looks great. He's also up on the clock, right? In the last couple of games, he was always down. Um, so I feel like Ding, yeah, he needs to try to get more of these kind of positions. Uh, Levon is very tricky in, you know, complicated dynamic positions, but I mm -hmm. feel like Ding Ding is very, very strong in these types of end games. So you should try to squeeze him here. Oh yeah. No, this this is these are games that Ding has to where, where Ding has to put points on the board because this is right up his alley as we discussed. And I think he's doing this very smoothly. Rook C6. Mm -hmm. Levon does have the G file. He can throw in a check on G8, but I'm not sure what that gives him. The king's just gonna move aside to F1. I'm not yeah. seeing where Black's counterplay is gonna come from. Yeah. Yeah, it gives him a check, but uh, since this is normal chess and not three check, it doesn't count for right. that much. It goes rook g5, but I really felt like he had to just defend the pawn. Like, not, rook so takes what, what happens if Ding takes? I, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't. I guess he wants to go rook h5, but I'm not buying Ooh, it. No, I mean, because there you don't even have to defend h2. You can. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, why can't you just try to set his own a pawn in motion? But that is not that easy. But still, that a pawn is gonna he's probably gonna decide the game. I think. Yeah, if white if white sets this up correctly, even like rook a seven, for example, and meeting rook takes h two with king g one, and then move the knight away, start pushing the pawn. That even that looks good, and I'm sure that's not yeah. the best the, the best available setup here. But Ding yeah. taking, I mean, I just, I think it's uh, really awesome how, you know, Ding, for example, Magnus, they're never in a rush. And I mean, I sometimes tell this to some of my students, they take pride in taking their time, right? For Ding, uh -huh. it's not, they take pride in, in being methodical and slow. You could see Ding spending 30, 40 seconds, whereas somebody else might blitz out and move here immediately. 
Right. Yeah. So I think rook c8 is forced here by Levan. Don't play rook d7 because you will find yourself in a checkmate. Why not, but... Benjamin? I don't, I don't really see it. <laughs> Oh, rook a8. Nice. No, I see. I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, was... I blundered. I blundered rook b7. I hope he doesn't right. play uh -huh. it. <laughs> he sees it. What well, he sees everything. So. Yeah. Of course. Uh, no, rook c8 is forced. Why is he spending so much time here? I mean, and rook takes h2. By the way, hoping for knight takes d8 would have been met with king g1. Yeah, he plays rook yeah. c8, but that took him 30 seconds. Yeah, I feel like even those just king yeah, g2. King g2. Ding, not even pawn. giving Levon the satisfaction of taking on h2. Yep. And I feel like if white gets a couple moves, he's going to go like rook c1, rook c4. Uh, mm -hmm. Ding is up two minutes on the clock. King d7 played. Okay, but where does the knight go? I mean, rook c1 even here looks pretty good, I think. And then rook c4. Yeah. Like you said. I agree with that. Although black like rooks... does have this check on g8, but that doesn't give anything. Yeah, because you just go to h1. Oh, black is lost. I mean, I don't see this working out for Lamont. Yeah, there's no time. Yeah, I think Ding is going to take a three-point lead again. No time h1. and no position. And Knight uh, takes b4. Oh, oh he he wants to go for 92. But oh. you can... <laughs> That's a tricky little move. But obviously, even after 92, okay, white wins on time. Yeah. After Knight takes b4. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty well. I mean, Ding just played a classic Ding game right there. Get into the end game, slightly better, put a knight on c6 and win. If only yeah. it was that easy. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see here. Okay, so Ding goes for d5. I think in before the break, he went for d6, right? Before the break, I, um, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the line. That was the game where White had the knight on f5. Yeah. So here they're clearly going down some sort of theoretical path. Knight a5, yeah. c3, and yeah. Levon. So I think, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think Levon is clearly in his preparation. He's blitzing out his moves. Um, I guess the point behind c3 is to go. He goes knight h4. Wow. Impressive stuff here by Levon, continuing to blitz out his moves. But, but, Levon, sometimes he's just bluffing. True. <laughs> like he's just blitzing out, blitzing out moves, and it's just clearly that he's just bluffing. I mean, and... again, he's putting the knight on f5. Whoa. Yeah. F3. Okay. But here, I feel like black should be a lot safer. Like, let's say he puts the bishop on f. Okay. Well, actually, you can't play bishop f8 here because white takes on c4, and there it goes. Oh, right. So that's actually a threat. Takes on c4. There goes the knight. Well, actually. That's not the end because you can take on c4 and go queen b4. Oh, and hit the rook. Right. But can white go c4 immediately? Yes. Yep. And see that wins. Okay. So he goes right, to c6. Problem. So oh. if white now does the same, there's knight b4. The knight defends the bishop or right, the, bishop. the queen after a trade. And then the knight heads to d4. So yeah. a question for Levon does he go knight f5 here? Or does he trade on c6 first and then go knight f5? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hard to hard to puzzle this one out. Players with a yeah. lot of time here. Yeah, this this does look like a much better reload pass though for Ding than uh, what we saw before the break. I mean, the bishop on f8 should just always hold the king side. The rook on d8 is exerting nice pressure uh, on the pawn on d3. So I think black really doesn't have anything to worry about. Yeah, I would play bishop f8 in a heartbeat here. And I think Ding's going to do the same. I mean, yep. yeah, Bishop F8. And what to do now for Levon? He takes on C6. Yeah, Bishop D2. Yeah, not a oh. move you play if you, you know, see something concrete. But I, I, I like these kinds of moves. Just complete the development. Maybe a Rook lift later. I don't really believe in White's attack here. Yeah, but me neither. it's a complex position. This is kind of up Levon's alley. Yeah, and, and what actually if Ding just takes on a4 here? Because it might look ugly, but, but first of all, it is a pawn. And second of all, black can play rook to b8 and extra pressure on a pawn on b2. Wait, it is a pawn? I thought that was a bishop. Yeah, looks like a bishop, but it's actually a pawn. Okay, good, good to know, good to know. Yeah, I like b takes a4 a lot. In these kinds of moves, a lot of people just reject, like you said, just because they look 
ugly. Oh, I don't want to double my pawns, but you have to see the bigger picture here of the B file getting open. Yeah. Let's see. I feel like that's that's a ding type of move. That is a ding move, yeah. Like uh it might look like a positional mistake to some to some people, but it actually is a really good move. Yep. No, for sure. And Ding now again taking his customary middle game think, which yep. has served him very well this match. Rook A to C eight. So he refrains from okay. taking the pawn. Yeah, if I was Levon here, I would just take on B5 pretty quickly to mm -hmm. make sure the black can never take on A4. And also the black rook moved away from the A file. So you just grab the the open A file. Yeah, you get control of the A file. I mean, you could infiltrate to A7, but probably Ding has foreseen that and he might have knight rook D7 here. No, and I was thinking rook D7, knight H6. I, I was thinking about that too. Is, yeah. Yeah, and work. then you might have a perpetual of king h8, but takes yeah. queen g4. Looks like a fork, but the rook slides on over to g7. And yeah. after takes, takes, c6. takes, there's rook c7. Yeah. Um, but maybe rook, rook c7. E, rook e a1 here, but still you take and rook d7. Does mm. feel like you're... It's, it's a real pity the knight h6 does not work there. Because if you would have to play king h8, there's knight f7 and knight e5. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, let's, see if, let's see if that happens. So I'll show that line if they follow this path. Yeah. Rook e1. I guess you just... Nice. Yeah, you just take a rook d7. I think that is sort of forced because if white gets another move, he goes queen g4. And then you can yeah. play rook d7. And yeah, it's... Yeah, so knight h6 here, Benjamin is saying if, is if black had to go king h8, then there'd be a check, x-ray defense, and after king g8... Wait, no, there's no knight c5 here, I guess, because the bishop's defended. No? Oh, wait, wait, it is, my bad. Yeah, so yeah. in any case, rook back to a5 by Levon. Mm -hmm. He's okay, still eyeing c4, but that's not really a move just yet. Yep. I think white is slightly for choice here. It's a little bit awkward for black to make a move because let's say you go queen b6, then I guess rook a8 is annoying. Yeah, rook a8 definitely is annoying. I mean, you might be able to go rook d8 there, but probably not worth playing with fire. Yeah. And yeah, ding with some, some decisions to make here. He's got yep. problems on all sides of the board, actually. It's got yeah, problems in the Levant. center, queen side, king side. Yeah, and Lafon's up a minute on the clock. Um, maybe you can go g6 to get rid of the knight, but then knight h6. So it feels like he should be fine, but it's, it's a little bit annoying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And he's got a minute and a half. This is a big chance for Aronian. I feel like he... Yeah. Ding is going to go wrong somewhere here. He goes queen b6. Queen so b6. he act, does allow rook a8, and I think he's banking on rook d8. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that technically works out. Levon goes for c4. Aha, uh -huh. defending the rook with his bishop and uh, hitting the knight on d5. So we see a trade mm. on c4. Is there a queen takes b2 here? Um, good. I mean, I don't see sure. why not. Well, there's cd, queen takes d2, and then something like rook a8. I mean, this certainly right. looks like a oh, handful of no, black. Pawn. But that, that would right. hang a pawn down, yeah. Oh man, oh, I'm oh, God, I'm so I'm just not seeing anything this morning. <laughs> okay, so D takes C4 97 by by Ding. So he doesn't take B2. Bishop C3. I feel like Bishop C3 is kind of off in the sense that couldn't he take on um, E7 and go rook A8? Okay, so we see a trade, Queen C6. Yeah, so now rook A8 has been prevented. Yeah. This looks very solid for Ding, right? The bishop on c3 is just kind of, you know, it's just stuck staring at the pawn on e5. Black can play g6, king f7, and everything is defended. Yeah, somehow I think the worst is behind him. This pawn on c5 is also containing white's two pawns entirely. Queen back to g4 mm -hmm. for Mr. Aronian. So he prevents a check on d1. Yeah, this position is kind of stabilized for Ding, which is... Music yeah. to his ears, given that he's quite low on time. Yep. 
But still, like, Levan is up a lot of time on the clock. So I think he just needs to play fast here and hope that he can trick Ding somehow. G6 play, that's an excellent right. move. But maybe. Ding has been very consistent, even in time pressure. Yeah. For the most maybe, part, except that maybe one. Maybe H4, H5, trying to soften up the pawns on the king's side. Although, could backfire. Yeah, no, that's, that's an option. I mean, I, you don't have too many pieces left, so you might as well use what's available actually fun fact h4 could be met with h5 oh and if queen takes g6 that's very ingenious rook g7 yeah and you lose the queen because of the mate threat on g2 yes yeah, so, goes so king of seven i think h5 would have been an amazing move now he allows h5 but he aims for the queen trade yeah yeah, if you're Lavon here, you don't want to trade queens. He, I think from a practical uh, view, viewpoint, he has to keep the queens on the board, try to trick Ding. He's also down in the match, so he has to try to win this game. Yeah, but I'm it's getting a bad feeling of where this is going for Aronian somehow. I can't exactly put my finger on why. Uh -huh. Although queen h4 is a nice move. Well, I think just because, like, just because the last games, right? He was up on the clock, had a decent right. position, but he got outplayed in the time pressure so g5 okay queen e4 i guess should be considered to hit the pawn yeah. on h7 exactly levon and taking his time and to me queen e4 is like a no-brainer but maybe there's something there that he's worried about oh f5 and if you take there's rook d1 and bishop d6 oh what a devil rook d1 whoop bishop d6 goodbye queen damn girl queen e3 by levon now e3. this is Wait, this is Look very at Black's, tricky. Black's pawns are still all hanging, so this is not just one sided ding with two seconds. Bishop e7. Uh -huh. Okay. Levon could take with the bishop, but then Black can always take the pawn on c4. I feel like this is more pleasant for ding, but Levon's got the time. Yeah, and the time in this in this situation is so important. Rook a8, maybe. Just how does he create intrigue here? How does he but actually, exploit actually Rook his time eight, advantage? Like, if like if you go rook a8, black can get mm -hmm. a check on d1, and that's a king h2, queen takes c4. Oh, and queen h4 checkmate is going to be a threat. Four, and look right. at the time; it's the same thing. Levon taking almost all of his time trying to find some way uh, to to pose problems here. He's down to 18 seconds. Bishop takes c5. You mentioned rook d1, queen takes c4 is an idea. Yeah. And he has no time. He's getting down to 10 seconds. Yeah, and there we go. Ding. Oh, he takes on c4. Okay, so he's okay. threatening rook d1 and queen h4, which is not technically yeah. mate, but it's very annoying. Rook a1, good move by Levon. Rook d3. Rook three. Queen d5, queen I would e, imagine. Queen e2, queen d5. Okay, move the bishop back. Bishop c3. Okay. Rook oh, d2, where do we There might be a rook, go? rook d3. Three. Yeah, Levon gets a uh, ding gets a very important rook trade in, and now I would say ding is oh, slightly ding better. Oh, ding is so they're they're pulling Wait, they're it both, so close. Uh, two seconds. Oh, but ding's no, king ding. is slightly more exposed. Ding is lagging, and he, he okay, might don't trade the queen. Queen g five. Oh, G5. oh. G5, check, check, check. Take the pawn. Oh, Take the pawn. Man. C5, C5, five check. But check on g eight. But how do you defend f two? Right, F2 check. is hanging. No, oh, but he's going to force trade. the queen trade. He's going to force the queen force trade. Force the queen trade in H6. Yeah, it's over. For, just take, no? Take. And, H take. Oh, oh, and he oh, flex! Oh, no! Oh, my God. Levon flags. Just take the queen in H6 and black and resign. Are you kidding me? What oh, happened there? Oh, man. That is just heartbreaking for, for Levon. Oh, like... The one, wait, the that, one line he might be like the one line that might have taken him like one or two seconds there at the end was queen takes pawn takes h6 e3. That's my that's my that's my thought. Oh, and then he has king f1, but you have to find that. Well, like everything is winning there, but not pawn takes e3, but still, yeah, can, but you, you know, have to, like, man, yeah, he got bogged down with something, maybe he was also looking for mate there. And he just thought if he took an extra 0.5 seconds, he's going to find it. Gosh, th yeah. those kinds of games, that is so hard to, to play through. And yeah. I feel like he, this is the wheels are coming off a little bit because he's in a really bad position right out of the opening here. Yeah. Um, 
Damn. Um, yeah, very, very tough game for Levon. Oh. Completely winning yeah. there. I don't know. Little for NH6. And right yeah. now, yeah, he's playing this sort of uh what's it called? Uh Czech Benoni. Czech Benoni, yeah. Uh, oh, I but... think I could out there for a second. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you fine now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but he has no space at all here. Um, it's not he has no space, and, and and also, you know, one of the main ideas here is to is to uh, play b five, and even if you get the knight to c seven, White's completely clamped down on that square. So, this is honestly right. a nightmare for Levon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what plus do you even two, play here? No, this is this is horrible. Yeah, this is a horrible position because normally I'm I'm a staunch supporter of black chances and King's Indian type positions, but not here. Yeah, Bishop F6. Levon wants H5 and he wants to meet it with Bishop G5. Yeah, but Dang might just go Queen D2. He goes or G5. Yeah. G5, Bishop B7. So I guess Levon wants to go for F6 next. Maybe Knight I guess F5. if you're Ding here. <laughs> You go queen d2, protect the pawn on h on g5, so then you can play h5 on the next move. Right. I, I would have actually played queen d2 the previous move, just to not commit to g5 immediately, but potentially go h5. Ding with bishop e2. So aiming right. for g4 with his bishop. Mm -hmm. And Levon, I guess, yeah. could try f5, but that's probably too brazen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like. It's kind of early for Levant to go all out and play such a such a risky opening, really, against someone like Ding, who who generally really knows what he's doing against the King's Indian. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it, it's very hard to to get Ding out of his comfort zone. Uh, he's got everything analyzed. He he understands yeah. all these openings. And gosh, this is really ugly. Levant going ninety five. He is. Potentially aiming to swing the knight back around to g6 and eliminate this bishop. Yeah, is that going to bring him any relief, though? Yeah, I think in a higher sense, he should just be lost here. I think white can just safely castle queenside. I mean, black will go b5 for sure. But even then, like, let's say white takes everything. Like, is that really, does that really concern white? No, I think because black just has no pieces on the, on the queen side. Yeah, b5. Whatever you can even take with the knight, but c takes b5, and then if you need, you can play king c2, and and tuck the king away safely on that on that spot. Yeah. Okay. So, but but Ding is clearly deciding where he wants to castle. I think. You know, you know what would be a typical Ding move? Okay, uh, Levon mm -hmm. goes for b5, opening up. A typical Ding move, I feel, would be someone like king d1, and then king c2. <laughs> Right, keeping the rook on the open A file, but reaping the benefits from castling. I agree. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Although, I saw a game of Ding at the uh, Tata Steel India Blitz where he played someone like King D2. It was very impressive. Levon is doing a nice job of creating counterplay, though, because if you give yeah. him a couple more moves, you know, Knight C7, Knight takes B5, I think Black is starting to. Uh, to, to, to turn the ignition a little bit here. And speaking of ignition, Tink going G6, he's not messing around. He's saying, the moment you start feeling hopeful, it's time to deliver checkmate. Now, Bishop F6, okay. Yeah. Still, yeah, that 9 5 is really nice. Exactly, yeah. And even though it feels like White should be winning, um, it's not that easy to really go for a checkmating attack, right? Like you can take an H7, but Black will probably just go King H8. And how exactly do you break through? Yeah, no, I mean, this is sort of the umbrella method using the pawn as, as cover. I, I think yeah. Ding should probably keep the pawn on g6 as to what he should play. I mean, rook ace... I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to pin down a specific move. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it, yeah, it feels like uh, Ding should be winning somehow. I mean, the evil bar is all the way up, but there's no, there's no immediate way through. He's getting low on the clock, and the position could get out of control here. Oh yeah, for sure. He's got, he's got some weak squares. 
Okay, Rook A7. Yeah. Infiltrating, aiming to meet Queen B6 with Bishop E3, sending the Queen back. Exactly, yeah. So Knight C7 by Lavon. He wants to go Knight B5. Um. Okay, mm -hmm. so what does White do here? And maybe just... I almost wanted to say Castle Short. Right. But I guess but then, you want to like, keep the probably Rook on H1. On G6. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So I think getting low on the clock, like 120 for him. Yeah. G1 played. Okay, so he's X-raying the G file. Levon takes on B5. Uh -huh. So I guess Knight takes B5, Rook takes B5 is going to threaten various discoveries with Rook takes B2 and Knight D3. Yeah. So is but, Ding, what else is he thinking you, about? But you know, wait, maybe why can just take on E, maybe why can take an E5 and then Queen mm -hmm. H6. And the rook on wow. G1 now is protecting the knight on G3. If you go, oh, so this is not d dangerous anymore, right? And then if you go queen E7, is there not just queen takes H7 and rook, take, rook takes D7? At a minimum, there must be. Although something wrong with this move, I I'm sure White is winning in several different ways. But 30 seconds is not a lot of time. Yeah, Ding has been thinking all of this time, and look at that time disparity once again. Over two minutes. Yeah. And Ding I desperately feel... trying to figure something out here. Yeah. I feel like Ding needs to keep some time on the clock. Like, he's probably winning. But if he gets oh, too yeah. low on the clock, even in a winning position, he could easily blunder. And he's taking all the time in the world. I mean, eight like, seconds. He, I don't understand. Oh, Knight takes, takes F5. So he was five? calculating this. Wait, oh, what right. if Black so... just takes the rook? Uh, the Knight. Oh, or, or the rook. No, the yeah, rook. Wait, what happens if he... What I, I don't but even know what then, happens if he takes the knight either. No, but if you take the rook, then I guess bishop takes e5 is his idea, right? And after queen h6, there's no queen e7. I don't know if it works, oh. but Lafon takes on f5. But there's no way through. Rook takes h7, but you're just yeah, blocking. Yeah, but what's the follow-up? Ding taking all of his time for, for that. Yeah. I mean, that is very, very puzzling. I mean, there, there isn't even a single idea on the king's side. Yeah, it's it's very funny. Like Black's King is completely safe. Um, oh yeah, no, no that bishop on f6 is is covering the g7 square. That's the only square where anything can really be created. And Ding is just yeah, yeah. He's kind of seems a little bit confused at at his own decision making there. Everything should be winning here for Levon, like rookie eight. Maybe maybe the most effective way to do it because like okay he goes knight c three his idea is bishop f eight bishop h four with basically with mate and Ding's gonna let his time run out but obviously yeah. that's winning for Levon and a, and another important win for Lev and a, and a frustrating game for Ding who yeah you know it seemed like Levon was a little tilted uh, coming out of that last game where he lost on time he played a pretty bad opening and Ding uh, all kudos to Levon for for putting together a an excellent resistance. Uh, pouncing yeah. on the counterplay when he had a chance. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting, right? Like, uh, you know, the evil bar was all the way up and we felt like it was very dubious what Levon was doing. But there's there was no easy way through uh, for Ding. So, you know, you might be wondering, like, what is this What is this Bush League opening? But there, huh. it's, it's still not easy to break through. Right. No, especially in Blitz. I mean, some of these openings are really effective in Blitz, but less so in Classical where you've got yeah all the time in the world to figure out a way to break through yep so, so that h4 by levon the, which is a new move or did he repeat this as well i feel like he, played, he played c3, c3 in the left but bishop e4 wait did he blunder there's bishop d2 but ding takes and now there's like knight of four yeah knight of four b4 no b4 maybe not dangerous because of c4 but i think it can be confirmed that Levon doesn't really know what he's doing in this line. Like last 100%. game, he played C3 and got no advantage. And now he plays Knight H4, which is a bad move. Which is just bad. Yeah, I agree with Knight F4 because this actually threatens Knight takes H3, which, right. I mean, yeah. this, that Bishop on A5 also just looks dumb. It's it's really not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this B4 is... Uh... shutting the Bishop out, but... Those pawns can also become vulnerable. So I think I, I don't like before. I don't understand why he didn't just go knight f4. 
Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. It's just weird. Um, I understand yeah. the appeal of of trapping the bishop, but the, exactly, Levon goes c three, and again, I would I would absolutely take and go knight f four here and start the yeah, attack because because now after the inclusion of b four and c three, the pawn on d three can also become weak. So I think um, this should be a very good opening for for Ding. Yeah, it's. I feel like Ding used the break better than Levon. Like Ding found, a, found an advantage or at least a better try in the Queen's Gambit accepted. And Levon hasn't really cooked up anything in the break. I mean, maybe he cooked up some, bre maybe he cooked up some breakfast, but not some, <laughs> yeah, some, some good coffee. openings. <laughs> right. And there, was, there was nothing coming out of the, the kitchen on his laptop. Yeah. Okay. And Ding, uh, good one. And Ding playing Knight F4 after all. So this just testifies to the to the power of this move that you can actually play it even with the pawn hanging on b4. So I guess knight takes h3 check. I'm not sure exactly what the best option is. Maybe even knight takes g2. No, right, probably so, not. Yeah, so bishop takes b4. Okay, goes king h2. Wait, but bishop takes g2? Yeah, bishop takes g2. Okay. Oh, and I guess he wants queen g4. Yeah, but I mean... Yeah, no, exactly. Just, I think there's clearly there's a lot. Maybe, uh, what do you think about Ding, like taking on c3 first? I like that. I like that. Taking on c3, taking on c3 white first, recaptures, yeah. and bishop takes g2. Queen g4, there's just bishop takes h3. Right. And just looks lost. Again, if you're yeah, is... down two pawns against Ding, you're just lost. There's no other way to put it. Yeah, for no, for no compensation whatsoever. And then the pawn on d3 is also weak. Gosh, this is... Just yeah. uh yeah, Ding, I can guarantee you he sees Bishop takes G2. He's just deciding whether or not to take on C3 first. Goes Whoa! G5. Okay, I mean, so knight of three. What is his idea? I Maybe guess he, he wants, wants G4. G4. I mean, I'm sure this is also good, but but knight H this is not knight that H4. Clear. like knight H4 Bishop takes and... G2 is just elementary. I mean, I, I'm shocked yeah. that. I am not playing this move. No, I agree. Because like after g takes h3, g3, it feels like that pawn is, is sort of in the way, right? Like like last game. Mm-hmm. And let's see what Lafon is um, going to do here. White's king is pretty safe now, I have to say. And yeah. This is, this is crazy. I guess you, you don't want to take on g2, though, because then black's going to come very quickly after you on the on the light squares. With something like queen yeah. f5, bishop f3, and queen h5. But maybe you can go for some sort of sacrifice here, like bishop takes b4. Yeah, give up the rook and then, well, maybe not even, yeah, and then bishop takes f8, something like this. He goes rook and g1. So you don't want to take on h4 because then after gh4, that opens up the g file. Yeah, that's um, the idea. I feel like Ding sort of missed his chance here, but. It, it might still... Okay, it takes... Uh -huh. You can go bishop g2 if he wants to. Oh, that's nice actually move. a very important idea. Just shutting down the rook completely. And again, b4 has been hanging for a while. I would take that pawn if I'm Levon. Yeah. Look, what about this queen, queen f5, five. queen f4 mate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although but I guess I, guess I can if... play queen d2. Yeah, queen d2 was there, right? So he goes queen h5, stopping queen f5. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Right, so... I don't see a way for white to ever get rid of the bishop on g2. So black skin should be relatively safe. Yeah, black skin should be relatively safe. The question is, how does black move forward in regards to, to the attack on white skin? Yeah. That is I mean, a hard question to answer. Tough, yeah, I feel like the only way for to, to like continue the attack on the white king would would be to somehow magically get the queen on that diagonal, right? Mm -hmm. But he takes on c3, bishop takes. Wait, but this this could spin out of control. If white oh, gets sure. to move yeah. rook two, he could go like rook e1, rook e3, rook g3, or f4. Right. And and also, I mean, I was just going to make a random move for black. It should be noted that if black over tucks the king on an h8, there's going to be these types of sacrifices and tactics. So... Definitely, yeah. black skin cannot sleep peacefully, and that's why I think Ding is trying to remaneuver his rook to g7. Uh huh. Although so, there's f4 there, I mean, yeah, 
And, and but what about let's say rook a e one and then f four? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that idea a lot. And rook a one, like I mentioned earlier, also creates the sort of ideas of going rook takes e five. Yeah. Another idea for white could be like f four. Maybe takes rook a f one and take with the rook and f four. Uh huh. A four takes rook a f one using the pin. Not that pin, this pin. And then taking the pawn. Yeah. Okay, so he goes rook a e one, rook g seven by ding. Well, now um, f four looks think... tempting. I don't know. Yeah, f four definitely looks tempting, right? Because if takes bishop takes, that looks very dangerous for black. What do you think right. he is intending? So, for instance, takes takes and. If rook g7, if black falls asleep, then white goes rook e7. And that's how quickly checkmate can happen in these types of positions. Yep. Lev and... is thinking. Yep. Oh, I, I guess f4 could be met with queen g4 if Ding really wants to bail out. Aha, uh -huh, right. Yeah. That'd be and good. yeah, you have. I mean, he's up, he's up three games in a match, so. The draw draws are good for him. Yeah, draws are fine. This is pr probably going to have one more. Actually, well, it's, this is either going to be the last game or we're going to have one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, so there's f4, and now we're going to see does yeah. Ding go for some sort of confrontation or ah maybe you can actually take first and then go queen. Mm -hmm. Oh no no no, queen g4 gets made. It. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> G4 gets yeah, so made. He takes, he takes a4, yeah, loses the game. So he goes queen e7. Aha, so the idea is pawn takes, queen takes d3. And then how do uh -huh. you defend queen g3 checkmate? Ooh. Wait, there's literally, there's literally no way to defend. There's just no right. way to defend mate. That's crazy. Yeah, no, none of your pieces are capable of anything. That's great. Yeah. Wait, but then what do you do here? You can Well, defend... and, and rookie three allows e takes f4 with tempo. Oh my goodness! Right. Is there is there a move like this? Iranian just losing here? Oh, maybe maybe d four. E takes d four. Bishop takes d four. No, but Diana yes. hangs the bishop. Oh my gosh, man! I'm hanging all my pieces today. What is wrong with me? <laughs> yep, yeah. gotta get some more coffee, Diana. Right. Well, I've got a lot. Mm. Clearly, it's not enough. Maybe I need to give some of it to Levon. Yep. Yeah. Um, but d4, maybe e4, shutting down the rook, um, mm -hmm. could be a good move. I don't know. For sure. And Levon down to 12 seconds. He's just not seeing a move at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, really just um, uh, the opening went terrible for him. Queen e2, but queen f5. F5 instantly. Oh, he he hangs e5. Zero. Okay, there's no way that he's going to survive this with one second. I mean, it's just none. It's impossible. Yeah. Rook d8 by ding. He's going to fly. He flags. Just disappointing for Levon. I mean, and, and this is a huge game, Benjamin, because this is the yeah. last game of the five-minute portion. He's down by four. You can't, I mean, if you're Levon, you just can't let this lead spiral out of control into the three-minute. You have to find a way to put a damper on on Ding's, Ding's run here. I agree. But he goes for the same opening. Feels very, very risky. Um, I don't know what to make of this, honestly. I mean, he won the last game, right? So Ding, even though he had a great position, he did not see the way through. But yeah, it is, it is I mean, risky. Like, if he loses this game, he's going to be down five. I feel like Ding is very happy to repeat this opening. <laughs> yeah. Ting does not need to be asked twice to I mean because this is clearly bad for black there's no no question yeah. about it so I, I think Ding's mistake was was to play I mean I how did he play this he played something H4. and then Levon yeah Bishop, played Bishop six, six. G5 Queen D2 was played and I, then I Levon like played five here. Levon played Knight I don't know Queen Knight C7 two. Uh, no, no, wait. Um, he made a move. I forgot what it was. And then f5 came. Mm -hmm. Or, or no, or did he play f6? No, Levon played f5, and then a trade on f5 happened in f4. 
Oh, that's right. That's right. A four E. Yeah, was EF, and then, and then you put a nine on E5. Right. But was Queen D2 the move that Ding also chose in the last game? That's what I'm wondering. Um, good question. I, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so right. here, he definitely, we definitely didn't see this. He castles long, as per your recommendation in the last game. Mm -hmm. Right, so what Levon could do here, even though it might be dubious, is uh, pawn takes g5, pawn takes g5, and rook f4. Oh, that's a, that's a cool idea. Yeah. I Classic exchange stack. I mean, it makes some sense, right? If you take, but I... Yeah, what does white even do there after takes on rook f4? Yeah, I mean, if white does nothing, black takes on g5. Maybe knight c e2, but... But I take... Uh-huh. Yeah, but... I guess you can take g5 there, but no, but then I take on f4 with a knight. I mean, in any case, he's gotten rook f7 and ding taking a long thing. But rook dg1 makes sense here. I'm yeah. always eyeing knight f5 as a potential sacrifice, these types of positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, what do you think Levon is trying to do here? Like, let's say he gets a couple moves. Well, okay, so he goes there, 95 right yes. away. Yes, I love it. This is what I came here to watch. Yeah. All right. So Levon kind of has to accept the sacrifice. I, I mean, think he should not be too unhappy to see these types of moves. I mean, if you play these kind of openings, you want something unbalanced. Yeah, but, so. but I think Black is just losing here. That's the problem. Because, how? because, well, rook g1 and then g6. Uh -huh. And I he just goes... feel like the extent of white's domination here, I mean, g6, rook g7, h5 even is possible. Yeah, wait, how does your rook not get trapped? He takes and goes rook g7, this but h5 h5, f5, uh, h5, maybe f5. f5. Right, yeah. It's not, Although... it's not over, over. f5. This, and this very much g1, reminds can... me of the last game where... White should be winning somehow, right? Like, as everyone can see, the evil boar is all the way up, but mm -hmm. there's no direct way through. Yeah, and Ding, again, taking taking a while here. I mean, maybe he should just play a prophylactic move like F3. Yeah. Just uh, curb, curb all the threats and then just go Rook G1 and, and try to try to yeah. shove H6 through. Uh, so it goes Rook Rook G1. So black can play F4 here and pick up the bishop on E3, but yeah, I guess H6 will trap the rook then. Bishop Correct. F6 by Levon. I, I would still seriously consider just going F3 here and, and taking this thing out of E4. But then going bishop H6. Bishop H6, E4. Does he want to take and go H6? I don't know. It's very weird. It's it's very much like the last game. Levon is also up, by the way, almost two minutes on the clock. Um, if I would have to guess, I think Levon is probably going to have very good chances in the 3-1 portion. Because it seems like Levon uh, is worse in the time scrambles, but he's better at managing his clock. And in the 3-1 portion, it is more likely that, let's say we have these types of situations, Ding will have no time, right? Yeah, I mean, Ding Ding cannot afford to take these kinds of things, uh, these kinds of things yeah. in the in the three minute portion. It's as simple as that. But on the other hand, we've also seen many players adjust successfully to the to the change of the mm -hmm. time. Bishop yeah. takes e four. Wait, takes an e four. Wait, whoa, what is that was that necessary? And okay, he wants f takes knight takes. Yeah, or does he want? I'm not it looks entirely a bit seeing the zen of this. Yeah. Okay, but how does but, how does Levon respond to this? Bishop d4 is one option. Yeah, bishop d4, but I guess then white takes on g7 and goes h6, and then which h6. looks tough to deal with. I suppose the moment white does that, there's going to be a lot of trouble brewing. Right. Um, move like bishop f5 also an option. I mean, you're not too concerned about the trade on f6 and you'll have to give up the rook at some point for the bishop. Correct. And right. maybe even so. give up a minor piece for one of white's pawns once white goes h6. Yeah. And 
Yeah, we like the White King was pretty safe earlier on on the on the Queen side because White was firmly controlling the B5 break. But since some pieces have been trading off, uh, that B5 break could come through. And Lavanga's Rook B7. I guess he wants to take back with the Rook. Yeah, he wants to take back with the Rook. And one benefit of this is that H6 is never really possible because the Rook takes G6. So he's yep. establishing the sort of blockade on on the seventh rank, trying to prevent the progress of white spawns. Ding is down to a minute. I really don't like the decision to sack on E4 by Ding. I feel like that was probably over the top. Yeah, I agree. I feel like sacrificing one piece was okay, but now it's like if you ever win a piece back, you know, for one of your pawns, you're still down a piece. Or right now he's down right. two. So it felt like a bit too much. Yeah, now currently he's down two miners and he just doesn't have that much to show for it. And yeah, 40, uh, like 35 seconds against Levant's three minutes. F4. F4. Ugh, that's just not a move you play if, you, if you're happy with your position. And you know, where yeah. is he going with this spawn? Just feels too slow. I agree. Like F5 is never coming through because the bishop is firmly controlling that square. Now maybe bishop d4 looks like a very nice move. Absolutely. Preserve the bishop, centralize it. And still, bishop takes g7, can be met with the rook takes g7, white is never going f5. Yeah, Levon is in a good job with time management this, this, this match yeah. so far. That, that's the one bright spot for him, and I think he, he needs to carry that forward to the, to the three-minute b5. Yeah, b5. Looks, looks good. I mean, opening up the queen side, especially considering the fact that Ding has no time. He takes on g7, I guess, rook takes. Yep, that's what he goes for. Knight g5. Knight g5. Ding still trying to shove h6 through and then later get the knight to f7. So the question uh -huh, for Levon, right. does he trade on g5 here? What are the pros and cons of that? Yeah. Um, I, I guess he does, and then maybe goes like queen f6 or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see what he's going to do. Is h6 a real threat, though? Because if we take the rook, h7 can still be met with knight takes. Oh, you're saying let's make a random move. H6, rook takes g6, h7. Knight takes h7. Right, yeah. And then... So maybe bishop maybe f5 black is, fine. is a nice move. Yeah, reinforcing whatever piece appears on g6. Yeah. But okay, uh, well, maybe what white time. can do is go knight to f7. Oh, in response to bishop f5 or in general? Yeah, in response to bishop f5, but I guess you just take, right? Your king is completely safe. You have wow. four minor pieces. You don't see that every day, do you? Rooks. Yeah. <laughs> but he takes on c4. h6 by ding takes. Wait, but h7? Wait a minute. Knight h7? On... Wait, he had rook h7, maybe. He maybe had rook h7. Oh. He had something. Oh, 96? He had 96. Oh, 96. I'll show oh, that after Black, the game. Black's just losing a full rook. Or I guess I can show that right now. Knight h96 here, and Black's losing the rook. Because if you take on g1, Damn. White recaptures with check and wins the queen. I mean, a lot of tactics being left on the table here. And, of course, very easy yeah. for me to say. But neither of these players all that sharp in the five-minute, you know, and, and, and they're aware of that. And I think that's yeah. something that they're going to try to change. Now, this should be a win for Black. Yeah, Levon has to win this game. Ding is uh, six seconds on the clock. Levon is 50 seconds. Uh, but it's not over yet. I mean, he has two pieces for the rook, which is good, but it's not a huge material advantage. His king is, you know, nicely guarded by the bishop on g7, but we can't say that there's, a, you know, four knocks around the king, right? So right, no, still no. a lot of tricks left. And the knight on e8 is also very well placed. We often talk about the knight as a defender. It's defending the bishop, defending the pawn. It's kind of doing a hero's work on, on E8, yeah. even though it, it may look like it doesn't do anything. C3? Oh, there's queen takes C3. Yeah, I, I don't still... really like queen B7. It, I feel like he should have kept the queen closer to, to his king. Like, now there's definitely some tricks appearing. I agree. Queen B3. B3. Oy. Queen C3. Queen C3. Okay, maybe just trade into the end game and go king of seven. Yeah, trade go king of seven and then eventually pick up the d5 pawn. Yeah, which should be, should be a win. 
sitting duck. I, I wouldn't have taken on g7 here. Give me two. But okay, this is losing bishop e4. Okay, knight e8, nice Before maneuver. This. He wants to go knight of six. Okay, bishop d3 looks okay. Goes bishop oh, d7, nice move as well. Starting to stress me out with this time again. He's yeah, wait, two dipping seconds. down to don't one flag. second. Don't flag. No! Don't flag. No. We bought us bishop oh, a4. He's so close to flagging there. And then ah, Ding. he's gonna flag. Oh my Ding goodness. Flex. I feel like these time Jeez. scrambles are like they're they're, they're you know the they're, they're dead before they begin. Wow. I mean, <laughs> geez. insane. In any case, uh, the score after the five minute portion is six to three in favor of Ding Li Ren. Kind of a weird, weird five minute segment, Benjamin. I, yeah. I don't know what to make of it, but at the end of the day, Ding still holds on to a three point lead. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like Levon really has to get control of that Marshall uh, with the white pieces because he's he just got a lost position in the last game. With Black, I mean, this weird. Check Benoni is sort of working out for him. So maybe he just needs to stick to it. Yeah. I mean, he, he, whatever works, he's won two games in it. So it might be frustrating for Ding to keep trying to punish him. We will see how all of this bears out in the three minute segment. But first, we're going to go on a short break. Uh, stay with us. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We'll be back in just a few.
want to play chess online or learn how to improve? Join us at the number one chess destination in the world, chess.com. With thousands of people playing at any moment, you'll quickly find a game with someone at your level, whether you're a beginner or a grandmaster. Chess.com makes learning fun and easy. Sharpen your tactics with puzzles and enhance your strategy with our lessons by top masters. Learn from your own games with our easy to use analysis tool. Chess.com has everything you need to take your game to the next level. Signing up is free and easy. Join Chess.com today. Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Uh, the five minute portion is in the books in the match between Ding and Aroni in the first of our double header today. Benjamin, um, it gives me great relish to say this, but the Smarter Chess prediction was wrong in regards to the five minute portion, and it's now predicting a two point win for Aronian in the three minute segment. He needs some of that as he's down by three points. Yeah. Um, I think Lovana has good chances in the three-minute portion. Uh, we saw Ding taking uh, long things early on. And in the three-minute portion, I think that will just come to bite him. I do think, however, that he's better in the time scrambles because he's less prone to flagging, especially, and less prone to blunders also. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I think Lovana's handling, handling his clock well. So maybe you can get a couple wins uh, in there. Yeah, and the, the time scrambles have left a lot to be desired. I think the players both, you know, I don't know if it's their internet or what. I, I don't think so. It just seems like they, you know, in some of these time scrambles in the five-minute portion, uh, they didn't fully adjust. But they're going to have to do that in the three-minute segment because we're almost certainly going to see more time scrambles here. All right. Yeah. Game one underway, and we have yet another Ray Lopez. And yep. let's see if they were how, yeah, they were <laughs> repeating the same line. So <laughs> yeah, it's one so of those matches. So let's see how Lovano is going to try to improve. So expect 94, 92, take, take, yep. f6, same 95, stuff. queen, c8. So and he, bishop, d2. Okay. He almost certainly looked at this during the break. Like there, there's almost yeah. no question in my mind. Right. So maybe he wants to go knight h, okay, goes queen, e2. Um, I feel like these positions are slightly more pleasant, but the question is, can Lavon exert real pressure? And the reason I guess they're more pleasant is because, yeah, black is a little bit overextended and white threatens to take and go C4. And right. it's just it's just hard to handle these types of positions in blitz. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, it goes queen E4. Uh, the bishop F8, sort of the standard move would be met here with a uh, trade on b7 and then c4 black would lose a piece so it goes bishop c6 once again so after c4 the knight b4 knight b4 move is available to him yep we've seen that kind of idea before yeah okay so we have a trade c4 could still be considered but i guess then maybe black would take first and then go knight before yeah okay h4 Over but overall, I feel like Ding should be pretty comfortable in these positions. Like, well, I can play h5. Even if I put the knight on f5, nothing is really going to happen. It's my feeling. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem for white in these positions. It looks like Levon is doing everything he needs to do, and then he doesn't really have much to show for it. And yeah. you can see that here, queen g4, and, you know, maybe h6 he's going to play, but there isn't much there. Ooh. B4 Ding is shuts. not a move I quite like. It weakens, you know, the C4 square. Pawn C5 becomes a target. Um, yeah, what do you make of that? Yeah, no, I, I, this, this seems like it gives White everything that Levon would want, and I think he's exploiting it very nice. The last two moves were very cool. Bishop E3, and now the bishop vacates the square. The knight occupies it, and the knight's probably heading to C4. You could even throw an A5 if you wanted. But yep. now Aronian is a great position. N nothing major, uh -huh. but but pleasant. Exactly, yeah. And so Ding offers a queen trade. Lavon uh, keeps the queens on the board. Um, the question is, how is Lavon going to make progress, right? The knight on c4 looks pretty, but how do you really use it? Yeah, you can't go to b6, obviously, because black is a yeah. knight on d5. On the yeah, other hand, can... yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can play b3, you know, strengthening the knight, but... But yeah, once again, like, what do you do? So, yeah, what were you going to say? Yeah, no, something along the same lines. I mean, he's making 
he's making healthy, improving moves, but I was almost mm-hmm. going to say that Ding has a clearer set of improving moves than Aronian does. Like Levon can make all these moves right. like rookie four, B3, rookie one, but then what is he going to do? Ding, you know, he can prepare F5 at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like sometimes playing these positions on the defensing on the defensive side is even easier because you have less yeah. that you need to prove. Yeah. So rook g4 by Levon. I think if Ding gets a couple moves, I think he's going to go knight e7, knight c6, knight d4. That should be his plan. Yeah, even knight e7 immediately looks... Uh, yeah. There it is. He goes for it. Um, How does it feel yeah. to predict Ding Liren's move? Yeah. Um, feels great. What can I say? I mean, you're... Yeah. Levon taking a while here. And you're right, knight c6, knight c4. And how does white keep the pressure going on the king side? It's just not entirely clear. It should be yeah, replayed. And, and the awkward thing is like you can you can play c3 to stop knight of d4 because then you hang d3. Mm-hmm. So I think I think it's Ding B3. did a good job over the last couple of moves. Yeah, and, so Levon going b3 to solidify the knight as you indicated yeah so ding keeps on going for the queen trade um the rook on g4 feels a bit awkward so maybe you slide it back to e4 oh rookie four uh-huh yeah ding yeah queen h3 up. instead so mm-hmm. he does decline All the right. queen trade but on you know obviously he allows f5 but you don't want to play this move too early or else you're just going to end up weakening more squares Exactly. Yeah. So I think like Ding did a pretty good job of improving his position over the last couple of moves. But what is he doing now? Like, what do you think his plan should be? I think he should just not take too much time. Honestly, just go rookie yeah. eight. <laughs> you know, just make relatively waiting moves. Like King H eight. Uh, the, the worst thing to do in this this type of position is to take forty seconds and and try to find the the improving move. Right. And he goes for knight d4. I don't um, know. I guess, how is he going to take with this C or the, maybe yeah, the e pawn? Because the, the c pawn e creates falls. a nice pawn chain. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, yeah, I expected e takes because that Me would, too. Um, the e file was all his. And I, I, I don't like this at all for black. Ricky four, yeah. f4. And this structure would actually be good for black. If the pawn was not on b4, because the knight on c4 makes sure that the pawn on c2 is backwards, right? But it can never be attacked. And now white is going to play f4 and put pressure on the pawn on e5. No, th- this was a, a, a very poor decision, as it turns out, by Ding, because now he's given the knight total dominance over the board, and the bishop on f8 is super, super passive. But of course, yeah. it's easy to criticize, you know, in retrospect. Now, can Levon carry this all the way home? His advantage yep. is serious. He's not winning yet. There's no direct mm-hmm. invasion, I see. He wants to get the queen f5. Mm-hmm. How so does she? She... Mm-hmm. So g6 secures decision by Ding. He wants to take a bit more control over the light squares, but it does give Levon a clear target to attack. Ooh, that is a move I would be scared of playing. <laughs> you always have to yeah. watch for f5. <laughs> yep. Back to G8. Shuffle back and forth. Ding just saying, come at me and uh, preparing F5. F3. Okay, F5. Whoa. Nice move. Rookie two. Wait, F takes G4 and then Rook F4. Ugh. Or even G takes scary. H. I Wait, would have played could, G4. Hey, Queen, Queen takes F4. F4. Oh, Queen, Queen takes F4. That would have been a great G6. trade. Rookie four now. Rook G6, King F2. I, have, I feel like seven? this is tricky for black. Like there's queen c8 lurking, queen f7. Um, Knight takes c5 maybe? Knight takes c5. Right, but then you can take twice and go rook f6. Like take, take, take yeah, f3. Yeah, take twice, rook f6. For sure. For sure. To, to hit f3. Right now, rook e8 is a, is a you could even, huge threat. Rook yeah, f6 rook right f6. away. Rook g5. Or rook g5. King h8. Queen c8. This, queen f8. Rook but both e8. players have no happen. time. This Four might seconds be perpetu- for Ding. There might be a perpetual here at the end of this, by the way. Rook G6. You can take an H5. Oh, Levon! Yep. Uh, the time! Ding, move! No, okay, that's take not it, take it. it. And Rookie 8, Rookie 8. 
Wait, Ooh. take now. Wait, but Dingus, Dingus Dingus lost. Move! Rook G1, oh, Rook G1. Queen C7. Oh, yeah, Rook G1. But he was lost. He was lost. He was lost anyway. But that was insane. Wow. I mean, okay. okay I, I've put my finger on what's weird about some of these games. What's weird about these games is that it's very calm until the time scramble. And then the, 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 the uh -huh. denouement, the sort of the resolution of the game takes three or four moves. Like the position is closed. Uh -huh. Then something happens, and then like two moves later, one of them is winning. Yeah. So Levon is going for the same line again, and aha, uh -huh, he goes to queen to b8. I guess that is the improvement he cooked up over the break. Over the yeah. Um. So Ding. So he played queen c7, right? And Ding went bishop b2, and then went for early trade on d7. Okay, so he takes on d4. Uh -huh. Okay. So what is? Queen on b8 right. can combine with the bishop. It's also safeguarding, you know, these queen side squares and pawns. But okay, so Ding takes on b7, but why? Why did he not just take on d4 with the bishop? Yeah, that's a good question. He wanted to queen on d4 for whatever reason. Yeah. It, so, it seems like he's not getting much thought of the opening here. Yeah, I feel like Black just goes bishop b7 and castles, and he should have a comfortable position. Yeah, castles, and uh, I mean, in a classical game, we'd probably be seeing a draw agreement. Right, yeah. So I think Levon, he switched back to, to solid openings. I mean, I guess he felt like, uh, given the fact that Ding had a break to quickly look up some, some things in that check by Noni, it was probably too risky to go for it again. Um, so I guess he's just adopting the, the strategy of, you know, playing solo with black and then trying to win with white. Right. Okay, so in, in similar positions, Ding had gone A4, but obviously here this move doesn't come nearly with the same effectiveness. Yeah. And and Levon can simply castle, for example. No, this is, a, this is totally fine for black, and he's also up on time. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, black should be completely fine here. He goes castles, h3 by ding, um, maybe h6 by Lavon, making sure you never get back rank checkmated. And it looks pretty even. I mean, if I would have to pick a side, I think I would prefer black. It looks slightly more comfortable, but really, uh, really, really even. Okay, yeah, that queen's eight. kind of getting tossed around. This threatens bishop f6, so maybe, maybe ding should yeah. go back with his queen. Queen g3 or something. Yeah. Queen F4, four okay, play. Right but still, like, why did he not just play H6 and, and pass Ding the move, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was he's trying to sort of force things. I mean, Bishop F6 would lead to basically a total bailout. There's a high probability that this game is in a draw. Now he goes H6. Yeah. So H6. Um, yeah, what do you do if you're Ding here? Like, I guess Rook AC1 is very natural. For sure, knight g3 maybe. Yep. Something of that, of that general nature, just sort of an improving move. Okay. Well, um. Mm -hmm. Wait, go ahead. No, no, I was, I was going to say anything. Oh yeah, I was saying yeah, probably knight g3 is met with rook to c8, and then black wants to enter with rook c2. So I was just going to say how one. awesome of a, how, or sorry, how terrible the chess player you are, but. You interrupted oh. me rudely, so you weren't even <laughs> able to let me compliment you. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're just Takes great. on D1. Rook, rook C8. C8. Okay, so Rook C2 is now a threat. Rook D2 to prevent it. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah. I mean, at some point, I think Levon's going to go Bishop F6, and basically, I, this is not a total draw. Like, stuff can still no. happen because there's some open files. Yeah, black controls the C file, which feels more important. Um, Bishop B5 by Ding. Wait, but now G5. G5 could be a Ooh. nice move. Because if you go Queen D4, do you go Rook D8? And Queen no, G3 Queen allows Queen E4, and that's definitely progress for black. I agree. Centralize the Queen. Levon refraining from that and going Queen B6. Yeah. Um, I guess yeah, Ding... I used to go Queen A5. Queen uh, A5, yeah, hit the, yeah, rook, hit the rook. 
and maybe infiltrate to E1 later. Yep. Huh. I like the way Levon is playing this. I really like the way Levon is playing this. Queen D4, Ding trying to bail out. Yep. And Queen A5 here is, is an interesting try. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see what he's going to do. I mean, given the match situation, he might keep Queens on the board, but I think objectively, maybe... Maybe it's better to take... Okay, goes queen a5. They trade on f6. f6. Still a little bit annoying for Ding. He's also low on the clock. I mean, he's, he's down 20, 20 seconds. Not yeah, a he's huge really deal, low. I mean, the way that he... The way that, you know, these time scrambles have gone... Okay, knight g3 is a good move. Covering e4 square. And Ronin can go... And maybe knight d5 walks into knight h5. Yeah, that definitely looks annoying. And knight d5, okay, it goes to h5, but that always feels loose. Yeah, but... it feels loose. I would move the king away if I were Ding. Just go, I, although I guess h4, h4 is uh -huh. an idea because you cannot take that. The rook's going to hang. It goes a4, which is meant by h4. Uh -huh. Okay, cannot take. But I feel like he just created a weakness for himself. Agreed. Agreed. Because now the knight defends the rook. White threatens to take yeah. on h4. Congratulations. You know, you push the pawn at h4. Yeah. What are you going to do now? So rook c1 played. Oh, he hung his pawn. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a terrible chance. He needs to be disqualified from BSC. Yeah. Okay, rook d1. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't like, I don't like this pawn push at all. I feel like white is going to play, let's say, Knight h2, knight f3, that pawn will be weak. Mm -hmm. Also, the g5 square is weakened, like if white ever goes knight g5. And actually, as we're talking, Lovon is getting down to like 15 seconds yeah, on the five. clock. Okay, g5, five. so full steam ahead. Knight h2 here looks good. Queen d4, centralizing the queen. Yeah. G7, and there comes knight the knight. D. I think you have to go queen d5. I think you have to try to get the queens off here. Yeah. Yeah. Listens to me. Ding is like, no way, Jose. Thing is also up on the clock. So Levon Queen H five. Oh Queen H8, those are nasty. Queen H8 look like, nasty. No, he's gonna move. I'm running down to one second again. Ah uh, right. Queen B2, maybe keep creating threats. This is so hard to defend yeah. against it. Oh, he's gonna flag again. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is just insane. There's somebody's flagging every game, Benjamin. Yeah. Um I don't oh know what, what is this like. I know it's I, tough to I, do I with one it's... second increment, but they're flagging a lot. They are flagging an abnormal amount, no question about it. I mean, I've, I don't think I've seen this many time scrambles decided by a flag this early in the time scramble. Yeah, I I don't understand it. I mean, you just need better awareness of your clock. You can't let yourself get to one second in a complicated endgame. Period. Because it's impossible no, I, to play. Aroni and Magnus, it doesn't matter who you are. You can't sustain an equal position for 20 moves with one second. Exactly. Can't do it. We're, seeing, we're seeing even more flags than at a Olympic Games opening ceremony, I would say. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> but Laval looks to be slightly better here. I th Although, yeah, I feel like Ding is probably fine again, no? Yeah, I mean... We've seen this end game so many, we've seen this type of structure so many times. I, I and I never know how to evaluate it because white seems to be better. I mean, he's getting a knight to f5, he has the a file. Yeah. On the other hand, there's really no targets in this position. It's hard to actually tie yourself to some weakness. Yeah. Um, yeah, h6, nice move by Ding. If Bishop of A, there was g5. Um, yeah, like that last game was just completely unnecessary by Levon. He was up on the clock. And then move h5 was just, I think that's where it all started. It was just so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. like, and then he took he a while. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just something random. But he, he took a while deciding on g5 and, and then it spiraled out of control. Okay, rook a6. Nice yeah. move. He's probably going to double on the a file would be my guess. Although yeah. c4 needs to be reckoned with at some point. Exactly. Yeah, c4 looks like a nice move. If white doesn't react, then uh, black's going to take on d3, and the d3 pawn becomes weak. And otherwise, in case of a trade, then uh, b2 comes under fire. So yeah, even here. By Lev yeah, you can even go for it, yeah. c4 maybe? d4? I don't know. But it's not needed. You can also improve your position with king f7 and mm -hmm. 
I mean, yeah, the Knight on the five looks nice, but it's not really doing anything. Yeah, that's been a problem for that Knight in several games, actually. And it's really a problem for Levon that, yeah, whenever he gets closer, he loses again. And yeah, the gap is now three points. So, yeah, he needs to work on that gap before the bullet because there isn't, there's 40 minutes left in the three minute portion, but I don't think he can afford to get into the bullet with, with a four, you know, three or four point deficit. I think he needs to close that. Okay, so knight c7, and... ding, relocating his knight to e6, which he's done yeah. before in these types of positions. Yeah, an excellent maneuver by ding. Um, and yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I feel like Levon definitely needs to close that gap because it does feel like he's more uh, prone to flagging. Why would you think that? I don't understand. Is it, have they flagged in this match? Why are you? Why <laughs> well, are you just inventing stuff? Like I, I don't know why you would conclude that. I mean, is there any evidence to that claim? <laughs> no, I'm just making that up. You're just yeah. making it up, right? I mean, that's what I thought. Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so F4 by by Mr. Levon, mm -hmm. and yep. obviously can't take the pawn. He dropped the knight, so he's created some some pressure all of a sudden on Black's position, exploiting the undefended nature of this knight. Exactly. But what do you do after g6? Because if you move the knight to h4, then knight d4, your rook is under attack, and it feels like the position collapses. So maybe you have what to about sacrifice. F takes e5. Let's go. All right. So g Tank ready F, style. gf um, looks interesting. I think he has to go for it. Knight h4, knight d4 looks very sad. He has to go for it and fast. I would not take yeah. 45 seconds here and, cal and try to calculate this. Because this is where yeah. Levon gets into trouble. Good job. That yeah. time he he went for it confidently, intuitively. I don't know how to evaluate this. Maybe he, white is just worse. But at yeah. least he's living himself with some time. Yeah, so he has three pawns for the knight. Um, okay, so the king is in check. Where should the king go? Like towards the I'm center gonna... or like back to the g file I feel oh, i'm gonna let ding make that decision <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm I'm we'll let him figure that <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah yeah he needs he needs the calculation practice you know we we already yeah. have graduated from that that need to, to, to calculate okay king e8 so he goes toward the center e8. knight f3 yeah. is is the threat so mm -hmm. I, I would imagine yeah. bishop takes h6 has to be played Right, but then after takes, takes, you hang the f5 pawn, and your pawns are no longer dangerous. Mm. Do I not have a check? Okay. Oh, king d7, e6, king, king c8. Yeah. Somehow you escape. You barely hang on, yeah. It's kind of crazy. I feel like we might see that on the board. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think if you're Levon, okay, it takes on h6. Bishop Ooh. b7. Wait okay, a second. It's risky. Now... Does does uh, Levon have to move his rook from f6? Or is there some sort of maybe rook g6 and then e6? Uh huh. That looks Don't. interesting. Okay, goes rook, rook a6. That a6. feels off. I agree. I would have preferred four. to keep the rook on g6 so that it would be able potentially to move to g8 with a check. Yeah. Now he does. He, now he doesn't really have threats. It feels like the knight should be better here than the pawns because the pawns are not really going anywhere. Um, Although from personal experience and time scrambles, um, pawns can actually be very effective. That's why I like what Ding is doing. He's just trying to nip this in the bud. He goes c4, mm -hmm. maybe even takes, maybe even throw d takes c takes d3 in. Uh huh. But Lafon, wait, what happens if he? I uh, can take an f5, but there's d2. And then, because... it, yeah. So he takes on d3. Ding also has a check in his pocket if he needs it. Yeah. If he can just play bishop c5 at his, at his convenience. Wait, the pawns can are take on g5. Up the board. Can black oh, take wait. on g5 and go knight f3, knight takes g5? But then like king f2 and rook g4 at the end, still tricky. But you can, you can pick, the, yeah, and he's going to do that, I guess. He's going to take on g5 with the knight. Yep. Take and rook g4 is needed. You have to go for that. Okay, takes, rook g4, or d4 right away, Okay. Drawing chances for white here. Obviously, white is now yeah. squarely playing for a draw. Rook f4 is yeah. one possibility here. But it is okay, rook f4, but okay, king d3. Okay, check. Wait, but isn't rook your, b3? Rook b3. No, but but this is rook, g, rook, rook 
G6 feels off. I think he had to move the other rook. I think Levon is trying to play E6 here and quickly play rook G8 mm -hmm. and E7. Look at 4K clearing the E4 square for his king after a check. Okay, both were now down, down to five seconds. seconds. We've got another time e4. scramble. King E4, but rook B4. How I'm do you taking defend? too king long G4. here again. Yeah, five, Levon, king D7. Seconds. I would play King D7. Put, yeah, you have to. Take down to one second. King E6. Oh, King, oh, King E4. I'm watching have the clock, second. Benjamin. Somebody's going to flag Wait. here. Nah. Oh, play with point one, one second. second. Oh, he flags again. Oh my gosh. I mean, he was already lost to be fair. Once he gave up that D4 pawn, but my, oh, just, he, I mean, I, there's, there's nothing to say. Ding is just he doing a better flagging. job. <laughs> managing this time. Yeah. It's and so, he's repeating the check Benoni. It's so it's I know it's so tough with like one second on the clock to actually make a move, but I feel like they they get they let themselves get down to one second too easily. Yeah, you can't. I mean, if I'm completely honest, you you can't flag this many times with an increment. You can't right. can't let yourself do that. And and he's repeating this mistake, and it's really hurting him. Um, in 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 these very tense situations where he uh you know, he just doesn't have time. Yeah. Now, it, it is really tough with one second. I think with one second, you generally have to treat it almost as uh, no increment in the sense yes. that you just have to follow your intuition. If you keep thinking, you will flag. Well, I think to that, to that point, I think one of the mistakes that players make sometimes is they say, well... Uh, when I get down on the clock, I'll be able to build up. I'll be able to build up a little, a little time. What they don't realize is that just executing a move actually takes basically one second unless you're pre-moving. Yeah. So you're never going to get out of the rut. If you're down to two seconds in a tense position, you are not building up anything. You're going to remain at two seconds for the rest of the game. Exactly. That's why you have to, like, you can try to occasionally throw in a pre-move to build up a little bit of time, but... Like you said, it's uh, going to be tough. And as Ding we speak, has abandoned <laughs> King side. He's just going completely yeah. on the queen side. Maybe just b4. Right. And why did why did Levon not play b5? He had the opportunity to do so. He did, and he should have played b5. Now it's too late. Now White yeah. strikes first. That's like when you when you're eating with friends and you order an appetizer. And you're trying to be nice and let everybody take their, their fill. And it's like spring rolls or something. Everybody takes uh -huh. one. You don't have something left. You got to play B5 when you have the chance. You got to take yeah. a, take the appetizer first. Exactly. Now, <clears throat> yep, goodbye. Now there's no more no more B5, no more uh, fried calamari left. And Ding is going to transition back to the king side where he has complete blank check. Look at Levon's pieces yeah. on the queen side. <laughs> No, I think this position is uh, probably strategically lost. Lavon was, yeah, I feel like he was really too shy to push B5. And now Ding is going to slowly improve the position. And eventually he's going to break through because the queen side is completely locked up. His king is completely safe there. So Ding just needs to be patient here. Yep, he needs to be patient. But at the same time, okay, King B3. So he parks his king on a, as safe of a square as he can get it to. Now, the, the only yeah. question here is, <laughs> can Levon hold the fort on the king's side? Generally, from what I've seen in these games, the answer is no, because Ding is, I think, is going to go F3, yeah. H4, and H5. Ugh. Right. <laughs> this is but not then after H5, don't you just go G5? And even Yeah, you do, don't pretty. you? And everything's yeah. locked. No, I agree. Ding has to be careful when, as to, like, when he goes H5. Oh. And Levon goes f5 himself, opening up the, the king's side. I guess he just did not want to wait around and wait for mm. Ding to open up the position. But this feels risky. Ding has let has has lost control in a couple of these situations where Levon went f5. Yeah. So the question True. here, like e takes f5, or does he go? Well, knight h5 might run into f4. And that knight on e8 defends the bishop, which is really important. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, f4 is actually a threat. Um, so I guess he has to take on f5. He goes bishop g5, another way to address Reason this threat. Absolutely reasonable. Now knight h5. 
seems a lot mm-hmm. more appealing. Yep. Pile on the pressure. Yep. He takes like- F5 also looks good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like knight h5 because after a trade, I guess okay, queen takes looks extremely dangerous for black. So just knight f knight h5, maybe f4 to keep it a little bit more closed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, f4 f4 played. Yeah, that's what Levon does. And Levon has been be- very good in, in these positions, actually. These Agreed. Czech Benonis where he played f where he's played f5 and he's hanging by a thread. He's holding holding the fort. But I feel like he's especially been good when he also created some counterplay on the queen side. Yeah. <laughs> and now that that counterplay is not there, because... Uh, what do you mean it's G5. not there? Of course it's there. Black is attacking on the queen side. Okay, so he's going to win a piece, <laughs> but at what cost? G6? Oh, this is going to be nasty. But Where G6, is... does Bishop that takes do G4. anything? Like Bishop takes G4, right. I thought so what I do I, I, here? Knight F6, maybe? But take the bishop. I feel like these games, it's the same script every time. Like Ding is probably winning, but how does he break through exactly? Oh, first thing you don't want to do is listen to Daniel Nerdisky. Uh, <laughs> I'm never <laughs> going to suggest the right move here. He goes Knight F6. I was thinking Knight takes H7, but again, uh-huh. that probably means he's going to play it, and it probably means it's wrong. <laughs> right. Um, so okay, you cannot take the knight because g6 should be checkmate. So yeah, it's checkmate. Okay, goes g6 right away. But Ooh. is he actually threat? Okay, this so is a funny cannot, line. <laughs> cannot take with the e knight because g6 can you take is with the, checkmate. Can you take with the rook or the g knight? Is the question. If you take with the g knight, I thought that might allow the queen infiltration to h6. Yeah. And There's if you take with a rook? Yeah, what happens if you take with a rook? Um, Maybe that's what you need to do. Ding has 20 seconds. Levon has 34. Okay, takes with a rook. Uh-huh. So how does Ding proceed here? I would take that rook. But then, and then you go take... Queen h6. With... Uh-huh. I would take... Knight takes f6 and queen yeah. h6. Okay, he's listening to you. So it means it's bad, right? Right. I don't know why he's doing this. Why is he making yeah. all the moves I'm suggesting? Okay, so he's threatening checkmate with queen f8, knight j, rook takes h7. So that What about knight g7? That looks like a nice move. Yeah, blocking everything with both the knights. I guess pawn takes h7 there. Whoa, Wait, but- queen f8! Wait, he just blundered a bishop. Oh my god, that move was wrong Wait, on was a lot that? of he levels. <laughs> hung the bishop. Like, okay, the rook but he's swings still- in to defend. Wait, but knight g4, knight g4 with the fork? Knight so G4, queen, H3. queen H3. Oh, dang, right. it's so tricky. Levon with six seconds. Look at the clock again. Levon, you got it. Queen okay, H3. Queen H3, only move. Only move. Only you move. Got oh, he takes what? it, but this is just lost. Wow. Wait, Levon's I mean, king is completely safe. There was, was apparently a mate. There was apparently a mate, according to the eval bar, after Bishop F3. Uh, was it just she takes H7? I guess so right because then you cannot protect g8 no it was it was just check and g takes h7 yeah it was check and g takes h7 and I, i'm just surprised ding did not play queen h3 yeah. i gotta say the, the the you know maybe the experience level or the lack of experience playing a degenerate 30 second bullet is coming in whatever it is <laughs> you're getting a lot of time scrambles and uh you know, they're going back and forth, but currently Ding Li Ren still holds on to a three-point lead. We are going to go on our halftime break. Uh, let the players take a breather. When we come back, we'll be watching the second half of the three-minute portion. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We will be back in a few.
How many brilliant moves have you played? When do you play your best chess? How many games have you won by castling in the end game? How many opponents have you played from New Zealand? And most importantly of all, how many Botez gambits has Alexandra Botez played? Find the answers to all of these questions and many, many more at chess.com slash insights. Our new tool that lets you dive deep into all of the fun and instructive data behind your chess. Try it today. Championship Chess is just getting started this December. Don't miss the full coverage of the World Rapid and Blitz Championships from Kazakhstan coming your way December 26th through the 30th right here on chess.com. Grandmaster Yun Ludwig Hammer, the one and only, will bring you the fast-paced action as Magnus Carlsen tries to defend his 2019 title. I know everybody is looking forward to that tournament. Round time start at 1 a.m. Pacific and then 12 a.m. Pacific on the last day mark your calendars you do not want to miss this tournament and we hope you're not missing the speed chess championship because it's a double header today we're watching the first of these two matches grandmaster daniel erdiski bringing you the coverage with grandmaster benjamin bach benjamin three-point lead for ding topsy-turvy match crazy time scrambles or lack thereof what do you make of all this yeah i feel like really uh uh whoever will flag uh the the least will we'll probably win the match. Uh, they need to somehow get a hold of those time scrambles. We're seeing a bit too many blunders, but especially too many flags, I feel. Yeah. No question about it. And Levon Aronian deviates on the first move. Mm -hmm. And he plays 1d4. Yep. He's going for a London. Um, yeah, so this is one of the sharper lines of the London where Black <clears throat> takes the pawn on b2. But uh, so White's pawn structure is weakened, but at the same time, he has a lead in development. Yeah, White has a lead in development. And, and Frank, it, usually Black ends up taking on c5 at some point, and then White sometimes plays pawn c4. So White has to basically prove compensation here. Exactly, yeah. e4, and, wow. Uh, and apparently uh, Ding knew this move. Yeah, Ding seems super booked up, which is... Uh, you know, a bit of a worrying sign for Levon because the position is pretty sharp. And if you don't know what you're doing here with Y, you can easily end up being worse. In fact, he already might be queen before. I mean, oh, yeah. that actually hits the two bishops. I think yeah. oh, knight pd4, but now Ding takes the pawn on c5 and in a pretty good version, I think. Yes, yeah, c3. But yeah, it feels like this has gone wrong for Levon um ding is up a pawn i'm not really seeing the compensation yeah i mean it 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 feels like ding is better booked up yeah it certainly feels that way i mean he definitely was now there, there is you know why does a knight on d4 white has ideas of going bishop e3 maybe the queen on c5 in particular i think is the problem that ding needs to solve and he solves it by grabbing mm -hmm. another pawn yep so greedy. Um, yeah, so does Levon have anything here, though? Like rook c1, wow. maybe rook b3. Rook, rook b3. Three three. Now, if queen a5 queen then takes, 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 takes six. bad. Yeah, so or you have even to go queen c5. 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 Bishop. Okay, Levon. Levon can take in bishop b3, and the queen right. is... We can sack the queen. Well, which... if, if even knight takes c6 and bishop b3. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. I think c6 and bishop b3. He plays bishop b3 immediately, which I thought about briefly, but I, I just thought Ding takes on d4 and returns back to c7. Yeah, I'm not buying it. I mean, no, maybe that's he can really weird. Go for, yeah, maybe he can go for some sort of attack on the king side with a rook swing over, but it feels too speculative. No, Levon missed something here. Now Ding returns home scot-free. And yeah. not only is he scot-free, he's up two pawns, so... This is just bad for Levon. Yeah. He needed to take no. on c6 first. And the reason why is that the pawn on c6 blocks the queen from escaping backward. I agree. Yeah. So he goes bishop d3. It's not over yet, though, because he still has a lot of tricks, but it's hard to see how exactly he's going to make it work. Yeah, because things going to go b6. He's also down a minute, yeah. which is not helping. Exactly. So knight c5, excellent move by Ding. Uh, he wants to trade off that bishop on d3. I feel like if that bishop on d3 leaves the board, 
it's just over. Like there's no attack, it's just down two pawns. So maybe bishop takes c5. Okay, he goes rook c3, b6. Yep, and this should be seven, rook c8. White, black has a million ways to improve here and complete his development. Oh, bishop takes h7. No, but that's, that's no. not going to work. Okay, let's create no. a knight d2, slow move. Right. Wait, but, but like, question. It, I mean, anything wins. I mean, g6 is winning, rook h8, and king g8. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't even that, do this in a 30 second game, no, right? No, no, no. This no. is. <laughs> this is. This is a non-starter. I'm sorry yeah. to live on, but this is a non-starter because King G8 and I mean, he, has, he, has no piece. Piece. he has no pieces There's... on the king side. Okay, I mean, so... he wants Rook C3, Rook H3. Yeah, but it feels way too slow. Black has all the time in the world to do something about that. King like... has eight years to like, <laughs> you know, yeah. put some money in his in his uh, 401k, and you know, you know, he'll have to worry about this five years down the line. He goes G6. <laughs> yeah, the problem for Levan is now he can go queen h6, but there's always bishop f8, bishop g7. Black is completely safe, and he's queen g4, but I mean... No, he's just down a piece, bishop a6. But you can all... Yeah. If, if Ding is feeling unsafe, you can play bishop f8, bishop g7. Right. Um, And then and then he doesn't have to worry about anything on queen the king d7. side. Queen d7, excellent move. He wants to go queen a4, and then, you know... Uh, somehow apply pressure to the bishop on d4 is my guess, but there's there's no attack. There's no attack. What is he doing? Bishop a6, bishop d3 maybe? <clears throat> yep. Also, that is a nice idea, and Ding goes for it. No, but it w this is a frustration sacrifice. Like, bishop takes h7 is one of those moves. You can still play bishop d3, by the way, because if bishop yeah, takes I mean, c5, there's intermezzo. Yeah, this just feels very unnecessary because he's just throwing a game for no reason, really. Yep. And he's going to be down four. This, yeah. Oh, no Can't way to any sugar. Other way. No way to sugar. No, I mean, I, I don't think Levon would want us to put it any other way. I mean, he needs to get it together here with 23 minutes left in the in the three minute portion of this match. I wouldn't say it's yeah. slipping away from him, but like I said, you can't go into the bullet with a five point deficit against Dang. Rook D8, I mean, no. Yeah. And yeah, we mentioned earlier how this line is tricky for black, right? Because the black queen goes out, you know, picking off um, a couple of pawns, but it's also very tricky for white because white is sacrificing some pawns. His pawn structure is weakened and Levon didn't know the right follow-up and that's how he find himself Levan, in trouble. Levon has five seconds and he's down a piece. Yeah. Now it's never it's... over till it's over. Yep. But it's over. <laughs> it kind of is, right? I mean, Levon is probably going to flag at some point. He's probably going to flag, and even if he doesn't, it, it's resignable. Queen d7, I mean, yeah. anything. I would just resign and start a new game because this is there's no chances here. No, you're right. Like, he has to, yeah, keep the match situation in mind and real, realize that this game is just lost. It's better to get another game and, um, yeah, not waste any of your own time. And watch him silence us with a miracle comeback in this game. Nah, there's no chance. I've I've seen enough of these SCC matches to know that anything is possible, but I agree with you. Not here. This is not the time or place. Well, as we say that... King G6. King G6 as we say G8. that, I think Levon might but resign. In, in King G7, Bishop G5, it's actually not easy at all. I would just go King G7, Bishop G5, trade, and then go but into a perpetu perpetual. perpetual. Yeah, Queen H6. Oh my goodness! Wait and wait, what? Wait a second. King G6 with Queen H8. Oh, on my flag too. Oh, you play oh with my point God. one seconds. Oh my! Is Ding we, really it, throwing this? Is this is unbelievable. Four, three, Four. F5, F5. It's he has like, to push the F pawn. Oh my wait, God! But take, it's take. Oh, oh. GF and White is okay. I mean, okay is too strong of a word, but he's very much in the game. But in the game. Man. I mean, you you jinxed it because you said Levon would flag. So it's no, actually no, your no. fault. No, you no, no. said Levon would, would flag. No, I would <laughs> jinx him if I would say Levon is not going to flag. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's fair. Okay, right. okay. Okay, yeah. you get it. That, that is a definition I, I, of jinxing. I'll let, right? you, I'll let you fly. I'll let you fly. Yeah. 
Yeah, Levon is is really really struggling here. He's down by four, and there's 20 minutes left yeah. in this segment. He's had a perfect score with Black in these types of positions, though. I feel like. True. That is true. Yeah. Um, man, but how like how does he flag every game? I don't get it. Yeah. No. Well, what happens is that he, yeah, he he just gets sucked into a long think at some point. Like, for example, right. you know, after he sacked the piece, it took him a while to figure out a way to somehow get back into the game. And then yeah. I, I honestly think, and this this might sound a little condescending, but I think part of it is lack of internet play experience. Because when you play a lot of bullet and blitz, and I, I certainly don't mean to suggest Levon is not a brilliant blitz player, which he is. But specifically when you play online, you mentioned this before, having a sense of the increment, having a, a very keen sense of what it means to have one second and yeah. sometimes you just have to know how quickly to play without even looking at the clock. That stuff comes with experience. Exactly, yeah. And uh, yeah, especially if you, yeah, like Total Tuesday is a good example where you play this this time control with three uh, minutes plus a one second increment. And mm -hmm. every time, you know, I hit, uh, let's say he made a move with one with point one seconds on the clock, right? Like normally people just panic and then they just, blitz from there but he sort of stays too calm almost and that's right. where he makes himself very prone to flagging and he's got another bad position he so he he temporarily sacrificed a piece but he's going to go f4 on the next move and trap the bishop what i really am fearing is if ding takes drops his bishop back gives a check and then sticks the knight on e4 i feel like we're going to have a case of positional domination exactly i think that's a nice line that you mentioned but if white goes for, okay, so you're saying e takes a five, g takes a five, bishop h3, I guess queen takes h4 is too much, right? You have to go f4, and then indeed the position looks miserable. Bishop e6 check, I think, Ding is going to play. Bishop e6 or 94. First. Yeah. No, this is terrible. The bishop on g7 is dead. Yep. As much yeah. as I want to speak in support of King's Indian type positions, this yeah. is not. The, one of the greatest I've seen. Yeah. But I feel like in that last game, he really made a mistake uh, in terms of letting himself get down to 1.1 seconds. Like, that is very, very dangerous. Yep. Like, no, the, the, the fact that he flags on the next move, that can happen. But if you get to one second too often, you're going to flag at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're just going to fail to execute a move. Now, Ding has a pretty... Good choice here. I mean, he can take on c8 and take on d6, I suppose. You could also just make a slow move, like yeah. queen d3, somewhere. queen d3. Yeah. Some... Because the thing is, you're not even worried from White's perspective of losing the e6 pawn. In the event of a trade, you're going to have the d5 square. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ding decides to <laughs> waited for me to say that and then decided to trade. Is he going to take yeah. d6? Yeah, he really wants to extract the maximum out of his position. Like, it would be ideal, of course, to take on d6, return a knight to d4. Yeah, and really. if he can then consolidate, he's just winning. And it's up to Levon. Like, are there any tricks or is this just lost? Like, if you go queen d7, knight, knight d4 four? is going to be played. It, here's what I would do. No, I don't know what I would do. I was thinking of involving the rook somehow, rook a7 to f7 at some point. And so for that reason, I didn't really want to block the rook's access, but... I don't see uh -huh. how to do that. But still, like, you can go rook f3, but it doesn't really do too much, right? Yeah, no, I I think black is... I mean, the e bell bar is not reflective of how bad I think black's position is. I'm not sure why. Yeah. Um, yeah, you would assume that this is maybe, like, plus six or something. Yeah, no, after especially... Yeah, and then I comes back to e4... White gets the queen out, castle's long, and, and it's over. Yeah, so Levon is thinking. Um, I would assume he has to go over something like queen d7, knight e4, take, take queen f5. Mm -hmm. But still, queen, F, queen d3 seems to block all of Black's ideas. Yeah, and then maybe queen somewhere, queen f3. But even if the king, king escapes king to c3 d2, like that. Yeah. Levon down to 30 seconds now. And we've seen this kind of thing play out before. Okay, he ends up going for queen d7. 
Uh, now, I guess he, he has to take an E4. This is not looking good. He's also down at 20 seconds yet again. And he goes to B5, which I like from the perspective of developing counterplay, but Ding can still go Queen D3. Yep. Okay, he takes it. He takes first. Okay. Still, you know, the position opens up a little bit, so the king cannot feel completely safe on E1. So rook b8, I, I'd assume. Yeah, he goes for it. Let's see how Ding will try okay. to stabilize. This is, uh, you know, and that's the thing with these types of positions is there's always life that's yeah. left. D6 by Ding. Levon down to seven seconds. Queen Six D5 C4, maybe. Four, D7, rook D8. Rook F7. Seven. Oh, and suddenly you're getting checkmated. Yeah, queen G4 is queen coming. Queen G4. Yeah, it's, he's, it's he's over. Flag. Yeah. Queen, queen A5, A5 play, check. F2. King F1, yeah, whatever. Or King F1, yeah. Either move is fine, and queen g4. Queen a6, I think queen g4, or just move the king. But you can well, allow, yes, yeah, c3 is just one check, king g2. Rook g8, g8 play with point one, but d8, yeah. And yep. on, and and ding wins yet again. Five point lead. Wow, um, what a yeah. crazy match. Wait, he goes for the London again? Yeah, let's see if he repeats that line, because clearly ding was better prepared than him. Yeah, but I mean, you can't. He can go into the same line again, right? Because no way, no the theory, he, and he did not. Ding definitely out prepared him here. Let's see. Okay, they're repeating it. Maybe Levon is going to play Bishop takes c six before going Bishop e three yeah. this time. Oh, Knight f d four is the move. Okay. Uh huh. Different move. So let's see. So Ding takes takes on c five, c but c three okay. doesn't really seem to do anything. I mean, I, it, it, it's the same type of position they had, except Ding is going to be only up one pawn rather than two, which I guess or a piece. is still not great. Or, yeah, yeah, two pawns and a piece, yeah. It's still not amazing, but it, it, these positions sometimes occur in the French, actually, uh, in the Tarash, yeah. where you get this structure. Right. Well, okay, so knight b6. Well, okay, he has some sort of attack. Bishop d3. If white can I, make a couple of moves, he's going to go queen g4, bishop h6, and there's something to be said for the white position. I think Levon might be eyeing bishop takes h7. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I wonder what the what the over-under is for Ding snapping off that pawn on c3. I think he's tempted by it, but deciding to develop. Yeah. Um, let's see what Levon is going to do. Maybe rook e1, rook e3, and then sec on h7. But you know, okay, queen h5. But queen wait a g6. second, g6, queen h6, queen takes c3. Yeah, wait, how is that not? Wait, you're just no, Levon is. But he has knight f3. Knight f3, knight f3, queen takes c3, and knight g5. Knight g5. If yeah. that works out, he silences everybody. Takes yeah, but there's f6. Here. There's f6 at the end, and rook f7. Oh, f5? like you wait for knight g5, you take it, and then you play f5. Yeah. D F5 Ding playing feels, f5 immediately. It feels slightly panicky in the sense that it was not necessary, but still fairly solid. If you go rook f7, there's always bishop f8. Very difficult to break through with white. No, this is still a difficult... From a practical perspective, I still would take black here any day. Yeah. Of the week. Yeah. Including Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I kept talking about that. Yeah, no, I mean, White has some sort of initiative, but I don't really see how he can ever make anything happen on the king's side. He can actually, believe it or not, take an f6, but okay. uh, I don't think that's really oh, I believe leading it. anywhere. I, I don't believe it's leading anywhere either, except to yeah. path to perdition there with e5 and queen takes e3 hanging. Levon taking a big think here. Yeah, uh, probably deciding whether he wants to defend c3. I mean, a move like rook c1 is not glamorous, but you might have to defend that pawn because black is threatening to win a piece. Okay, yeah. he takes it. Wait, I think a glitch just happened there. Um, a glitch? How, 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 how did, how did he take like? that pawn? Yeah, that's illegal, right? Yeah. Okay, so I think he's Another... disqualified. I agree. Yeah. Wait a minute, but, Queen E7, and what is the follow-up going to be? Is he just sort of sacking it for the long-term play? Yeah, I mean, what is his follow-up? It it feels a bit too speculative. Um, 
Queen e7, rook f7, both look completely fine to me. Yeah, queen e7. And no, clearly insufficient compensation. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny because uh, people often talk how openings do not play a big role in blitz, but here I feel like they do in the sense that Levon has gotten into trouble out of the opening. I mean, here in the London, he's in trouble, like in, in the two games that he's played. In the Marshall, he's not really been able to get any pressure. And Ding uh, got, you know, good positions in the... Uh, Queen's Gambit accepted, so yeah, it's 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 kind of interesting, right? Sure. How, how that is playing out. For sure. I mean, there's no question that Levon is is not getting his quote unquote his type of position. By the knight c4, I think is very accurate here, basically yeah. inviting a a total trade on g7. Uh, but as as Ding tries to convert this, yeah, uh, Levon has has been uncomfortable in the openings. Ding has been very well prepared, uh, not. Yeah. Perfect tactically, Ding has missed his share of opportunities, but he has been superbly prepared across the board. And uh, yeah, that is important in SCC matches. Yeah. Oh, okay, there's a nice tactic here, e5. like rook g5, e5. Oh, you're, you're blundering upon Benjamin. Did yeah. you not do your puzzle rush today? Come on. You need to oh, step well, it up after... as a commentator. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So h4 is played, queen f7. <laughs> White's attack is fizzling out here as Ding has done a great job. Rook takes f4. Hey, well, he's actually hanging upon here. Yeah, no, Rook takes right. f4 as, as possible. Oh, wait, there is takes and knight g5. He has to go for that, even though it's because black gives up the queen. It's losing because of queen takes g5. Oh, that's a nice detail. I wonder if yeah. Ding saw that when he took an f4. He probably did. Um, I guess so, but is it still something you want to allow? I mean, it can get a little tricky with the queen and the time scramble. Right. It goes king h2, but that is just lost. Rook f5, for example. Oh, oh no, no, no. Then rook takes f5 and you lose the queen. Oh, yeah. So. Then actually, yeah. Did you not do your puzzle rush? I did not, actually. No. Yeah. So this line. <laughs> <laughs> I just guilty as charged. Okay, 20 seconds for ding. That's the biggest hope for Levon is yeah. the time, time pressure here, but... It just seems yeah. like he's almost out of threats. Rook F now Rook F5 is possible. Exactly, yeah. It feels like he's just running out of steam. Um, Bishop E8. Knight E5 is a tricky move, because if you take, he's going to take with the E Rook, and then Rook H. Yep. Rook he goes for it, yeah. Move on on the same page. Queen G8 can be considered. Six. Six. But once again, like, Black has more pieces than white. Black has more Queen defenders than white attackers. Queen takes C3. That's yeah, a nice almost, move, yeah. Almost ends the game. And rookie three still keeps the pieces on the board. Just queen d4. I mean, Ding has seven seconds. Levon has half a minute. That's definitely a factor. Rook takes c6. Rook f7. Knight e5. Queen nice. f7. Queen f7. Okay. Ding is not converting this very confidently. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess he has to drop the rook back. Or least. He's got to keep time on the clock. Just yeah, the rook. which he's not doing. Rook g6 is possible, by the way, here as well. But then maybe queen takes g6. Okay, now Levon is down gotta on the go, clock. Gotta go, dude. Gotta move. Three. Got it. Rook d6, okay. but... Oh, knight h6. Knight h6. Knight h6. Knight h6. Knight h6. Oh, my goodness. He finds it. He finds that h6. Rook takes g5. You take the queen with check. Dig Wait. with two seconds. You move on. Queen, turn this around. Rook. Wait, Dig's think... going to flag. Wow. What an okay. insane swindle. Donya, when was the last game when a player did not flag? I honestly don't know. Yeah, no, every, every game. So like every in. game. That's, that's, a, I mean, that's an understandable blunder. Knight H6 came out of absolutely nowhere. Yeah. And for Ding, I mean, Levon needs a lot more where that came from. Like He needs to win this yeah. next game, and then he needs a big run in the bullet. But that's crazy. Yeah, four points is still within striking distance, kind of, right? Yeah. Like, had Ding won that game, it would have been six. That's It feels like then at some point it's just getting too much. Right. No, but I'm, I'm just curious to see what the bullet's going to look like. Levon, yeah. if, if people will remember, really struggled against, against Dubov, in, Dubov in, in, yeah. in the first match, and that, that makes me apprehensive. But... At the same time, I'm sure he's made the necessary corrections and adjustments. 
Yeah. And uh, Ding Ding has been making mistakes tactically. So. Yeah, I I have a very hot take. I think in the bullet, we'll probably see a flag or two. Again, you're you and your incredibly unfounded, I you know, hypotheses that just <laughs> completely unbased, right? Right. Not based on totally. anything. So you go C six. Um, okay, so defends the knight. I guess E four from Ding, because if we see a trade on the D five square. E7 will always be backwards. Mm -hmm. So goes knight C4. Where do you go with the queen? Queen B4 it was the most tempting for me. And then maybe Aronian can go B5. There we go. Yeah. This feels like a typical Hikaru opening, right? Like <laughs> yeah. sort of some sort of modern, but it's not that easy. Rook B1. I would have maybe taken on C6 and gone E5. Now I feel like, oh, queen c5, and the queen is almost trapped here. <laughs> right. Um, bishop b7, maybe, or, yeah, what is he? Or, I guess bishop b7, so if we see a trade, he can recapture the bishop. Right, keep the bishop open. I like bishop b7 a lot. Um, I think, so what do you think of this opening strategy by Lavon? You know, he's avoiding the main lines, going for some sort of weird lines. I, I, think I, it I like sense. it. I think it makes perfect sense. I think that the main lines, whatever he's prepared, I mean, you got to be able to to just say, the match is not going my way. I, I need a mm -hmm. sea change. I need to take my opponent out of his comfort zone. And that's what Aronian is trying to do here. I like that strategy. Look at the time situation. This game is off to a good start for Lawan. I don't think he's much better here, yeah. but I think he's he's comfortable. Exactly, yeah. And especially since he's been out-prepared in many of the main lines, uh, definitely makes sense to take the game in more, uh, you know, in an orthodox waters. Yeah, d6 is interesting here, by the way. Right. Um, just sh trying to shut down. Yep, and thing mm -hmm. goes for that. I guess he has to take, and then maybe go knight c4 back. Knight b6 felt a bit of a... It was a bit of a pity that he had to play that move. Yeah, that knight on c4 was 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 pretty nicely placed. He, I, I was, I think he was hoping for for d take c6. This might have caught him. This might have been yeah. a little cold shower. So Levon is half a minute up on the clock. I think it's very important that he tries to keep that time advantage. Mm -hmm. um, just yeah, I I feel like it's it's important to not be the first one to get under time pressure. Yeah, clearly that person right now is Ding. He's down below a minute. I mean, C3, Bishop G5. There's there's a lot of possible moves here for White. Yeah, I think Ding D3 is... makes a lot of sense. Stopping Knight at C4. That's mm -hmm. the move I would play. Yeah, well, and he goes for it. There, therefore, Ding plays it. He was just waiting for the seal of approval from Benjamin. Yeah, he's, he's listening. He's listening. He's always listening. Rookie six, chasing the queen away. No, white. D5. Hard to make anything of this position. Uh, I guess we're about to see something happen. Bishop g5, very nice move by Ding. It's kind of awkward to meet that because you don't want to play f6 because then you block your own bishop. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just move the queen, but the problem now for black is I, I would move, I guess, queen f8. Queen f8. Queen f8 is a nice move. Yeah, and he, wow, you're on a roll. They're listening. Just played it. Okay, right. let me try. Okay, I think white should play. He takes d5. He takes d5. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm in knight d4. That, that's the same thing. It's yeah. actually it's the two... same thing. It's basically the same idea. It's like the right file, so <laughs> it works. Yeah, it counts. But this looks pretty problematic for black because you don't want to take on d4, and there's no like pawn takes e4 because of knight takes e6. So what do you even right. play here? Rookie eight. Wait, what's the problem exactly? Oh, e takes d5. D, yeah, knight takes, takes c6 Ooh. with a tactic. Knight takes c6, knight c3, knight e7. Things get crazy, but it seems like black has more hanging pieces than white. So, yeah. rookie five by Levon Ding drops bishop back. Bishop yeah. takes e4, and black is in trouble, I guess. Yes, c6 is just dropping, but rook c5, 90, really? Is there knight e6, f takes e6, bishop d6? Oh, and he listens to you. Knight e6 is on the board. Dang. Um, 
There's rook c3 in the end, but white can just take on f8 and take on g7. And that's and a, it's a miserable end game end for game. black. <laughs> yeah. But he has what? to go for it. Otherwise, he's he just has lost. to go for okay. it. This is the last game of the segment, most probably 25 seconds remaining. I mean, Levon's probably not going to resign here. Rook yeah. c3. Rooks. Yeah, rook c3, but that is a gross, gross end game. Oh, gosh. This is just disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Should be five, and Levon has to try I mean, rook ad knight d5, but Ding has so many ways to improve here. Yeah, or c5. He has to try to trade off, okay, b5. Okay, he wants to establish a knight on the d5 square, but still there should be ways to play around that. Right. I mean, he potentially also wants the c3 square as an anchor point. One idea for Ding here is to remaneuver this bishop to h3 and start hitting mm -hmm. the... Oh, that's a nice move. c4. Okay, we see another glitch. Eighth. Again, and Levon is going to flag again. This is extraordinary. I mean, he and he, it's not his connection. He's just losing yeah, track I mean, of time. How, do, how just, does this happen? Like every game. He's just, he's just, he needs some coffee. I, I don't know what to say. I, I've never seen anything quite like this. Uh, I mean, this many times. I mean, I do wonder, like, did they, I feel like maybe they should have practiced a little bit more. Yeah. No, Cause, undoubtedly. Because literally every game has been decided by a flag. Indeed it is. And Ding has benefited from that. He's opened up a five-point lead going into the bullet. Levon needs a C change. He needs uh, and, and one of the greatest bullet performances of the SEC. But that is why we watch. Because if anybody's capable of it, it is Levon Aronian. So we will see whether he's able to mount the comeback. Uh, but first, we're going to go on a small break and give the players a chance to catch their breath you're watching the speed chess championship presented by coinbase we'll be back in just a few
You ready? Yeah. Your knight's on f7, where can it go? f7, d6, e8, g7, h5, g3, e2, c1, b3, Stop. a5. White king on a3, white pawn on b3, black king on e7. Who wins? It's a draw. Black's king gets to a8 before white's king gets to b7. Name the fastest checkmate for white. e4, e5, queen h5, king e7, queen takes e5. Recount your opening versus Alexienko from the first half of the 2020 candidates tournament. d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop e4, f3, d5, a3, bishop e7, e4, d4, f4. Stop. Tell us about a chess game that made an impression on you. Karpov Kasparov from the World Championship match 1985. Kasparov's octopus knight on d3 controlled eight squares in the enemy camp and allowed him to become the world champion. There's a knight on e5. What squares does it attack? f7, d7, c6, c4, d3, f3, g4, g6. Stop. How do you do this? Visualization in chess isn't difficult for me. It just comes naturally. Where does crypto come from? Honestly, I don't know. Can you tell me? Learn more at coinbase.com slash chess to get $5 in free crypto when you sign up and verify your account. Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. And as we begin the bullet segment, Lovon Aronian with a mountain to climb against Ding Li Ren. He's down by five points, Benjamin. He's flagging in almost every game. I mean, a new person needs to arrive at the computer <laughs> for these 30 minutes. Yeah. He has to I put think, everything behind him. How does he do that? I think he just needs to install that uh, that extension, you know, that tells him like move, move. You got you gotta right. go. You gotta go. Um, so I mean, joking aside, yeah, he he just has to move. Like he cannot let himself get too low on the clock because it is very easy to flag. And he goes for the center game. Do you call I this? love it. Hmm? How do you call this opening? Even? I call this the cent center game. Oh, the center game. Okay. Uh, Which I, I know very like... little about. I know Nepo actually plays this pretty often in Blitz. Yeah. Uh, in so, D5 by Ding. This seems like a bit like a takeout line because okay, queen g3. That's a typical move in the center game in general. Obviously, loading up bishop h6 related ideas. But does it but, work? No. Knight <laughs> e4. Isn't he just down a pawn? Yes, he is. <laughs> he is down a pawn. Not a good start here for Levon. This is going to be a tough game to win, and he basically he doesn't need to win every game. But, but he needs to win a lot. <laughs> he needs to win a lot, and he can't lose uh, more than exactly. maybe two games. Okay, yeah, so this because, is just a pawn up. Yeah, because if the gap becomes too big, then at some point, Ding can just do the math, right? There's only 30 minutes in the 1 plus 1 portion. Mm -hmm. And let's say he's down, um, let's say, I don't know, like five, minute, uh, five points with 10 minutes to play. It becomes almost impossible mathematically to catch up. Oh, and another C2. tactical blow using the X-ray. King takes C2, E3. Ding has been progressively sharper as the match has gone on. Yep. And this is another, you know, pretty one-sided game. He's just going to take on D2. This is completely winning, actually. Yeah, because uh, you just take on D2 and Bishop B4 and slide the Rook over to D8. and Right. Oh, Rook takes C2 as possible. Right. Okay. It's not completely over, but he's down two pawns. He's down two pawns, but Levon is, I mean, I guess he can take B7. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's down three actually, but he's going to be down two. Oh, he, he is down. Pawn on B7. He is down three. Yeah. It's not, I, I guess I spoke too soon. The problem is one of these, these types of games take a lot of time off the clock. Yeah. Wait, that's actually, what they Ding had Rook B8, which would have won on the spot because it would have won uh, another pawn. But there's no doubt right. in my mind that Ding will win this game. He's going to win this game. And he's he's fixing, deep freezing the pawns. Now he's going to get his Rook somewhere, whether it's he's going to play A5, A4, maybe. And he can yeah. do a million different things. And, and I think even the Rook trade is probably winning. Uh, I don't know. Or at least, although, how do you... How do you win? Three now, nice tactic. And I think Levon could have played I Bishop guess. E6 there earlier. Yeah, but now you just create two passers, and 
I guess the way to win is at some point king, you go king d1 h2. and then oh that is no that's nice. even easier you could go d1 king f2 also but this is king g king g1 there did not work so it was important to oh maneuvering the bishop around oh. now he's gonna go wait how exactly does he win here a6, a6. he okay. definitely should have played king a6 g3 now. king g3 is over d d1 and d1 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 d1, d1. For the memes there we go okay and, and the worst of both worlds because four minutes go off the clock and Levon yeah. loses. And he's down six. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, he needs to start winning starting this game, basically. Yeah, th this is a must win game, pretty much. If he loses this, it's pretty much over. Right. Um, although, again, there's a big portion of the prize dependent on the result of the game. So, Obviously, Levon is, is going to keep on putting everything into it. Yeah, so he repeats yep. this, this opening from their last splits game, which went pretty well for Black, even yep. though he lost the game. Exactly. And again, I think he's got, a, he's got a very reasonable position here, does Levon. His position is reasonable for the most part, but the knight on a5 is slightly uh, offside. He perhaps Just a perhaps little. he needs to reroute it with knight b7, knight c5, but the white can always hop into the c6 square. Yep. Um, and then maybe bishop d4 afterwards. So maybe there's I'd say knights... ding should... Yeah. It's it's not that bad though. Knight c5, if you get a couple moves in. So sure, yeah, I mean knight c6. I was just thinking about knight takes d5. Ding probably uh -huh. was calculating that and he goes knight f4, which is a nice move. Yeah. Knight c5 should be played now by Lavon because knight d8. I don't like that at all. It's just way too passive. Way too what, passive. What, is, what does that even do? Like, and it gives Ding an easy ride. I mean, Ding is still taking a long time, but now he's going to double on the e file. Maybe, I mean, okay, Bishop H six. No, but it, this is just bad. Knight C six is coming. Yeah, you Knight C six. Yeah, Knight C six, or even like he goes Knight C six. Yeah, he takes takes. I mean, Bishop takes F six is a threat, and and Knight D five. But Levon might have to give up his own dark squared Bishop, which is disastrous given what awaits him on the long diagonal. Fun fact: After Bishop takes G seven, is there Queen takes D six by any chance? Oh man, I know it's a bit of a. Um, I mean, okay, but now there's got to be a lot a of moves are winning. Takes. Yeah, just takes D six. Yeah, it's just up a pawn and a position. Right. I know it's totally winning. Yeah. No, I think it's gonna be seven and that yeah. That's gonna that's gonna make it really tough. H five, another shot. And now just bishop bishop d five, yeah. D five. Okay, Levon okay. did a good job here to create himself some chances, but still it's yeah, it's not over. He has a pawn for the exchange. Oh the wow. white squares are a bit weak. We not take some quincy two. Wait, it's not over. We call this one too early. Yeah, Queen this C3 one. three hitting the rook. Queen e3. Queen c2 was Bishop more accurate, five. I think. Because now queen e2. Now. Yeah. And, okay, king h2. Okay. Stop queen h3. Queen h3. Queen h3. Queen h3. h4. Okay, this is very tricky. g4. Queen f4. Levon might win this game. Queen e3 and then yeah. queen takes g4. Somehow yeah, Ding I... has lost control. This beautiful job by Levon here. Three seconds for Ding. Bishop f3. Bishop f3, yeah. Levon has takes. to finish the job. Oh, King H2, good defense here, but Ding. Oh, Rook C4. Okay. Queen E5. Queen H3. Okay. C1. And it's then not maybe over G5. Yet, though, for this, this game can still go. Oh, Queen F2, Queen F2, Queen F2, Queen F2. Oh, my goodness. And there we go. There we go. G5 Levine would have wins. preserved Queen... some chances. I think this is the first game in like six that has not ended in a flag. It ended by checkmate. Right. Ended in a checkmate, ding, unhappy. But the good news for him is that he's taken eight minutes off the clock. Yeah. And uh, Levon has not cut into that lead that he started with. Yep. And this is I almost a must win once again for Levon. Yeah, I think that that game early on where uh, Levon was completely winning, but he flagged, right? You remember he could have traded the queens and then go h7. Right. Uh, h6, h7. That, that might have made a difference. Um. Yeah, we'll probably but, ask him about that in the interview. Yeah, I think Ding should be fine here out of the opening. Um, I was wondering, like, do you think C3 
on move two was intended, or I guess it is. <laughs> fire is not a mouse slip. Yeah, because especially because Levon has played the, this type of structure in in the match so far. He's played the London. But again, I'm, I mean, this is going to be a protracted game. Uh, yeah, probably white is slightly better. He's got some squares on the queen side. Yeah, but it's got gonna be a grind. Him. Like even if he wins, it's like he of course needs a game where he blows Ding off the board in, you know, a, a minute or two. Yeah, he right? needs one of those for sure. Um, but he is slightly better. He's putting up the pressures up on the clock. Um, there's still a lot of time, so if he can get you know one win after another, maybe miracles can happen. Right. Knight reroutes from b6 to f6. Aronian yeah. going knight c5, inducing b6, and probably is going to go back. Yeah, because to, if you go to d3, there's knight a7. Knight oh, there's a7, still bishop, bishop a6. a6. Wow. All right, so bishop h7, preemptively played, so knight e5 doesn't come with a tempo. Maybe knight f3, and then go knight e5. He goes knight e5 away. immediately. We have a trade. And you were right about I, the grind. Like, this is going to be another long game. Yeah. I mean, can you take and go bishop c7? No, that probably it's not good. Can you drop the bishop back with f1? But he is very slightly better because he controls the b5 square. But yeah, h5, g4. But... What about knight taking? And then like, I was thinking about knight b1, knight a3, knight b5. But it's way too um, slow. Maybe black now, just takes on b1. And, and Ding can actually go b5 at some point. Open up the queen side of his favor. I like what he's done here, but still it's a oh, B5. Oh, there's but that one hangs move. A5. Oh, he takes. Okay. But now B5. Okay, so it goes rook A1 preemptively. I guess Ding is just not trying to. Okay, he's F4 just trying to hold. Maybe. G1. You got to push somehow on the king side. G5 feels way too premature. Yeah, yeah now he's, he's, he's saddled himself. himself. He's saddled himself with a weakness on H5. Now he does have bishop B5 at some point. Which you plays. Uh -huh. Okay, you can take, but it should be just a... Okay, it take, a it's, a, it's unpleasant. Because rook g5, you don't get your pawn back. King f6, oh, f4. Oh, king f6, f4. Oh, but king f8, preparing f6. That's nice. Ah, nice move. What do you... Okay, rook e5 is stopping f6. But not for but long. now, how do you... And Levon has five seconds. Yep. And okay, it's going to be a draw. Don't... But don't flag, don't... Yeah, yeah. don't flag, just make a draw. And another... Yeah, that result that that took off like a solid four minutes off the clock. Yeah. Okay. So I let's mean, see. We have another king's Indian, or okay, is it gonna transpose into a ch no? What is it gonna it, transpose it into? It can I transpose into a million different things, like an accelerated dragon. Oh, this rookie eight move. I've actually played it. That this is an interesting setup because basically black is waiting for white to play d five, and yeah. then he, he wants to meet d five with e six. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, that is the idea. Okay, so e6 Generally. now. E okay, oh, so again, goes he goes e5. Bishop g5. Um, h6, bishop back to d2. Yep, he goes for that. Um, and queen, queen c1 and b4. g3. He wants to go knight h4, I guess. Completely stop f5 from ever happening. Mm -hmm. But I feel like black is always cramped for space here. h5 is forced now. H4 yeah, there's your move, knight h4. Bishop f6, Aronian yeah. could play at some point to chase that. Okay, the knight goes around to g2 anyway. Maybe he wants to go f4. But I feel like a5 by Lavon completely stopping b4. Okay, rook. d7, well, Ding, interesting D choice. Ding had a chance to go a5 at some point. So he, I, I don't know who is happy that the king queen side got closed. It's unclear who's going to be attacking on the, on the king side. Okay, Aronian gave up the bishop. Imagine you're Ding here. Imagine you're Ding here. Like, why would he not just sit and do nothing? Oh, yeah. Milk just a ton of time off the clock. He's also much better now that Levon, yeah, knight c4, for some this reason, gave gross. up the light squared bishop and get, gave the knight this incredible outpost. Now, Ding has this long term plan of going g4 and just blasting through the gates. Yeah. He, Bishop uh -huh. he's H. gonna move the king back. Yeah, he's gonna go king of one. He's gonna move the king all the oh, way yeah. over to a2. Evacuate it to whatever a2, b3, and then there's gonna be open c4. Yeah. Okay, there we go. There comes the king. 
F5. Well, I might try F5 at some point. F5, I think he had to, otherwise, G4. Okay, takes. Okay, second yeah, a pawn, is... but over the top. Okay, D5 could be weak potentially, right? If you go 97, that is. Yeah, yeah, no, this is definitely what Aronian should try. No question it that he's playing objectively. It feels like it can never work. G4 by Ding blasting open the, queen, the king side. Um. 97, hitting the pawn on d5. You got to do something. He takes. That is Knight. Queen g7. Okay, queen g7. Queen a3 is possible here. King d2. Many right, different yeah. ways to Rook protect H3. everything. Knight f6 now is a nice move. Hitting the bishop. Yeah, he goes for it. Yeah, bishop is attacked because the rook on g1 is undefended now. King of one. Okay, you can take the pawn on d5, but still gf. Okay, rook g8, nice move. Because G5 keeps things closed for the moment, at least. And again, Knight takes H5 with okay, threatened. So Ding has FG, oh, FG, Knight... FG. FG was just winning the bishop. Oh, and he just allows G6. GF. Now Bishop G6, and the queen on C1 can be blocked to the queen on E1. Knight D5, though. Knight is flying in. It's a the mess. Otherwise... This is absolutely anybody's game. And six seconds for Levant, 10 for Ding. I feel like those knights are keeping the position together pretty well. Good, good decision to trade queens right there. It takes knight it. F4. Oh, knight f4. Knight takes d6. Oh, knight f7 is coming. I. Uh, but this Levon. is too much. It's no, the wheels lost. come off here. Queen e5 check, yeah. Bishop h5 Even just and it's Bishop over. Bishop h5, yeah. Yeah, and just, just take F and rook g1. Yep. Yep. He has to hit the resign button, unfortunately. Oh, Ding, ding, oh, ding, ding goes ding. king of one on purpose. He repeats oh, on wow. purpose. He's a pro. He knows what's going on. He is a Even pro. Even if it's he... like three seconds, but <laughs> well, yeah, Ding this has game. a six-point lead. And now half of the 15, one of, half of the bullet portion is already gone for Levon. He needs yeah. uh, just some sort of cataclysmic event here. Yeah. A seismic um, shift in his in his play. He's okay, going to be so unhappy with see, himself. We see some sort of reversed uh, note to boom. Oh, yeah, this line. <laughs> where, mm -hmm. where, like, um, yeah, black is the center, but white has the outside passers on the queen side. I don't know what to make of this. I feel like Ding should be fine. Bishop d7. Okay, but bishop b2. If there's no trick, the bishop looks misplaced. On the seven, yeah, Ding is trying to obviously like take on b5, which is going to be prevented by Aronian, who's taking a while on this move. Yeah, gotta go, dude. Knight c3. Should but no, hmm. now, yeah, now the problem for Ding is that the knight on b8 is, I mean, it's hard to develop that knight exactly. Ooh. So we see queen a5, queen c1. I guess the idea for white should be here, like, okay. 94? Wait, what is that? 94. So if you take the knight... Wait, take queen c4, you can resign. Queen c4. Queen c4, yeah. yeah. yeah Good job by Levon. Okay, he probably has to take now and go castles and hope for some sort of trick. Like, white still needs to get castled, and that is not that easy. Yeah, well, Ding definitely has to take. I mean, he might also milk a ton of clock here before taking. Because he, yep, he can clock. basically play the clock right now. If he can get off yeah. three, four minutes per game, he, he can end up losing all the rest of the games. Not suggesting that he will. Yeah, no, yeah this I is not so this... easy. How does White Castle? Yeah, at this point, it's almost uh, mathematically gone for Levon, indeed. The castles. Aha, if you take, you hang A8. A, but still, like, you take on E2... It's probably winning for white, but some work still nice needs move. to be done. Rook d1, threatening rook takes d7. Rook takes d7 now, and he's up two. But still, black is active. Right? Yeah, rook I'm not two is flying. Maybe, in. maybe that was premature. I don't know. Queen f. I mean, I guess it's winning. The pawns are flying on the board pretty fast. E5, take an f7. Okay, queen f3, very methodical. Okay, this is not gonna not gonna save. But it still takes time to convert. You can go a five and you're winning, but you still need to. Oh, oh no! This not only does this take time. Let me. I'll tell you what. Ding probably should have brought his king to h four, and uh -huh, I'm not sure it would have been that clear. In that rook case. A, I feel like rook a six is winning, but it's not the cleanest way. No, but, but this okay, is okay. This, this is, is pretty clean. F seven and okay, he's gonna win. Okay, Ding just now needs to move very very fast. Ding, he's gonna uh, lose. 
Yeah, he's gonna milk. He's gonna milk some clock though, which is totally valid. He milked another minute off the clock from this lost position. Just keep moving. Ding, keep moving. Ding can make like five. The, the best strategy, yeah, make five or six moves fast and then sit the rest of the time. Just sit for twenty seconds. Elefonis pre-moving, which is the right strategy. Right. Still, you have to always be. But why resign? Well, I mean, he, I much... think he knows. Twelve minutes left on the match clock. Five point lead. I mean, that's. Yeah. I guess it's it's gracious, but you know, I know certain other SCC competitors who would who would not have resigned there. <laughs> I mean, pretty much anyone else, no? Anyone else? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe he felt like milking the clock. There would be being a bad sport. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think there there's but but it's important to draw the distinction. Like when you're playing a match, this is a completely valid thing to do to sit, yeah, or to play till checkmate because the, the clock is a completely legitimate part of the match, and I think people right. need to understand that. So I'm not trying to yeah. suggest that it's in any way uh, disrespectful or not part of the game, which it is. Yeah, but it's no exactly. It's gracious. Um. Bit of a weird opening by Lavon. I mean, the knight on a5 is just completely offside. He keeps going for these weird... Like, here's the thing. Yeah. I can see that maybe the, the queen's gambit accepted did not turn out, but did he really have to go for these positions? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, this is just nasty. Bishop f4 aiming at the d6 pawn. Yeah. Also, typical maneuver here, knight d2, knight e4 to increase the pressure on the pawn. No, this is just bad for black. Yeah. And this is just really I mean, bad. yeah, people people should not feel like not resigning is uh is bad sportsmanship or anything like that. I think like I mean, my I, I would not resign myself. I would just let the clock run out. Yeah, same. And um and I wouldn't I wouldn't blame anyone at all. Like it's legitimate just part of the game. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay, but this game is I shifting in Levant's favor, um, he straight off the dark stripe. Bishop Queen B two, pawn B three. Okay, Wait, how do you defend trading. everything here? Knight if you F, Bishop... Knight F D two. Right, that that holds everything together, right? Because Bishop C two to Knight B three or something. The bishop will be overworked. Right. Queen E one. Queen E one. So he's giving up the pawn, and he wants something like Knight takes C five with total pandemonium. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. now he hits upon an H six. How do you defend here? Not that easy. Not that easy. Bishop takes but you take an h6 with a check. Queen g7. Can... Okay. Well, this endgame should be pleasant for black, but it's... I mean, it's not that bad for it. Like, king of one. Because the knight on a5 is still a bit um, offside. Yeah. G5. g5. Carving out. I mean, why does why does the long-term, or not even so much long-term yeah. plan of going g3, h4, creating an outside passer? Yeah, and there Dig we go. F4. Okay, same concept, just covering the five square. Exactly. And Black's pawn, Black's extra pawn on the queen side is difficult to use, right? Because b5 is firmly controlled. Right. Right, exactly. So Black's not really going b5 anytime soon. Yeah. King f3. F3. This looks like some three. sort of a draw. Uh, maybe knight f1, e3 to f5. Is it what about oh, bishop f5, to bishop d4. c8? Oh, that's a nice plan, yeah. Okay, because bishop b2. Okay, I guess he's just going to wait, necessary. sit around. Yeah. Levon's going to go for it, but... King f3. Yeah, it's just going to be a draw. Levon has to. Just has to play yeah, fast. There's, and... there's just no choice, yeah. Very tough to... Okay. b5, but that is way too much... Yeah, it takes a knight c4, I think. Yeah, because the a pawn is way stronger than black's uh, d and c pawns. Yeah, great recognition by Ding, and it just gives you this very instructive. A oh, a6. Oh, a6 is nasty. is nasty. And it's yeah, over. And Levon has to hit the resign button. He has to realize that this game is gone. He needs to get another game because right now he's just wasting his own time. I mean, the issue is just that with 7.30 left, it's going to be tough to do anything here at this point. Bishop d3 is easily stopping the pawns. I guess he's just playing on out of pure frustration here. Yeah. Okay, there's and the resignation. Resigns, yeah. Yeah, the bullet, <clears throat> his dreams of a miracle are 
unfortunately getting dashed here. And I think Ding is going to end up winning all three segments, which is dominant. Yeah. This has been one of the more, more lopsided SCC matches that we have seen, quite surprisingly. Yeah, no, he played great chess uh, throughout, and I feel like he probably got a bit better control of the of the time scrambles. He played, he flagged a little bit less, uh, but overall, I feel like really the opening is where he uh, got a got some nice advantages, and he managed to put those away. Yeah, opening opening uh, preparation was a big deal this match, and and yeah. and a lot of it of course, is due to LeBron's time management and general lack of, of sharpness, we could say, which is uncharacteristic for him, given the LeBron that we're used to. But anything can happen on any given day. That's what the SEC teaches us time and time again. Yep. Um, but this one does look to be over, yeah. Okay, so LeBron is going to try to score a few honor goals here as the match winds down. We want to remind everybody that... Um, the match might be ending soon, but the day is not ending anytime soon because we have another match uh, coming up after this one where this is one that I know everyone's looking forward to. Hikaru Nakamura and Anish Giri are going to be battling it out uh, in our yep. next quarterfinal. That's going to be absolutely phenomenal entertainment. Yep. It's going to be an spoiled. absolute banger. Um, yeah, I wonder how Anish is going to uh, do against Hikaru. I think Anish needs to take a lead in the five, uh, five minute and the three minute portion. Cause I think in the bullet, it's just going to be very, very tough. What, what do you think? It's amazing. I was thinking while, while we were on break uh, before the bullet, I was thinking of the exact same thing. I thought, uh, and, and obviously I'll be discussing that during the next match, but I, I definitely think Geary needs like a three or maybe even a four point lead going to the bullet. There's just yeah. no way that he's going, that he is not going to beat him in the bullet segment. I think. Yeah, because uh, against Fiddler, Hikaru was just off the charts. He almost won every game. I think it was seriously something like 11 to 1 or something. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, Rook B8? What was that? What was Rook B8? Um, Dang with a smile. A mouse slip, I think. Oh, definitely. Or, or he clicked on the square by accident and then... Yeah. yeah maybe he clicked his Rook and then he clicked on the... That's funny. He, he went... He went rook b8, queen d2, and then rook back to d8, back to c1, uh, and then he resigned. Yeah, and Ding Ding resigns the game. I mean, he still has a five point lead. Oh, yeah. So, Aronian, let's still... do some math. Yeah. Uh, with four and a half minutes left and a five point lead, Aronian is to win games with an average of 45 seconds. So, I mean, Ding can basically take a knee. Right. Yeah. Yep. But there's still, you know, the, uh, the, there's still, you know, prize money to be played for. Absolutely. Uh, $3,000 will be divided proportionally among the players. So right. you know, maybe, maybe that's why he doesn't, re maybe that's why he doesn't bleed the clock. Cause he feels like if he bleeds the clock, he's getting out of the rhythm himself. It's also, he also doesn't like to do it, I guess. Uh, so I guess that's why he and, and, just, you know, and you don't want to end the match with a whimper. You want to end the match from a position of strength right you don't want to just right. live live off of your lead and nobody mm -hmm. at the top thinks like that oh i just yeah let me just stall it out and lose a couple of games at the end so yeah ding is trying as hard as he as already sees but again i think Aronian a little too little too late but he's yeah. gotten the speed down a5 there looks good for for white a5 by lavon is a curious decision um, he's going to reroute to bishop to c6, and e4 is definitely a target. So oh, yeah. I kind of like Levant's position. Um, so, yeah. Rook 81. I mean, bishop c6, and now he's probably already threatening knight takes e4, 20 seconds for ding. Yeah. How do you even defend the pawn? I mean, There's... you could take the knight, but that is not a bishop you want to give yeah, up. Unless... That is... But he takes the pawn. Surprising decision, but Surprising, c4 now. Yeah. Oof, bishop Wait, c5 looks... coming. Tough for white. You have to move the king or the queen, and then black can just take on b3 if he wants to. King h1, he has to, has to move the king. king h2. Oh, knight oh, g4. Knight g4. Knight g4. He walks nice. right into that. Bishop h. He has to play bishop h3. Okay, takes. Just take on b3. This has been a very well played game by Lev. Yeah, this is really the dream in the in the knight or I guess Ding just wanted to. Um, I don't know. 
relax a little bit. That's why you play 1E4. Right. No, I mean, at this point, they're, they're having some fun. Nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. relaxing the opening play. Ding still surviving this game. He's taking time off the match clock, essentially ensuring that the next game might be the final. Rook takes H3. Ding Rook has to move. Rook three. Oh, what a move. He's trapped the queen. Where does oh, the queen go? Bishop takes, like... Bishop takes E4 check and queen knight A2. Knight takes a knight of two. Knight of two. Knight F2. And rookie three check. Rookie three check is a huge threat. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you take an H1. There's rookie three. Oh, That's insane. Oh, my goodness. Queen takes A2. and Oh, he takes F2. D3. And then... And he oh. flags. He flags. Oh, my goodness. Odd. Oh, my goodness. He flags. Levon only it's... down four now. Can we see a heroic comeback? Can we see a comeback in one minute and 13 seconds? He needs four points. He needs to win every game in 10 seconds. Just scholars made him. Yeah. Wow. Lots no, of flags this match. Yeah. No, I think, and this is going to be a hot take. I think Ding is going to win this match. I, I, this entire match, you've been doing this and you know what you're doing. You're just making these unfounded claims. It's yeah. just not, it's, it's, it's annoying. I think <laughs> this that's, is... that's going to get Chesakam in trouble. Oh, it, so. it definitely is. Definitely. Yeah. You're, you're just peddling conspiracy theories about Ding winning the match. And he's up by four with 30 seconds left. Come on. Yep. <laughs> okay, so this is a Jababa London looking good for Levon once again. Let's see if he can win, you know, a couple to end the match. Just it'll make it cosmetically closer, the score. Yeah. But the match has nice. still been lopsided. It was never really in question. Yeah. Ding just got away in the first couple of games. And usually, um, I've played some of these matches myself. Like usually it goes kind of back and forth, but yeah, Levon just got behind and he never got back. The score only got bigger and bigger. It was a I wire guess. to wire victory, which is rare in yeah. SEC matches. Yeah. Unless, you know, talking about Hikaru Nakamura. No. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess because uh, Levon started taking risks after he got behind, uh, but, it, but it didn't really uh, pay it off. Yeah, I mean, the first couple of games, they the games themselves were back and forth. Levon had his chances, yeah. but the, the time killed him, and some of those time scrambles just didn't go his way, and that, that's that's all there is to it. That's how you lose matches. Yeah. And uh, kudos, big kudos to Ding, who I think going into the semifinal is going to have to be tactically sharper. I yeah. think if you leave some of those tactics on the on the ground, Against somebody like Hikaru, you're going to get punished against somebody like Nihal. Um, exactly. But if, if you can yeah. do that, his opening prep has been has been uh, unimpeachable. So. Yeah. And yeah, he's actually in Hikaru's side of the bracket. Uh, so he's either going to play Hikaru or Anish. Uh -huh. uh, I think against both of those, he will have to do better. Especially against uh, Hikaru if Hikaru is going to win uh, his uh, match. For sure. Should be four, I guess. Waiting for the game to conclude, and the match concludes with it. And why did he get himself in all he, possible he, pins of the world? He tied himself up in a little bit of a knot here. Yeah. Rook c4. We might see a draw here. Currently, Ding is up. Levon is up upon. Yeah, but I guess there's no way you can win this. I mean, he, like you'll try with White, but you just cannot make a move. Like, yeah, this is not a great is extra pawn to have. Yeah. I mean, King G5 will be met with King G7. Still, though, like King G5 and F5. Right. F5. I mean, takes an F6, not... though. Whoa. Uh -huh. Wait, it allows like F6. A... This looks tricky, but I could check. I, I would have gotten Rook. Yeah, Rook, rook B8, Rook F8. Check a Rook F. Uh, rook A7. I think he knows this construction. Wait, is that a draw? You just kind of make progress? Wait, I don't know why why Ding started checking him, though. I think if Ding just kept his rook on a7, there would have been yeah. no way to make progress. Now, Levon's going to go, okay, still, rook g, king h6. King h5. Who's king up. Uh, rook h5. Oh, wow. Nice. 
Oh, but still, king of... Uh, I just moved the rook in king g6. Yeah. King g6. I feel like he I studied think... this when he was like five. Like He spiked so confidently, yeah. e5, rook a4. <laughs> don't flag. Don't... don't flag. I think we're going to see repetition. That's a nice way to end this match. Good good there way to go. end. A good, good, solid fighting draw. The match concludes, yeah. and it's a four-point win for Ding Liren. Wire-to-wire -wire victory. Levon struggling with time management throughout the match and unable to, to dig himself out of the hole that he got into at the start of the five-minute segment. Benjamin, fun match and uh, definitely tough for Levon. Yeah, uh, Ding played phenomenal. And yeah, Levon was just not really up to the task. Uh, yeah, he just got behind. And yeah, especially in the time scrambles, he just blundered and especially flagged a bit too much and yeah but overall ding played great chess and he fully deserved to win absolutely we will have the players here for a quick interview on the other side of this break you're watching the speed chess championship presented by coin coinbase player interviews coming right up back to the SCC and we have the players here for a quick interview. Thank you, Levon and Ding. Ding, congratulations on an excellent match. Uh, I know we were just talking uh, during the break 
Uh, but could you share uh, your overall thoughts about the match? And in particular, I was impressed with your opening play um, and, and your preparation level in the London and in the Rai Lopez. Uh, did you draw some inspiration from Magnus uh, in terms of that anti martial line that you were playing? Uh, yes, actually, I was inspired by him actually in 2016. 16. When he first played anti martial, then I followed his step. <laughs> After that, yeah, I, I always play this line. And how do you feel about the match in general? Are you happy with your games? Yeah, of course, I'm very happy about my performance in 5-1 and 3-1. And especially in the first three, three games, I win all of them. Also, with some luck, but overall, my play was good. I spent a lot of time at the opening stage to make sure I got the right plan and I want to come up with the strongest move in the position. And it turns out to be this, just uh, this idea was good. All right. Uh, yeah, Dings, congratulations on a great match victory. And I have a question for both the players. Uh, what did you guys do in terms of uh, match preparation for today? Uh, maybe Dink could go first. Well, uh, apart from the uh, preparation in the opening, I also uh, go to the supermarket to buy some milk and fruits. <laughs> uh, since I know it will be a very long and tough, tough match. Uh, my, my preparation was, uh, I spent a nice evening with Persian Akopian. I played some voice with him. So that was my preparation, but clearly it didn't work so well. <laughs> well, you, you struggled with uh, some of those time scrambles, Levon. D do you feel like the uh, added wrinkle of playing online? Uh, what do you think was was the issue with with some of those some of those time scrambles? Actually, the main issue is that I forgot my mouse at the house. I'm visiting my friends, Ooh. and I have to use their mouse, and that is uh, yeah, that's problematic. <laughs> I'm not used to it. I can relate to that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a yeah, tough. Go ahead, Benjamin. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's uh, it's quite unfortunate. And I was just wondering, like, uh, how much uh, preparation do you guys do in between the breaks? Like, do you guys look up some lines or what would you guys do mostly? Yes, I, I look some lines. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there were a few there were a few moments where uh, I think there were some improvements on on some of the openings, like this line with the, the Ray Lopez line with knight b three, knight a five. Uh, Levon, I think you tried a few improvements there. Mm -hmm. um, was that something you were just thinking of between the games, or were you checking that during the breaks? No, 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 not really. I okay, just yeah, just randomly trying to confuse uh, Ding. <laughs> but uh, he's not the guy to get confused. He played very well. Yeah, fair enough. And mm -hmm. and yeah, Lavon, you played really well in those uh, Czech Benonis, or how how would you even call those openings? Um, yeah, did you feel like at that point in the match you sort of had to switch it up because the Queen's Gambit except was not really going your way, or was sort of your your thought process in switching it up? Well, I was generally frustrated that. I was losing on time, uh, uh, and uh, it didn't matter what opening I was playing. I was losing on time, so I thought, okay, I mean, I might as well just have some fun because uh, it's it's kind of a passive opening, but it's it's a fun opening. This uh, check Benani. Well, yeah, that definitely <laughs> definitely were some really fun games, the queen side and king side action. But Ding and Levon, yeah, it's late. I know you're both tired, so we're going to let you go. But thanks again for, uh, for the interview and the insights. We appreciate it. And congratulations, Ding, on, on the win. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, Benjamin, another SCC match in the books. A victory for yeah. Ding Liren, who makes it to the semifinals. He was firing on all cylinders today. And as you heard, Levon, that's what happens when you forget your mouse. Tough. Tough going for... Grandmaster Aronian. 
yeah, a bit of bad luck there for Levan, but overall, Ding plays phenomenal and fully deserves to win. We're going to see shortly who he will be up against in the semifinals. Is it going to be Kara Nakamura or Anish Giri? Man, I, I'm, I, I wish we didn't have, have to wait so long to find out, you know, many weeks until that match. Oh, wait a second. That match is Monday, December 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Oh, wait, that's right now. That match is coming up right now, right on the other side of this break. We're going to see Cairo and Geary battle it out in our final quarterfinal. But that means, Benjamin, I am saying goodbye to you. We will have Amon uh, replacing you for the second match. But it has been a great pleasure commentating with you, my friend, and a, a great way to start off this doubleheader. Yeah, it's been my absolute pleasure to commentate with you, Danya. And yeah, I'm definitely going to watch uh, this match. So I hope you all, all hope well, hope that all the viewers will also stick around because this is going to be an absolute banger. Yeah, it is. Uh, no doubt about it. I don't think anybody's leaving. I don't think anybody's leaving at all. And uh, But thanks to everybody for uh, coming bright and early, cheering on Ding and Aronian for the first match. We will have the second SEC match for you on the other side of this break. Benjamin, have a good one. It was a pleasure commentating with you. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We will be back with the second match shortly.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase, the second match of our doubleheader. And I am honored to be joined by a very able replacement for Grandmaster Benjamin Buck, and that is former world champion Amon Hamilton. Up, oh, misspoke again. It happens. But it what happens. an intro. I keep doing that. Amon, <laughs> welcome. Good afternoon to you. How are you feeling about this match? Hello, Dania. What's up, everyone in chat? Um, I think we're just spoiled today. We have the rest day from the World Championship, and we've got back-to-back doubleheader SCC matchups. Naka versus Geary should be on the top of you know everyone's list for you know where to spend <laughs> your rest day. So I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. Ah, rest day. I got to watch a car play and a blitz <laughs> match. Couldn't you have thought of a better activity? Let's have a quick look at the bracket, uh, just to remind ourselves of all the epic matches that we have been privy to <laughs> thus far. We had Ikaru Nakamura defeating Peter Svidler to make it to the second round. Uh, that was a tough match. And Giri Duda, the score speaks for it. So 14-12, uh, that was not an easy path either. So both of these players have earned their place in the quarterfinals, and they're going to be duking it out in what's sure to be an epic match, Ramon. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you, you know... Nakamura, he's he's won so many of these SECs in the past, so he's definitely the favorite coming in. But Geary, he's been uh, he's been really improving online chess lately, so I think this is going to be closer than people think. I I agree, and we'll definitely delve more into that. They're they're also going to be playing for a very handsome prize in the quarterfinals. Three thousand go to the winner, and three thousand are divided by win percentage. All of that is leading up to a ten thousand dollar prize to the winner of the grand final. Hikaru, of course, knows all about that 10,000 as he is a three-time <laughs> winner. And you know who knows all about the Speed Chess Championship is our main sponsor, Coinbase. Because whether you're looking to make your first crypto purchase or you're an experienced grandmaster trader, Coinbase has you covered. Visit coinbase.com slash chess and receive five bucks in Bitcoin when you sign up and verify your account I'm on. You better be doing that right now. I don't want to catch you slacking. Yeah, no, there I'm, we go. I'm on, it. I'm on it. There we go. Yes. Well, <laughs> we also want to introduce the amazing new insights feature. We have a little video for you, and then we'll talk more about the insights as they apply to Hikaru and Giri. Let's have a let's have a watch. How many brilliant moves have you played? When do you play your best chess? How many games have you won by castling in the end game? How many opponents have you played from New Zealand? And most importantly of all, how many Botez Gambits has Alexandra Botez played? Find the answers to all of these questions and many, many more at chess.com slash insights. Our new tool that lets you dive deep into all of the fun and instructive data behind your chess. Try it today. The insights feature is amazing and make sure to check out your very own stats by going over to the brand new insights page at chess.com slash insights. I've already spent several hours pouring over my own insights. As for Hikaru and Giri, here's some interesting stats I'm on. Nakamura wins more games against 3000 plus opposition. Big surprise there. <laughs> <laughs> but what's really interesting, Giri has a slight edge in total accuracy. These are the things that insights could tell you. That's kind of cool. And also, Giri is slightly more accurate in the opening, whereas Nakamura, he plays those long games. He has a, a pull in endgame accuracy. What do you think yeah. of that? <laughs> it's, that's pretty interesting. You know who's a 3,000-plus opposition? Giri is. So, hey, this could bode well for Nakamura, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Um, <laughs> but it makes sense to have that endgame accuracy. I think that comes with the bullet. You know, bullet games, often a lot of trades, it extends into the end game. So uh, I think that just speaks to uh, how much of a beast Nakamura is in the bullet format but very cool i was checking out my own insights as well and i can tell you they're nowhere near as good as these <laughs> well no they're, they're better um and speaking of Nakamura's bullet prowess in the 90 minute five plus one blitz segment i mean i think without question unarguably anish needs a great start and he needs to build a solid lead going into the bullet segment and he needs to use that long time control he needs to get off to a good start all of that stuff is an absolute must against Hikaru Nakamura. You cannot arrive at the bullet segment with a deficit. There's 30 minutes of bullet, and we know what Nakamura is capable of in that segment. There's a four-game mini-match in the event of a tiebreak, but we'll cross that bridge if we get there. Smarter chess prediction time, I'm on. And 
am, do I am I hallucinating? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I you know. are. I think, <laughs> I think I think that might be a. I'm not. Maybe I think that might be flipped. flipped. <laughs> I, I think it's flipped. Yeah, but still, and, gotcha. and here's my point. Even if okay, it's flipped. We're just getting confirmation. But still, 59 only for Hikaru. That is a very audacious prediction. Come on. Yeah, it doesn't matter who has these numbers. It doesn't, I don't matter. Believe it doesn't matter. I don't believe. I don't believe those smarter chess stats. <laughs> All but, right. Uh, that's well. That's, that's interesting. But as you can see, the um, the one plus one prediction is just. It doesn't matter if it's flipped. It's just wrong, right? It's because it's wrong. It has a one plus one prediction of maybe like a game separating them. So I think maybe it belonged to like a different match potentially because uh, I don't think Hikaru and Giri. I mean, unless the stats are saying something that I wasn't aware of. Right, and yeah, and the SEC record. I, maybe this is from Levon's match. Anyway, we'll we'll uh, get confirmation uh, of that pretty soon. And then we're going to fire smarter chess. No, just kidding. But right now, we are going to watch some chess being played. The first game I'm on is underway with Hikaru Nakamura at the controls with the white yeah. pieces and a Slav. Yeah, I mean, you can you can uh, say what you want regarding the stats, but at the end of the day, it's like you know how you play on game day. Um, and uh, Giri here, he's started off like, with this sort of like London-ish. Like well, let me London give you an example. Slav. When you played the last world championship match against Magnus, everybody was saying that you have no chance, but Doubters. here you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I live to tell the tale. Let's put it that right. way. So a very peaceful line by Hikaru. Uh, he keeps the bishop on C1. Sometimes it's Fianchetto in this line. Sometimes white goes for an early pawn E4 pawn break. Mm -hmm. And for Giri, I think he needs to decide where to put the dark squared bishop because sometimes people put it on B4, sometimes on D6. I think everything is fine here, of course. Yeah, often um, white goes for this setup where they maybe even trade the bishop on um, g6 and go for a quick queen d3, queen e2, and e4. So bishop b4 is actually kind of designed a little bit against that, whereas a more routine bishop e7 or bishop d6, eventually white's probably going to get that e4 break in. Yeah, and Hikaru trying to emphasize the downside of putting the bishop on before, which is that it falls in the line of fire of white's queen giri secures the bishop and yeah of course hikaru could play a3 here that's the sort of classic reaction or he could not rush with that and play a developing move definitely more on the equal side here 92 interesting move preparing a3 yeah this and, looks like a uh this looks like a good good idea here and by the way, before the game has truly gotten underway, we do have our updated <laughs> predictions. And this <laughs> looks a different. little bit more tethered to reality than the previous one, 77 to 23. Those are numbers that I can I can get behind. Yeah. Yeah. That that as I said, the the stats are one thing, but certainly in terms of the accuracy of said stats, I think uh, this is more in line with everyone's more, expectation. For sure. Now 23% is not zero. And I, I think let's not you know, uh, sugarcoat the truth. Hikaru is a heavy favorite in this match, as Giri himself has admitted. But, I mean, Anish Giri is an absolute beast. And if he plays one of the best matches of his life, I think he is capable of giving Hikaru yeah. a very tough time. No doubt about that. And, the you know, the thing is, if Giri wins the match, uh, we'll never hear the end of it. So, I mean, no. there's a lot at stake here. I mean, Giri, <laughs> right. he's probably on Twitter right now. He's got the tweet he, pre-planned. Pre it's, like, ready to send. He's got the, the, the printing press is active and <laughs> they're fresh off the press. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so Hikaru is, is taking a pretty long thing here. Not much has changed in the position. Giri might be eyeing E5 or C5. On mm -hmm. the other hand, Black is just super solid. Maybe there is no need to, to break through in the center. Yeah, and he's gone for the move B3 when I feel like the move A3 is probably more natural to people. But after you play A3... And the bishop goes back to, to d6. It's like your bishop's only got the d2 square. So unless you're planning on playing e4, there's not a lot of uh, you know future for that bishop. So he says, no, b3, bishop b2, and immediately going for the exchange is Giri. And I, I, like his, uh, I like his play so far. Yeah, Giri not letting this bishop come alive at all. Sometimes in these positions, you see this kind of repetition. Oh, my goodness. As I'm saying that, they're repeating. 
<laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I was see it. I mean, I was trying to play Bishop B2. So Gary is, of course, fine with a draw here. Hikaru might take it. I mean, he's down on the clock. He's not better. I, I mean, wouldn't it's game rule out of the match. It's not. It's, it's not like someone yeah. has an advantage. You know? <laughs> right. It's not like any. We could talk about any momentum, but this would okay. be a good start for Gary for sure. Yeah. Milk the clock. Milk the clock. Draw. <laughs> and a draw by repetition. Advantage Giri early on, you know, using the black piece has got the draw. I think, huge I think Hikaru needs to abandon the match. I mean, that, the, he's making a fool. It, it, this is an embarrassment. This I don't know is how a, he's still a route. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if he'll be able to surmount this lead. So, you know, Giri, true to his uh, nature, starts off with a draw. But, you know, you always say, especially in that position, that's exactly how black wants to execute. I mean, it was a good opening and he stayed up on the clock. So, yeah, a sluggish start for Hikaru, but... You know, completely irrelevant, really. The players are just feeling each other out and seeing what openings are going to get played in this match. And Hikaru is, is he's a great match player. He's very experienced. And one thing I noticed he does, uh, he did this against Spidler. When he's not in the greatest form, he, he senses that very keenly. And he actually changes his style based on his form. Like, if he senses that he's not quite tactically sharp, he will play more positionally. He will adapt completely to how he feels. And that's a very valuable skill because you see some players play the same exact way every time. And if they're in bad form, yep. uh, they're just going to end up losing a lot of games. So that's just something to keep an eye on. Right. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. If you're feeling sharp, you know, play open tactical positions. If you're not feeling sharp and you're still playing those, then you're probably going to get outclassed. Um, as he doesn't go for the E5 pawn because I think there was some Queen trades and the e4 pawn would be a little loose. So he adds some support to that with the very, very typical maneuver, knight to g3, which I think everyone's familiar with after watching the world championship match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've been living under a rock if, if this comes as a surprise to you. <laughs> now, the bishop from b5 often migrates back to d3 uh, just to solidify the center. And in terms of black's play, well, black can complete the same maneuver with knight g6, but Hikaru is taking a little thing here. Is he contemplating... Maybe E takes D4, maybe C6. It's hard to make any firm and hard conclusions about this position just yet. Yeah, C6 um, definitely looks like a move you can throw in. Like if you're planning Knight G6, you can include C6 or not. Um, I think probably C6 and Knight G6 are going to appear on the board in, in some way or another. Um, and he decides to start with Knight G6. I mean, very, very logical play from both sides. But Naka using way more time to execute pretty much the same plan. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, he's both games so far. He's he's quite a bit down on the clock, which uh, uh, of all people, you know, does not worry him because he <laughs> <Yeah>. can <laughs> he can start the game with three seconds and give you a run for your money. So, Bishop C seven. So he's done the thing that we mentioned, safeguarding and overprotecting the E five pawn. We've got some queen side action here. Giri, I like the way Anish is playing. He he's energetic, and he's better here. He's got the more pleasant side of this position. Yeah, no doubt. And um, most importantly, I, I think his, his speed, the rate at which he's playing says a lot about his confidence as well. Um, it's early on. Uh, hey, if you go back to those chess.com insights, what did we learn? That Geary is you know, a little bit more accurate in the opening. And so far, he's using that statistic to his advantage here. He's playing moves very confidently. He's, he's up to date. You know, he's, he knows what position he wants. And he's not going to waste time because he probably needs that time in the middle game and end game to make sense of things later on. Gary's gotten the memo and, and he's the kind of guy, like he definitely did some mental preparation. He, he thought this through and uh, he I'm sure also did some over the board preparation. He is known as one of the premier opening specialists of the modern era. And uh, that's not a title that you just get casually. He knows, he sees everything. He knows everything. <laughs> and you know, for Hikaru, Hikaru is incredibly solid in the opening as well. But Anish has to pull out all the stops. He has to get his types of positions every game. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, a match against Hikaru is when you consider bringing out some really uh -oh. cutting edge theory that you've been saving for over the board. <laughs> for, oh, yeah. Bishop Holy takes h6. So what is that? Okay. What is this? What be is a the follow up? Queen Hikaru C1, doesn't get it. I don't get it either. Knight f4? Mm, maybe g3. Yeah, bishop takes f5. <laughs> I don't know. He takes f5. I can see what Gary's trying to do. I mean, if white's queen gets to h6, I will concede the point. 
but I don't buy it. <laughs> well, Hikaru I, doesn't get it, so <laughs> it just must be losing. <laughs> it must be losing. No, I, I think it's not objectively sound, but it is a very interesting choice given Black's slightly alarming time situation. A two-minute plus yeah. for Anish, and let's not forget, I mean, he is going to have probably two pawns for the piece, so it's not a cut right. and dry and it, sacrifice. It, it doesn't always need to be working like a sacrifice that's speculative at best oftentimes those are the worst because as the defender hikaru in this case he knows his instinct like his spidey sense is going off immediately like hey this doesn't work man but the worst feeling is when it actually starts to work because you're playing slightly inaccurately on on defense so he's taking his time here and trying to make sure that he finds the absolute best defensive move to start things off because i imagine he has a very limited choice it's not like every move is good for black it's a very narrow path here yeah, you're not exactly going to go B4 and intensify the queen side pressure here. You've got some business to attend to. And the line that we mentioned, G3, allowing knight takes H3, but now king G2. Aha, uh -huh, and this is what Ikara is going for. <laughs> what about queen takes H6? He takes F3, king takes H3. King takes F3. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, you didn't. And then the knight on H3 is trapped. Yeah, that would just be like a real uh, mic drop. Now, there, we might see some sort of a perpetual. Like, once the queen takes on h6, and if Hikaru plays queen d8... Yeah. Okay, he takes first. And... and he, perpetual, maybe. Is he going to... Well, he can't go knight uh, h7, because f6 just crushes. Right. No, I think Hikaru has to defend from d8. Right. And then Anish does have a perpetual here. Check. And again, if Hikaru tries to block with his knight, he allows f6. He's also got g4, g5, though. Like, rook takes e1, queen d8, I don't know, g4. And, like, you know, if knight h7, there's probably f6 there. Yeah, f6, knight takes f6, g5, and it's... Yeah. Uh, although here, you have to be a little careful about a check like this, which could win the game. Ooh. But it, g5 is not mandatory. You could bishop probably start first. with bishop f5. Yikes. Okay, so let's see. First of all, Anish is not moving yet. He's thinking about throwing in a check on g5, which changes the position slightly and he's definitely trying to figure out how so he's got a draw right if he wants it queen g5 yeah. queen h6 and when you're attacking and you have a draw in hand that usually indicates to you that you might have better like that that at the worst you're getting a draw so it's already been a very profitable sacrifice indeed and, and plus it gives you license to think for a long time because you know if you know push comes to shove and you don't find anything and you have 30 seconds you take the draw the worst feeling is when you think you have a draw in your pocket. Then you're like, all right, I'll go for the draw. And then it turns out it's not actually perpetual. <laughs> yeah, that's so bad. Um, I've had that happen over the board, actually. I I've told you the story. Okay, I'll, I'll save the story for after the game because I want to see what happens here. Man, you know what? Rook takes e1, queen f8, queen takes f6, bishop d8. That's what's worrying him. Oh my lands and the queen the is weirdest literally queen what only in Hikaru's games do you find an idea like this. So he probably has <laughs> to play queen g5. Yeah, he does. That's a great find by you. Queen oh. f8. Queen what f8 a is move. and it wins the game because if you now give a check, then queen blocks on g7. And you know he Hikaru sees that. That's not oh, a good Hikaru question. will see that while on a skydiving tour of the safari. Like he <laughs> will not miss that. I was wondering what was, what was really taking so long because if you want to take the drudge there for you and Rook takes and one clearly bottom. You know, right? kudos to Anish because how many people would immediately take on one, myself included? Oh, yeah, Plenty. yeah, Plenty. Yeah. I would see the draw and be like, oh, yeah, so I got that ah! next move too. <laughs> right. And the second game is also, I mean, I guess at this point you could take on one, but Anish decides not to play with fire. Second right. game is also a draw. Fair, completely fair result. It was a fun sacrifice. It didn't, like, I mean, Hikar was really up to task. He found a nice little uh, defensive maneuver there, but probably he missed a way to, to really take the advantage um, in that game. But I don't yeah. think he's too upset. I mean, he doesn't get to see the engine eval when he's playing the game, right? So he doesn't know Bishop H6. It's like, oh, yeah, this is better for Black. Objectively, it kind of feels like a, a good attacking move and tough it, to defend. It was. I, I think it was justified by the practical... Uh, situation and uh you know gary was a little bit better but it wasn't like he was crushing or anything like that yeah and he gets on the board with two draws uh must be a confidence builder you know when you're off to a non-losing start against hikaru 
you know, For you sure. feel a little bit better about yourself. But it's a world championship I, match strat, you know, just draw, draw. Well, it didn't work out very well for Mr. Napomnishio. Know? So you're saying that there's a D Day coming where Hikaru just, you know, wins just, game six right. type of thing. Party, party time is over. Womp, womp. <laughs> Let's get to business. Um, I, I was just going to say that I've shared the story a while back on my, uh, during a commentary. Basically, uh, on the subject of draw offers, uh, at, at my uh, childhood chess club in, in San Francisco, the mechanics, there was a very flamboyant 2100 who just, he wore these, like, everything about him was was a unique, including the way he played one B4 and one G4 and one B5 and one G5. The way he offered draws was always hilarious. So it would never be, I offer a draw. It would always be some phrase like, do you want to call it a day? Or, <laughs> hey, want to call it off and grab a bite to eat? And that would be his draw offer. <laughs> That's the way that he would offer draws. <laughs> it was just funny. Anyways, back That's to the great. game. No, I like it. That's uh, It's a friendly, friendly offer. Oh, oh, he was great. Except when he was losing a blitz game. Then he would start slamming the pieces like something fierce. <laughs> I'm picturing him offering a draw in the same way, but just noisier. Just, you know. You want to call right, it a day? Call it, <laughs> right, call it a day. <laughs> there was one time that he was playing somebody. I was sitting next to him. He declined, Jules declined a draw. And then two moves later, he said, do you want to call it a day? And his opponent declined and he was not happy. <laughs> but you know, it's one of those cases where you decline a draw and then you immediately make a mistake. It happens way and too And then you often. try to offer a draw right back, but it doesn't work. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Right. Hmm. Okay. So in the meantime, we have a King's Indian attack type structure. Giri is making progress on the on the queen side. Yes. He, um, but Hikaru, what to make of this? I think anytime. So there's like a King's Indian attack structure, which Hikaru definitely has here. But usually the bishop on b2 is on c1, and the bishop on h7 is on like c8 or b7. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that black is getting the better version of all of those kind of lines. For bishop sure. on b2 is not great and bishop on h7 looks fantastic. Okay, so Geary decided, ooh, I don't know if I like that move. I was expecting Anish to keep the tension here. Instead, he takes on c4, opening the diagonal for the bishop. Mm -hmm. I feel like something about this seems shaky for black. I think what Anish is saying is that he, he has all these squares covered on his side of the board. So probably black is just fine here. And the move knight a6 is the one that if you can play it, you're feeling really good. Knight comes to b4. Um, the main right. calculation is, you know, can rook a1 be thrown into the, into the works there? And it did look quite annoying, but maybe knight a6 was playable. I'm not sure. It's a, queen, it's a tough queen b3 to there. Right. Yeah, and instead of niche queen a3, but when you lead with your queen like this, uh, that queen becomes very vulnerable. And now Hikaru threatens annoying stuff like rook a1 Geary is in some trouble here i think yeah there's some weird bishop moves like bishop b7 bishop a5 that are like going to appear in the position the knight on c7 is Geary's biggest issue if that knight appears on b4 i think he's totally fine but right now it's dominated d5 b5 knight e8 and you know you got f6 d6 covered as well so it's really really a struggle here for black yeah that pawn on e5 it could be both a strength and a weakness it's definitely a strength in this case don't Let's see about how London H Bishop <laughs> on H7. You can't go Rook B1. So many people forget about that guy. Oh, that is the most annoying Bishop of all time. Like the fact, oh, wouldn't I just love to infiltrate to B7? <laughs> yep. And now Geary goes Knight A6. So your idea, better late than never. Yeah, Rook seriously. B7. And I guess any shows Rook C7. I guess Black is fine here. Right. And the Queen was tethered to the Bishop on. C3. The funny thing about that, you know, quote unquote London bishop on h7 is that you can often get checkmated. You feel like you have an escape square and you're like, yeah, right. I'm not king h7, but I, your bishop I sitting there <laughs> is the sometimes the worst. Hey, leave me alone. I, I got my luft. Oh, wait a second. Now, queen d7 is an annoying prospect. So maybe queen a4 can be considered here. Queen b1 check. Mm -hmm. Let's see where he goes from here. Aha, uh -huh, like this. I feel like Hikaru is going to play like queen c1 or queen e1. Queen b2 looks... Queen b2 even annoying. better, yeah. I actually just didn't see <laughs> b2 square. Because then you're, you're still thinking about things like queen down to b7 and 
even losing your c3 bishop but taking the knight on c7 could be quite good for white yeah these are very tricky positions in which Shikaru excels mm -hmm. lots of things to keep tabs on and i think anish underestimated queen b2 because <laughs> maybe queen b1 <laughs> draw oh draw. <laughs> that would be a pretty trippy repetition <laughs> Except Hikaru would play Queen A3. Yeah, yeah, there's no question. I mean, Hikaru doesn't take draws in slightly better positions when he's a minute up. Come on. <laughs> yeah, then... But the thing is allowing... Like, if you take a step back, Queen D7 or Queen D8, then the Queen infiltrates and I'm starting to really like white. Knight A6. And he's trying to close the gate here with the Knight completing its journey to B4. Mm -hmm. But Queen B7 is possible here. And maybe he could do something like queen b7. I think he wants to play bishop f8. And then bishop a5, knight b4. And you say, I don't care about the knight on b4. Maybe like bishop c7 there. Or, you know, you start to get the bishop around the other side of the pawns. And the knight on b4 doesn't look like it's doing much. Yeah, it's one of those outposts which, you know, used to be, used to be good when there was stuff on the queen side. But now it's just sort of staring into nothingness. Mm -hmm. Hikaru going Ooh. for this. And Anish taking that. Wow. Ooh, this looks very shaky. Hikaru with that determined face, you can tell he's looking, he's hunting down the win. Yes, he knows. Where is the win? Could it just be for some reason? I'm thinking about knight g4, but I don't I don't think it does anything after h5. Yeah, knight g4 is kind of a little empty. The knight on a6, it definitely involves knight on a6. h5 and bishop b4 makes a lot of sense. Ooh, that's, that's one idea. Hikaru goes h5. I don't think you can take that. But hang on, if you can't take it, there's queen e8, queen takes f7. If oh, you take God. it, bishop b4 wins because of queen e6. Yeah, this or is very ele very elegant idea, just covering the luft. <laughs> Asti. The time was managed a lot better, probably because of how comfortable Hikaru felt during this whole game so he's got he's got lots of time here and it's giri who's down on time and seems to be in tough after the move h5 nice shot. it's over it's yeah. just resignable and these types of positions the ready sort of the position that pawn on e5 hikaru likes uh square i mean who doesn't like this but when he controls a lot of squares in the enemy camp and when you've got a lot of loose pieces against him that's a situation you want to try to avoid that's why i like how giri played the first two games Sort of very solid. Everything was nicely protected. That's the kind of chess I think he needs to play. But the first decisive game goes to Hikaru. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there's there's no moves here. You can nope. you can keep the bishop on the diagonal, like bishop d3, bishop b1, to not fall into bishop b4. But there's just <laughs> queen queen e8, and all the pawns uh, start to fall. Yeah, I mean queen e. Okay, so he takes it. The evil bar showing made an eleven. I guess G G5. Oh, G6. There was some sort of a mate, maybe taking on... What was it? I mean, this is still winning, of course. Right. But, you know, his idea is that G4, at least there's going to be some pawns for the piece as well, and Black still has a few tricky moves, like Queen D4. And trying to be annoying there. Yeah, no, this is good. Resilience by Geary. Did I call it too soon? Can you play? Ooh, okay. I wanted to maybe take on G4 and go H5, but a little, uh, sure. little much probably. I mean, maybe Knight B4, Knight D3, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think Gary sees a move though. Yeah, Knight B4, Knight D3, and try to take on E5, but I mean, it. Yeah, White just has too many pawns there. Knight that C7. guy's not going anywhere. Okay, the queen, that's a that's an ingenious idea. The queen has to go to e7. <laughs> I, I don't know if Hikaru really necessarily clever. saw that move, but he has e7. And the rest is relatively straightforward conversion, I would imagine. <laughs> Something Although, like king g2, queen g5, takes, takes, takes g6, f5. Some line oh. like that. And it's like, you know, you're just connecting all three pawns. There's still some hope. Yeah, especially if you can pick off the g6 pawn after that. So he, yeah, I think King H three is a little bit designed against that. Very accurate move. And Knight G four, 
would be great if it worked. It might. Because the yeah, bishop takes. It and does. I don't think you got enough jacks. Queen c3, f3, f3 working. Or this. Nice. It's over. And Hikaru jumps out on top. Gideon and this is work for that still right at the end. So it was, it's oh no, big, yeah, he was conversion by Hikaru. Good resilience, but I'm going to say something. I, I think Geary, like, this is already a pivotal game because no one, nobody like Hikaru pounces on uh, the first sign of weakness. Like he will <laughs> run away with this match if he senses that Geary is starting to lose the thread. So let's see if Anish can maybe repeat the line from game two and uh, drive. Uh, a match tying point home early on. Yeah, I think the main issue is that he's going to get the same position as game two, but Hikaru is going to have like three extra minutes on the clock because right, he's right, already exactly. played the line. Now he knows like exactly the setup he wants. He knows how Giri is going to play. So a sluggish, it, slower start from Hikaru, but now he's got things mapped out in this line. It's funny when that happens. We saw that in some of the other SEC matches. Uh, I think particularly Caruana and Vial, there was... Uh, some Sicilian line, I want to say, yeah. where the first game was a Ray Lopez line. Uh, I think MVL took like three and a half minutes. <laughs> Next time you Paul played it all instantly. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of a one-time thing that a top player is going to take that much time um, because as soon as you repeat it, they have all the stuff that they've calculated from the last time they played the line to help them make their decisions now. Right. It should be six by Hikaru, so he... I mean, Geary could take and take on e5, and I think what Igar is saying is just that despite his damaged pawn structure, it's going to be very, very solid. Anish does go for this trade. And I think you probably want the knights off the board. Um, maybe counterintuitive, but it just seems like the knight on f3 plugs the f-file and hits that loose e-pawn on e5. So if the knight ever jumps to f4, knight e5 can always happen. So I, th I thought it would be knight takes e5, actually. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm a little surprised at this move, but he, I guess Hikaru has has looked at it in a different through a different lens. I mean, one benefit of keeping the knight on g6 is that it can later on jump to f4 mm -hmm. uh, potentially. So I can see a case being made for that. I think white is slightly better, nonetheless. Yep. Well, now it can certainly jump to f4. Right. And the other knight can remain on d7, or it can jump to c5. Although I'm not sure what it'll be, what it will be doing on c5. Yeah, just kind of <laughs> watching over things. But it <laughs> seems almost more useful uh, protecting the pawn on e5 at the moment. I agree. Are going to b6, and again, not really threatening to go knight c4. It's not such a big deal. But Geary could still consider b3 just to limit the knight mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, I think B3, Hikaru just wants to say eventually the knight's going to return to D7 and C5, and then maybe you feel you feel like your B3 pawn might be better on B2 in that case. Right. Yeah, a lot of a lot of decisions to make here for Anish. A lot of candidate moves, Rook D1, B3. Maybe he can bring <laughs> his own knight away from G3. I think Knight B6 is one of those moves that you can get in your own head about. You're like, oh, B3 is such a great move, natural reaction. But then in your head, you're like, wait a minute. That's what he wants me to play. That's Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's going to go back to D7, that sneaky guy. He won't fool me. <laughs> I'm not playing his game. <laughs> I'm not going to play this good move because he wants me to do it. On the other hand, uh, do I trust my intuition? Is he seeing more than me? Gary goes for it. Yeah, he says B3. I mean, we're all taught... Uh, B3, G3 is how you deal with a knight on B6 and G6. It just takes away the squares. Right. This is a classic. And Anish has a slight issue with the D file. I mean, and, and the problem that rookie one might walk into some sort of an exchange sack on F3 or even knight F4 with knight takes H3 ideas. Anish dropping his knight back to F1. We just talked about this, so I'll point it out again. I think he's trying to go pawn to G3. And it really deals with the knight on g6 so the pawns on g3 and b3 you don't see that every day yeah and although full command of the d file for hikaru look at the penetration squares d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 all can't be used so uh, they're it all looks covered great. it looks great but i'm not sure how practical it is yep and anish expanding with b4 
that does weaken the C4 square. So a return to B6 is not out of the question. Now, white is, I mean, this is this has been very well played so far by Anish. He's got a sizable advantage. He's limited Hikaru's knights, and he can continue improving with moves like queen b3, knight g4, even h4, h5. Yeah, the knight on f1 to h2, it might seem like a little bit strange because you're putting the knight way offside. Why not knight d2? But you're overprotecting f3, so there's not going to be any f file pressure. And you can always swing into the position with knight to g4 into e3 or attacking the e5 pawn. So it's actually, you know, he's fully consolidated on the king's side. And now he can focus on the rest of the board, as you indicated. Right. Okay, Hikaru taking a sizable thing here after rook b1. And um, let's see what he comes up with. I think he's just kind of lacking an overall plan. Um, here he's like minutely improving his position. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. Hikaru, it's like he doesn't really want to play h5 to stop knight g4 because might be met with h4. And suddenly right. the knight gets the g5 square. So it just kind of doesn't have a full plan at the moment. Yeah, so for Giri, I guess the question is, how is he going to make actual inroads? Because he's finished all the architectural decorations. And this is a very frustrating situation to be in against Hikaru, where you know you're better, but how do you keep your foot on the gas pedal? I like h4. Now back to h2. But as you said, the g5 yeah. square has been very significantly weakened. Yeah, and you can now there are some nice squares for both knights. Knight g5, the other knight can come into f3, or it can stay on h2 where it stops knight g4 from black. So both knights or both op uh, opponents here are trying to find squares for their knights. Right. B takes a5, Anish. And rook b5. Aha. Uh -huh. Aiming to force a rook trade. Yep. You might see some strange rook moves like rook c6 in the future, queen out to, to c5 type of thing. But I think white wants to go almost just c4, c5 and try to break up the break up the position. Yeah. And of course, keeping an eye on the e5 pawn as well mm -hmm. in the event the black drops the rook from a5. So another tough decision to make here for Hikaru. Great time management this game by Geary. Okay, wait a minute. Is there maybe knight g5? I'm I'm playing knight g5 even if it's not an immediate threat to do anything. Right. Because, yeah, I, I think knight g5 is the square for that one. And then the h2 knight is always free to jump into the game easily on f3. But I think it does have a threat as well of queen e2. And if the knight goes to c5, gets too far away from the king's side, it's going to be meat. <laughs> yeah, you just get crushed instantly here. That pawn is very weak. Anish. Maybe thinking about going queen e2 first. You know, in these situations, you can always kind of overthink it. Yeah. But I think I think he needs to keep a time advantage. I think he needs to trust his intuition and just go knight g5. Yeah, knight g5 looks very okay, good. Okay, so he... <laughs> queen e2 is pretty much... Whoa. Just, okay, what? What does Hikaru see? Oh, queen e8. Tricky. Can't take Man. on h5 because of knight f4. You can't get nothing past this guy. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> nope. I, I think the rook f3 might be really dangerous for black. I don't know. C4. Some rook a3. like. Oh, <laughs> he's going to be threatening queen takes h5 after rook a3. That's, uh, hey, put that on the board somehow. That's really, a, that's a very, very cool tactic. Yeah, basically here you can already take because even though black wins the queen, Rook a8 is going to be a back ranker. So. Boom. Oh, black, can, black can deal with this by bringing his own rook back to d8, but that would involve passively defending. And I don't know if that's in Hikaru's purview. Yeah, I think you, you have to make the move knight f8 at some point, you know, this move or the next. Right. Back to d8. Rook a7 looks very tempting. Yep, rook a7, uh, knight on h2 I want to do something with. Uh, and knight f1, knight e3, I'm not really seeing where it goes. So probably knight f3, now that h5 has been protected, there's not much else going on there. Yeah, knight f3 and meet knight g6 with maybe even knight e1, knight d3, depending on where black's rook goes. And Yeah, like if I could take the knight on h2 and trade it for the knight on c5, I'd be very happy. That's like a very strong piece. So maybe there's some long meandering way where that happens. Yeah, so here, for example, 
knight e1 would indeed threaten queen takes h5. Right. So I would go knight e1, knight c2, knight b4, knight c6. Exactly. (laughs) Full maneuver. I I think you have time for that. I don't know what Karo is going to be threatening. He just doesn't have time, period. He's down to 30 seconds. This is what concerns me. I think that's a good move, though. It's a great move. Geary is playing a masterpiece so far. Can he drive it home? Queen takes h5. He missed it. But does I thought Giri that was a whole. Geary must see it. I, I think he's just verifying. I mean, this is pretty pretty simple. Oh my goodness. It. That is just not going to cut it against Sicaro. And this is something that you pointed out like three moves before <laughs> it was even on the table. And that's why it helps to see tactics that don't work. Put Again, forward. he's got Queen takes h5. And, he and here's, now, the, here's what happens you tell yourself it doesn't work and then you don't check actively. You don't ask yourself, what happens if I do it anyway? Has the position changed to allow me to do this? And that's crazy it. to me. That is a really easy tactic that cannot be accepted by Gary. He's not going to win the match like this. He's got to see that stuff. He might still win this game though. Yeah, that, that's how good his position is. Truly. That is how good his position is. Yeah, he's still winning. <laughs> yep. But he, he has uh, to see that. I don't know that. about that though. Knight 97, knight f5. Yeah, that's oh the... knight f3. Oof. Okay, that was a really good maneuver. However, that's the rook's gonna get the a file. I think he's gonna toss the, the pawn there. It's not over. I mean, Gary has to decide what he's taking on d4 with. That's... How is he gonna break through? 97 g6. Right, you can this almost offer the knight trade on f5. <laughs> this has oh. to be winning. <laughs> right. Pawn end game is almost equal. Yeah, not anymore though. Takes an f5? Yeah, f5 for sure now. Or this, same thing. Yeah. Okay, let's see it. E6 yeah, this is and e7. E6, E7. The knight on g4 is so poorly placed to win in like any pawns <laughs> ever. Right, it, it literally is not. I mean, knight d4 and e3 would be mm-hmm. one. Also, Gary has to move. e6, good speed. Air King takes c7. Yep. Gosh, Ikara fighting to the last drop of blood, but he's kind of in Zugzwang here. He is. And King D5, he wants to have the knight. Huh? I would just repeat once. Maybe King C7 and then King D8. Oh. I think he's done this okay. in a good way, Giri. Yep. H4, B6, H3, and then knight F3. Ooh, Take it. B7. Take, the knight. Take the knight. Oh my god! No, knight B7! Ooh! <gasps> Tricked at the end. R. This is just so classic. Tricked is, at the end. Hikaru never. Classic. He's, he's never out, man. He's so never hard to play out of the. I mean, this is insane. And he finds this trick. Knight takes e5 at the last. Knight e5 at the last second. Take the knight, and it's over. And a, but you a panic rise in smile. the last second. <laughs> a wry smile indeed. And my goodness. And tell you what, that queen takes h5 move. I guess Anish paid the price for that in the end. Yeah, that would have been a beautiful finish. He still put together a gorgeous game. Pretty much start to oh, finish. Yeah. He missed that tactic, but like he never relinquished his advantage. It was and an amazing positional game. It really was. But you have to have to deliver in the end against Ikar. You cannot panic in those moments. And there's nobody as good at, as him at making you panic in time pressure. It doesn't matter how few pieces he has. You find a way to get you to lose your mind. <laughs> yeah, like he he makes his moves as if they're always winning. That's the right. problem. It's like he breaks them so quickly. You're like, well, damn, I missed that. Wait, what? Wait, what? What's going right, on? right, exactly. <laughs> All right, I must be. The game is over. <laughs> Resign time. We've seen this opening before, and uh, I, I think Geary should continue to keep going for this. I don't see any any problem with this. Oh, yeah. This line. It was, he had a good position for sure. He's had good positions out of the opening so far, and he's done his job in, in that regard. Man, mm-hmm. that is so tilting. It really is. To play such a game, and then at the last second for this to happen is just crazy. And, and it is vintage, vintage Chicago. <laughs> we, we've all been there. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately. Um... I think Giri is going to probably approach this in a very similar way. He either can play a4 himself next move, b4, and then c5, or he could play c5 and then try to play a4. But Hikaru uh, doesn't want any part of the, the black pawn reaching a4, so he stops that immediately. Yep. 
And somehow I'm having a hard time figuring out how Anish should make progress on the queen side. Maybe c6, b5. Although Hikaru's also not anywhere near, you know, checkmating on the queens on the king side. Yeah, the knight actually sits really well on b4 because you never really want to play c3. Um, so you can kind of just plop it down there and then not really think about it. Um, but yeah, knight b4 and then something like, you know, queen c7, b6 to c5 or bishop c5, these kind of things could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're basically trying to get white to, to push one of these queenside pawns. Exactly. Create yeah. more weaknesses. He's going for something way more direct um, and much more similar to the position that he's had before. This knight is going to always have the c6 square, and b5 is not crazy at all because you can take, take, and try to play for a4 later. Right. Okay, so king h8, a little prophylaxis, safeguarding the king. Picaro. Sorry, uh, you want to you go a bit deeper there? Prophylaxis against what? Prophylaxis against <laughs> the, you know, queen g4, knight f5, queen takes. It's just prophylaxis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whenever a move just doesn't quite make sense in a credit it's prophylaxis. Game, just call it prophylaxis. And, it's science. Uh, it's science. It's just file it, away. Yeah. It's just physics. It's just physics. It's just science, guys. It's just prophylaxis. Danny and I understand it. I yeah, yeah, there's no, there's nothing else I need to explain. You just need to trust me. I am the authority on the subject, and I, <laughs> I claim that it's prophylaxis. Shuffle the queen over, and I mean, mass trades on the D file. It almost you know feels like was? white's pawns are going to be the ones in trouble to like a, a long-term bishop c2, you know, right? When everything gets traded. That was prophylaxis too against uh, rook takes d7. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, okay, the so king is on g8. <laughs> oh, it is on g8 now. It was never on h8. That was your hallucination. Oh, man, it's great prophylaxis. It allows black to play the defensive resource, king g8. Right, exactly. It wouldn't have been available if the king was already on g8. So Right, so black would have been in Zugzwang and therefore would have resigned if the king was already on g8 because <laughs> there were no other moves to make. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so decision time for Hikaru. Does he take this pawn? The downside of this for white is just the knight on b4 is a monster. And the pawn on b3 is a pretty serious weakness. So we might... I mean... I think it's 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 not out of the question. Hikaru though keeps the tension of Bishop C three, again down on the clock. I like this move, Knight C six. Um, immediate pressure on E five, D four square always available. Um, Bishop C two. This looks very good, right? I mean, for for White Knight G four, it's like I don't see the the attack at all. No, for sure. I mean, and again, Black is never really worried about Hikaru taking this pawn on B seven. Because black just takes and goes rook b8. Yeah, queen's off is great for Geary. He's going to take probably with the pawn here, I would assume. I would imagine. Mm, okay, he takes with the rook. I mean, I can, I can see the point of that. Because when you have a rook trade with only one pair of, with only one pair of rooks, white's going to maybe have a harder time stopping the passer. I don't know. Yeah, I think he just sees that there's no way white doesn't take this rook eventually in this game. Like if he doubles, okay, you're going to have to take it. And then he can always take with a pawn at that point. Yeah. I mean, Hikaru's in big trouble again. He's two minutes down and I'm going to say it again, Geary. This is another chance. Geary needs to deliver on this game. No question. No question. It can't be two in a row because if you, the thing about a, a match with Hikaru, especially a long match is if you, you know, you have to admit in your head, of course, that there are going to be games where he outplays you and he's going to win those games. And then sure. if you're not winning the games where you outplay him, those add up on the stat sheet and suddenly you check the score and he covers up five games and you're like, what? Right, exactly. <laughs> they add up really, really quickly. Okay, but now we're going to see Hikaru's defense, Bishop F1, uh, halting the progress of the pawn. This doesn't look losing for right. I would consider a move like Queen C6 here. Mm -hmm. Trying to trade Queens and maybe opening the B file so that we can harass the pawn on b3 i think queen c6 is strong yeah I, I don't think you can sit there and allow bishop d3 to happen takes takes and all of a sudden there's no bishop pair that knight on g4 is going to run circles around the position indeed and anish makes the mistake of listening to me hikaru might play queen f4 here i mean 
With a minute on the clock, I feel like, okay, back to d1. Still, no he wants to play d3. bishop d3. No. Horrible blunder, d3. Bishop but Aman, d3. if the king was on h8, if the king was only on h8, then in this <laughs> position, rook d8 would have been possible. Damn. But you see, that you was the reason he played king h8. Are you suggesting king h8 here for the fans one time? I actually don't think it's such a bad move. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, Hikaru is too fast to the punch. And he plays bishop d3. So I would play maybe queen e4. Prevent bishop d3 at all costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazing I, I would annoying. play queen e4. And, and even queen c2. Okay, so different prophylaxis. But does that actually stop bishop d3? I don't think it does. Because you want to just repeat bishop e2? So bishop h1 is possible here, but I don't think it's that scary for white. Just I think I need to miss bishop e2. I still feel like uh, this is the exact position that Hikaru is, is like going to flip around. Like, oh, yeah, light squared bishops, and I, I bet Hikaru wins. Yeah, he's going to knight h2, knight f3, and then he's going to start attacking the d4 pawn. And before you know it, you're, you're, you're getting crushed. Gary definitely, bishop e4 was a, was a, was a bad move. To me, a like queen e4 was very natural and 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 right. I think strong. Hits the knight, prepares to play d3, and most importantly stops this. Like bishop d3 is that one move that white gets almost full consolidation. Yeah, I mean, I would probably go something like rook d8 here. But yeah, this is this is clearly a lion's share of black's advantage. Has Do been. you take the draw here? Question like bishop e4, bishop d3. Would you take that draw knowing you could be like no. potentially outplayed by a knight? There's no way I would have, especially had I played the last game, uh, taking that into <laughs> right, account. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we if factor in the weather conditions. Right, exactly. Great. And the cold front over, <laughs> over Geary Town. So this is interesting. It's an opposite colored bishop position. The pawn on e5 is kind of a weakness. Ooh. That That's a nasty little move. Very strong. First and Bishop C5, Rook D8. Because Black like could... can go Bishop C5, as you indicated, you know, B6. And these three pawns for White on the Queen side are irrelevant. Like, they, they can't move at all. And Black's right. four against three is completely mobile. So I'm loving Geary's chances once again, even though it might be around even. Yeah, it's a good practical chance. I don't really see Hikaru losing this because... I mean, if you if you have a rook trade and white parks the king on g2, I'm just not seeing enough targets for black. Mm -hmm. And maybe rook d4 here makes some sense, but Hikaru will have to suffer, but he should be able to pull out the draw here. Let's see, g6. But Anisha's good at this. I mean, he is very resilient in these positions. H5, not giving an inch have to play g5 i would imagine i mean yep. bishop c5 can always be thrown in because it comes with a nicely packaged threat of queen takes g3 but g5 order yeah. this now and you'll get this gift for free <laughs> yeah he wishes six bishop c5 is coming next okay black is, is absolutely not risking yeah you know he gets to <laughs> he gets to enjoy the position bishop c5 but the question is, what now? He's got Hikaru tied down to the pawn. Maybe King G7 and start yeah. pushing your pawns. I'm trying to play like King G7, F5, King F6, G4, E5, E4, like slowly, slowly something there. I would go G4. I think Hikaru shouldn't have allowed that because now the bishop is, is kind of stranded and it can't mm -hmm. return to home base. Yep. F5 there. Okay. Yeah. He's going to play F5. You can F5. still play it now. It's not you're not worried about that pawn. Yeah, and with 14 seconds, e5 and f4 is really scary. Mm -hmm. But Geary has to move faster. He's he's giving up chunks of time. Your queen d7 might maybe that wins a bishop. bishop I think that C8 might have won a bishop. Now. Bishop c8. Oh, it, it all oh comes my crashing goodness. down. Is he gonna win? Oh, Geary's gonna flag. Oh, oh Daniel, just, that's that's classic. That, it's so that, trademark. And you called it too. Oh man. That That's is just brutal. vintage. And 
not only does he not win this one, zero out of two in the last two games. Oh, sorry, half out of two in the last two games. That is beyond brutal. As Ikar Nakamura jumps out to a two-point lead in the first half of the five-minute portion, concludes Aman. What else is there to say? But another day in it's the beautiful. office for Hikaru thus far. He's so resilient. He really is. In these positions, he's such a good defender. And I think that's why he's just you know, one of the worst opponents for anyone in the speed chess format because he wins the games that he's winning and he still wins the games that he's losing. Right. Doesn't matter. Any position, any amount of pieces. Well, we'll see if Anish can recover in the second half of the five-minute portion. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We'll be back in a few. Chess.com is proud to release Game Review, a simple streamlined tool to help you learn from your games. Immediately see your accuracy and your opponent's accuracy and how many brilliant and great moves were played. Then select Start Review to dive into the game. Learn about the opening and get helpful stats on your performance. Retry mistakes to learn and improve your accuracy score. See why moves are played thanks to the coach's feedback and click Show Line to see helpful engine recommendations. Play a game, start review, and try it today.
Best.com is your exclusive Twitch home for the video feeds for the ongoing FIDE World Chess Championship. Join us for the best coverage around as we continue to watch this year's players, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomnishi, battle for the title. Magnus with a two-point lead. And tomorrow, coverage continues at 4 a.m. Pacific. Make sure to tune in for Hess, for Caruana, and for Danny as they dissect all of the moves in the match and watch all of the video. That's coming your way tomorrow morning. But right now, we are watching the second of today's doubleheader with Hikaru Nakamura facing Anishkiri. Aman, devastating so far yeah. for Anish. No other way to put it. I would be throwing all of the mice in my possession at the wall at the moment. <laughs> but Anish has to find a way to compose himself and uh, recover. He's down two points. Yeah, this is the unfortunate reality that he's in right now. He's up against one of the best, uh, most resilient defenders that maybe in the world, um, especially in this short um, speed chess format. Uh, he's not played poorly. He really hasn't. Uh, overall, I think he has a he has good time management and he's had some great positions with some like really uh, stellar chances to win. But it often comes down at this very high level to one moment, one tactic, uh, one time scramble and Hikaru's just been better in all those moments. And I think most importantly, Giri is missing some key tactics that will put away the positions that he's getting. And as we were talking during the break, you, you mentioned something I want to, I, I want to agree with, which is that when you're playing Hikaru, uh, it, it, even with tactics that you would normally see against anybody else, you're subconsciously uh, tamping down in your mind because you think that there's no way Hikaru misses anything yeah. So you're already doubting yourself and you're off on the wrong foot. So even if there is a tactic that you see with the corner of your eye, you're already telling yourself, ah, there's no way this is going to work. I'm playing Hikaru. Exactly. And that's the psychological effect, which everybody absolutely in the world, uh, you know, encounters against Hikaru. Yep. This is, uh, you know, you're, you shouldn't do that. Anish knows that we all do, but it just happens and you can't, you can't stop it sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, Gary, he's a confident player in general, so he has to find a way to push that aside. Again, one of these classic Italian positions where I think White has a very slight pull, better central control, well-placed pieces on the third rank, mm -hmm. but very solid here for Hikaru. And I think that's the strategy he's been adopting here. Solid play and waits for his opportunity to pounce. Yeah, and he has his systems with White. Let's not forget he's basically going for the same kind of B3, G3 system with the white pieces almost every game. And uh, he's not looking to do too much in the opening. I mean, <laughs> pretty reflective of Hikaru's <laughs> style overall. He, you know, he doesn't need to be flashy uh, in the opening. He has, he, he has a wealth of uh, theoretical knowledge, but he doesn't really need to flex it too much because he's just a good player in most positions and he doesn't need to, to get a special advantage in order to outplay his opponents. Right. And he probably the move d5 needs to be considered here at, at every moment. Instead, he right. plays queen e7 and he walks into knight f5 and tucks the queen back on f8. And Gary, of course, Anish has to be careful here because he takes d4 could come at the most inconvenient moment and the e4 pawn could end up being loose. That's how these positions often turn sour. Mm -hmm. I would go b4 here or something like that just to have the bishop b3 option available. Um, right. Ugh. Back to home base. OK. OK, there it is. Nice. Um, but still, knight f5 and then knight g3, it just makes a bad impression. And Giri, probably if there was a small advantage, it's not there anymore. No. And bishop e6 would prevent bishop b3. I think that's a good move. The car is looking comfortable here. Um, symmetrical oh, yeah. as well so there's not really too many imbalances and um yeah both sides look look uh, dead even at the moment oh yeah this is just as solid as it can get for black in these types of structures and the onus is definitely on anish here to figure out a way to to press for the advantage but I, it's not even apparent to me how, how i can even approach black's position here <laughs> there's just yeah. no targets Maybe queen b1, try to play potentially b5 or bishop b3 still. Mm -hmm. um, 
to go there. I like I, that I mean, Queen C1. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going back to the previous game and sacking on H6. It looks like so. I think maybe Queen B1 is. May I propose this? <laughs> no. Draw. Sorry. Okay. Draw. Yeah, for draw. Yeah. Call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Bite to eat. Anyone? All right. So. Niche going into the tank here, and for very good reason. I like your proposal of Queen B1. Queen B2 would potentially walk into Rook A2, so we want to avoid that. Yeah. If you're a niche. And Knight D2 also maybe comes to mind. That's ah, a little bit passive. Yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I don't think <laughs> well, neither think... does a niche. He's been thinking True. for two minutes here. Yeah, he really has. And uh, Queen B1 makes some sense. I mean, there's always king h2 if you truly don't know what's going on oh people are saying that he's experiencing some connection issues i i see i see four bars yeah. there but four he bars. also looks a little confused like he's kind of looking to the side i'm not sure it's well, been I long remember... enough that it's <laughs> Something's up. It is very stressful when your internet goes down during a match. I remember when I was playing in the aim chess tournament, um, my internet, you know, I'm sure that I'm going to jinx it and it's going to go down right now as I'm talking about it, but it <laughs> has gone down once. Oh, draw by agreement. Okay. So I guess he offered to draw and he kind of took it. Is um, that how? I guess that's how draws work. <laughs> I didn't see who offered it though. Did you? Exactly. That's why I was confused. Um, but it, it could be that he was communicating that for some reason he was not able to make a move. And Hikaru's in a situation where, uh, number one, he's up in the match. Number two, just no particular advantage. And that's a, it's a nice sportsman move there, it looks like. Um, for sure. The time was ticking, and they agreed to a draw. For sure. That was gracious. And, um, you know, Hikaru now with a... Two point lead that he's maintaining. And again, I'm on the B3 G3. He's, I mean, he just, it's not that he's getting particularly good positions. I think what Hikaru often does is it's the psychological effect that he's winning games in this line. Yeah. And even if you're getting good positions out of the opening, there's nothing more frustrating than having to constantly try to prove that you can carry the advantage home and failing. Correct. And we're being told that Anish navigated out of the game and Hikaru. Offered him a draw, so a good move there, go. there from, from Hikaru. Yeah, brilliancy. It's going on his insights. <laughs> C4. I like Ooh. the position um, for Fury already. Uh, it just feels like he continues to get good positions in this line with Black. So, of course, he's going to keep repeating it. He's like, you know, we're trained to do that as chess players. Like, objectively, hey, I'm yeah. doing well. But Hikaru keeps winning them. So what are you supposed to do? Yeah, it's a it's a weird situation. I mean, because, yeah, changing the opening doesn't seem to address – because you're not losing because of the opening. So you're, you're stuck in a weird place. <laughs> you don't know what to do. Okay, so C5, this opens up the diagonal for the bishop. Mm -hmm. Bishop on B4 is nicely entrenched on this outpost defending two of these pawns. Wait a second. Something feels off about this. Taking on C4 feels correct, even if there isn't a tactic, because it's like you just want to open the D file, and now there's no rook on D1. Yeah, and bishop D3 is always important to consider in these types of positions, even after DC. Bishop D3? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. Yeah, I think that you want a position where you play uh, DC, uh, DC and then even rook b8. Let's say that you know you don't want to go into complications of bishop d3, rook b8, and I love the knight on b6. It's going to be attacking two weaknesses that black can gang up on. Queen e8, bishop d3, queen d3, even all the queen trades benefit uh, black as well. It's just like a great position for Geary. Definitely. And Hikaru trying to figure out how he wants to address. The queen side tension. Does he want to take on d5? That seems pretty dubious in its own right, but he does. And follows it up with bishop e4. Mm -hmm. Interesting approach to the position. Still a great position for Geary. Maybe like simply queen d7, rook d8. And I also like queen d7 because it eyeballs knight d6 takes on a4. I don't like that move at all. I don't know why, but... I 
just the thought of allowing d takes c4 and then the queen has access to b5 guard takes to the queen though okay very, the didn't like surprised. that as well yeah I felt queen like d7 he takes and then you know queen b5 and white gets all this activity okay moving on queen to c4 Rook d8. Oh, I mean, don't waste hands. time here. Giri's got a position to, you know, everyone dreams about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just every piece is ideally placed. Yep. Uh, except the Rook on f8. Maybe I queen think d7. Turn this this one around. We've got the queen b6, queen b7, queen d7 triangulation. Mm-hmm. The famous. Well-known. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Only to be outdone by king h8, king g8, king h8. <laughs> that is... My favorite triangulation. Rook on a1, tied to this measly pawn on a4. Such a weird situation. No, I was not only looking at the ICS. Uh, to be clear, I mean, I, the eval bar is on, but I, I'm trying not to look at it as much as possible. The reason I didn't like bishop takes c4 was because it, it did allow d takes e4. Yeah, sort of it, it definitely the wasn't of the because position. Of, of queen e4. This, this doesn't look No, <laughs> No, it was not. <laughs> Okay, so one minute down for Hikaru. Once again, a position that Anish just has to convert. Yeah, yeah. Hikaru gets into tough positions as white, but he's sticking to his guns and he's consistently outplaying. Like, even from here, clear advantage for black. And Hikaru's, he's never he never, like, just loses his game easily. If that's the thing. You always right. have to be able to put in, like, 110% just to get a win from a great position. And, and people who are trying to learn uh, the sort of defensive skills, you can't turn into Hikaru, but one thing that he does is when he senses that he's in big trouble, a lot of people's instinct is to speed up. They think, if I speed up, my only chance is basically to flag my opponent. Uh, that's not what Hikaru does. He actually slows down because he realizes that if he doesn't defend objectively, the position's going to collapse within three or four moves. So mm -hmm. he actually hunkers down and tries to find as tricky of a defense as possible, even if that takes him almost the rest of his time. That's right. And he's found something, which is, you know, at least if I'm going to lose that A pawn, I'm taking on C5 with the knight. You cannot take back with the bishop, at least because of the pin. Um, and maybe D4 follows up. I mean, the knight on D5 is <laughs> legendary status, but it's yep. still a continuation. He keeps the game going and he trades pawn for pawn. Yeah, I mean, you could play queen a2 if you wanted, but Giri drops the queen back to e8. Solid. Yeah, he wanted to watch over pass. the c8 rook, clearly. Otherwise, queen d5 looked pretty natural to me. Yeah, but it, I, he was probably worried about these types of tactics. Right, exactly. Knight, rook takes, oops, no, rook takes c2, knight takes d8, so d4 by Hikaru. God, that knight on d5. I feel like books will <laughs> yeah. be written about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's etched into the uh, the history books already on its own. Typical okay, Hikaru so... game, though. What do you do now with your advantage? <laughs> well, I would consider taking taking the white knight on c5. Okay. And creating and... a good good knight versus bad bishop situation. And just, what, rook c7, double rooks type of thing after that? Well, I was thought maybe put the queen on c6 and... You know, go a4, rook a8. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Gary going rook a8 immediately, which probably makes a lot of sense as well. Yeah, rook I don't a4. know. I, I would take the knight. Yeah, exactly. Because a4, bishop a3, I guess, is the intention. And whenever you come to a deadlock on the queen side, meaning like, let's say bishop a3, bishop takes c5, rook takes c5 for argument's sake, like... If there's no way to push things through on the queen side, white's going to go h4, g4. Like things are going to start flying yeah. on the king side. Uh, yeah, no, this is a, this might turn, we might see a 180 of some sort. Okay, so we have takes an a4. Geary can infiltrate via the b file. That would be one way to yep. expand his initiative. There it is. G4, though. Um, Bishop only the king was on h8. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's what I've been telling you all along. <laughs> That's actually what it was prophylaxis again. It was prophylaxis in two games ago for an idea in this game. Yep. Yeah, if only, if only we could uh, do that. The 4D chess. Right. Your moves roll over <laughs> to the <laughs> next game. 
Okay, queen b8. Is he seriously preparing a3? That move comes with a lot of danger. Before. Okay, he just wants to hunt for Hikaru's pawns. Yeah, I, I don't really know how to punch things through. It's just a great position. I don't think anybody ever has that problem against Hikaru. Like the problem of not being able to punch it through when you're better. He, yeah, usually it's just automatic, you know, easy win. Right, right, exactly. Maybe one King of those G8 rare now? cases where he's putting up a resilient defense. <laughs> King G8. I, I would say Rook B3 in, in this position. I thought Queen B4 looked natural and very, very strong. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't sure why Gary was delaying. Okay, so he's repeated once. But you deal with the. You deal with a draw-ish thing, like you're gonna have to play G6. That's all. It's like it's not yeah, a yeah, movie G6. love. Not a movie love, but on the other hand, White has so few attacking resources. Your Queenie one check, and then what's the winning move there? Oof. Aha! Uh -huh, yeah. This is clinical. That this is much. I would say just a better move than Queenie one overall because. Maybe there was a knockout blow after Queenie won. I, I didn't see it, but this definitely gets to a very commanding uh, endgame. Yeah, and I think maybe the move was night before there after Queenie won King G2. Not, not entirely sure. This is commanding indeed. You need the king on G8, man. If only it was on G8. <laughs> there in the first place. I mean, then he would have been, would have been able to do all sorts of things. But now, Unfortunate. ooh. ooh now, nice if Bishop takes A3, Rook C3. Mm -hmm. Then you chop on a one and play rook c one. Nicely done. Yeah, okay, this Hikaru this... sees that immediately, so he's going for the practical, which is you know I'm going to attack this pawn, do my best, but the king is going to get to f seven, and I don't think he'll be able to play play on for too long. So yeah, it's looking great he's for gonna... Giri to get his what first win, right? Because it's been all draws to get him to two points. That's right. So king f7 followed by rook a4 is going to chop off the d-pawn. Mm -hmm. And with it, aha, Hikaru wants some sort of rook b7 and then h5. I mean, that's not going to cut it, though. King knight back to e7. How do you do this? Yeah, it's knight okay, e7, rook e7 he's going to do. Yeah, but... Uh, rook and then d7. rook a5, rook d5. That's it. Oh, that is clinical right there by Geary. And Hikaru, okay, wow. he trades, but knight c6 is going to win the game. Yeah, Giri's up on King time. King e6, it just Take knight takes sucker. e5. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not messing right. around. <laughs> well done by Giri. Wins a game with black. Gets the match back within one point. That was huge. And it really was. It, it's little consolation still, but he didn't. He, he's not letting this get out of control, and, and he's fully composed. He's not tilting. He's playing really well. Yep, I think I think that's one thing for sure with Geary is that he certainly doesn't does not tilt like almost ever. Nope. It feels like he's he's just right back to business. Um, whereas you know Nakamura, obviously the more expressive player, but it's fair to say that Geary probably deserved a win out of his last three or four games. Like he yeah. really had some good <laughs> positions. So I think Naka is probably um, happy that he's only got away with uh, one loss out of that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Hikaru doesn't mind a tie match going into the three-minute. Um, no. But nonetheless, I mean, right now, Geary's next goal has to be to tie it up. He can't be thinking about, you know, the lead he needs to build up going to the bullet just yet. And another Italian. I feel like every position has been slightly different, but I'm not very good at sensing, you know, the subtleties of these types of positions. Yeah, like why one or the other? <laughs> right, why, when do you go B4, A4, A5? <laughs> like, why did Geary go A5 at precisely the moment he did? <laughs> <laughs> G3, it's got that idea. Um, there have, uh, we've seen that before at least with a knight on G6. And when he's played bishop F1, it's a further indication that he's probably considering G3 and a relocation of that bishop to G2 potentially. Mm hmm. And Eric, the CEO, gifting 10 subs to the community. Thank you that, to Eric. That's always great. It's like you're basically taking like, 
you know, $50 out of your pocket and then putting like you know, $40 back in. <laughs> That's right. And, and it's like, hey, hey. Hey, reinvestment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, but, you know, get the chat going, right? Hype them up. There we go. <laughs> That's right. And, well, I don't know what to make of these pawns. Are they good? Or are they bad? Is it too much? The, the one good thing about Icar's bishop on a7 is anytime, yeah, anytime the d-pawn moves out of the way, you've got that bishop slicing down the diagonal. Maybe for that reason, Anish wants to play c5 and shut this bishop down. I really like that idea, and I think it gives white a big advantage. And guess what? It can't be stopped either. Like, Icar's going to nope. have to go into, you know, home uh, makeover with rook d8, c6, bishop b8. Um, and right. really try to extricate that thing because b6 to try to break up those pawns does not look Ooh, very appetizing that does some pretty disgusting takes and c6 or whatever a a million moves also loose now hikar is just trying to figure out which piece to take on e5 with which is a dilemma that he's been facing before but right now that's not the biggest problem biggest right. problem is that anisha is going c5 mm -hmm. this is knight bad c4 mark. knight c4 is such a nice follow-up because it stops b6 in case that was ever the plan. And if c6, which, hey, you're going to have to play c6 eventually because the bishop on a7 needs to breathe. And then the knight's perfectly placed for, you know, going to d6, b6, all those squares. That was almost pre-moved by Anish. He's got a really good And now h4 limiting the knight. Gorgeous game. Yeah, you so could far. just sense the confidence. Yeah. And wow, look at the knights. One thing is that let's say rook d8, rook d1, bishop b3, you always have queen takes b3 just in case you need that resource. Yeah. Maybe not what white wants, but of course it's it's right. good to make sure that you're not blundering. And I think Anish is thinking about that. How do we how does he yeah, so he goes rook a d1. Yep. Yeah. And knight on h7 is not too nice, but this kind of reminds me of that game for the world championship where magnus had these kind of ugly pawns kind of worse position but at the end of the day it's kind of symmetrical there's no clear weakness in black's position it's just positionally a bit worse but it's manageable it is manageable even with that bishop which can migrate to b8 and after c6 at least the bishop can be over protecting the e5 pawn mm -hmm. at least you could find some job for it but of course black has to be very careful you can lose this very quickly too. I mean, if white infiltrates to F7, for example, or plays knight D5, yeah. this is not fun, that's for sure. Queen D7. So if you want the diagonal, you can play queen D3. I guess there's queen knight D3. of eight there. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's holding. He's holding. Yeah, I mean, bishop takes E5 has to be, has to be watched at all times. I suppose, yeah, I don't know what I suppose. Where is the, the inroads and bishop takes e5? I just didn't see a follow-up after f takes e5, knight takes e5, queen c8. Oh! Maybe you don't need, you know, crushing. What about oh. knight f5? Right. The point is that if you take, I force your bishop into taking me, and, oh, Gorgeous. this is a pretty rare mate. Yeah. On the knight on h7, suffocating its own king. Knight f5 ends the game immediately. It looks it looks crushing, because I if mean, you maybe don't want to go into that, eight. what knight knight where right? It's dominated. Let's say knight c6, right? Just take it knight e7. So right, just... but but king f8, I think, still pretends to hold on, and then maybe I mean, gosh, I, I, it's winning for sure. But where is the blow? This is the worst thing to experience against Sikaro. Oh, yeah. You just, I must be winning. I mean, where is it? <laughs> and then the panic somewhere. starts to set in. You it have a minute and is. a half, and then you've got a minute, and then, and then you make a really bad move. <laughs> okay, let's see. So he doesn't have to play knight f5. That's, I mean, I'm sure he's, it's on his radar. It's a very nice tactical shot. But he could be thinking of other moves like queen... B3, even F4. Like, I imagine White's probably doing okay by just making a regular. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Knight D5. I was thinking about this as well. I think this is also very effective. Still, maybe King F8. Uh -huh. uh, but then, 
Oh, no, no. Knight takes c7. There's going to be queen takes c7 hitting the other knight. The king f8, you might do well to play something like knight f4 and just Oof. try to force that exchange. And you're just you're all over these light squares. It's just like, look at, look at, let me look at this. <laughs> look at that bishop. Oh, my That's goodness. That's the thing. White sacked a piece, but it feels like black has sacked a piece from like 15 moves ago with the bishop on a7. I mean, in some lines, White could even almost sack the queen. Knight f4 is a lovely move. Not knight so easy to find. It's a retreating nasty. knight move. Those I are thought, notorious. I thought that's why maybe he chose d5 over f5, was that it made a little more sense to be able to retreat to f4, because then you're all over the squares here, and, and that is a killer move. I think Anisha's gotten the memo about converting advantages against the <laughs> yeah, It's like the break was perfect. Not... So g8, and... At a minimum, knight g6. Ah, Kikar wants king e8. What about yeah, taking but, and queen b3? Yeah, I think you can go either knight g6, king e8, and then take on uh, g8 and queen c4, which looks winning. Kikar or... just resigned. I mean... Yeah, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't want any many, part of that. No, too many wins there. And guess what? The match is tied. Anish with two wins in a row, and they were dominant, dominating wins completely completely dominating games and this has to fill him with some confidence like finally you know, i i can convert some of these advantages yeah i mean he's not getting necessarily better quality positions than previous i think he's he's had slight advantages in a lot of the positions so far in the match it's just as you mentioned the conversion is now starting to kick in and if he starts converting all these advantages we could <laughs> we could see a far different score than the one we see at the moment Right, and I think Hikaru just, you know, the adjustment that he might consider making is is maybe either switching his openings to something a little bit more aggressive because it seems like, especially with the black, he's slipping into a lot of these slightly worse Italian positions, which mm -hmm. are right up Geary's wheelhouse. So we'll, I'm curious to see what, what he's going to do. This one is almost a reverse Grunfeld with yeah. a Fianchetto Bishop on B2, and Hikaru's going to play C4 very quickly yes. here. Yeah, no, no question about it. Um, bishop e6, knight e7 is going to be played, and we'll see all the thematic ideas from the Grunfeld, just colors reversed here. But it's interesting right. that Geary went away from those positions, which I thought he was rocking, especially because he started to actually convert the advantage that, that he had from the opening. For sure, yeah. This is a little bit puzzling, and, and these positions are more... In you know, Hikaru's neck of the woods, there's a central pawn imbalance. There's all these little piece escapades, bishop to a3 if the bishop moves away. That kind of stuff needs to be, Giri needs, and he needs to be very vigilant about. Yep. And in these four. positions, you can sometimes maybe what take and go d4 and then bishop, bishop b4. Bishop b4. And you're saying... I don't know. I guess you can grab the pawn on b3. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how greedy am I feeling? <laughs> oh, gosh. You'd have to give up the c-file, too. Yep. Yep. I'm really <laughs> really asking for it. I there. don't know. I, I think this was Anisha's idea, but maybe just queen d7 mm -hmm. it would be a better, more, more circumspect choice. Oh, because d4. I can respect here? that. Maybe queen d7 now. True. Okay, he's in, in for a penny, in for a pound. He's got to take right, it now. Right, in too deep. Oh no my goodness, question. I don't like it. There's something wrong. I respect it. I respect it, but I don't like it. Because, you know, let's say, like, the best case scenario feels like you give a pawn back. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like, the absolute best case, like, black somehow survives. Yeah, queen d3, queen a6 looks dangerous. So definitely bishop f7. I don't think you want your bishop loose on e6, especially with queen a6 uh, around the corner. Right. That, then you might end up giving up more than just a pawn. And let's say uh, bishop f7, queen a6, uh, queen d7 is what he's going to do. There's always like a weird move, bishop b7, to like disconnect the queen from a7 and pick up that pawn. And long term, two bishops and an outside pass to a pawn is probably concerning. I have a cool line for you. So he, he has gone bishop bishop d6. What if queen a6, queen d7, rook c7 takes, Ooh. queen takes c6, rook f7, and now bishop d5? And if he yeah, takes stop. d5 mate? Oh, man. Is this going to happen? We're going to see rook c7, aren't we? I mean, Hikaru's got four minutes to find rook c7. Yeah, I think he might need to use about 3% of that. 
<laughs> and after oh, queen six, time? he's required to go king h8. And then we're just going to get some endgame where which it shouldn't be too difficult to convert for white. I, I think Ikar is evaluating this endgame, and he doesn't go for it. Bishop c6. Okay, so he's found an alternative that he that he really likes. What? But isn't there knight b8? Where? Oh, like knight c6, bishop takes f8, knight b8? Queen d6. Queen d6. Queen d6. Yep. That's a good one. Something <laughs> about this move the Eval Bar doesn't like. Is it maybe queen? I think it's no, just it's bishop queen. d5. Takes and then bishop d5, and just kind of like the, the dark square bishop's weird. And uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. Black has some chances on the light squares, I guess. Solid. Position. Yeah, it's definitely something like that for sure. And there's something in this position. I mean, or some kind of like takes and d3 and knight d4. Oh, something like frisky there. It is d3, but if queen, oh, if queen takes e6, there's d2. It's crazy. <laughs> That's an insane tactic. And if e takes, wow. yeah, if takes d3, then knight d4, and black is threatening a fork on e2. If Geary sees this, that's I'm a that's a punch be... right back in the face because bishop c6 looks so good, you know, minus this line. And Hikaru's definitely not seen uh -oh. e3 totally, but I wonder if Geary has. Nope, bishop d5. And those critical and moments, d3. I not think simple Gary, at all, Gary though. can find these types of moves. I mean, uh, he <laughs> he's not top ten in the world for no reason. Yeah. And it's it's back to that thing where you don't even think these tactics exist against the car, and maybe you're not really looking for them. Now this is exactly. still unclear. I don't think black is even worse here. No, um, I'd probably start with h5. I like that move. Yep. Space for the king h4, and you know queen h3 is going to be met by f3. So you want to soften up the position. Like imagine h4, hg3, hg3, then queen h3 is just a killer move. Right. Okay, so we have this game and then most likely one more game in the five-minute portion. And it's almost like the, yeah. the strength of the position, you sometimes evaluate more accurately based on who has the position. I feel like if Naka was black here, right. I'd be like, oh, okay, it's just winning. Like, it's over. Right, exactly. <laughs> this is uh, overwhelming compensation for the exchange. Checkmate. Yeah. Okay, bishop takes a7 is being cooked up here, potentially. Sneaky. Although maybe that should be ignored, and, and you should just go h4. Who knows? He's got a minute and a half. That worries me, too. And the idea is that once the bishop on d5 is attacked by white's queen... There's never time for queen h3. So that's his like active way of defending against the serious light square threat. What you could try to do here is go, for example, h4, bishop takes a7, chop g3, and then go bishop e4. Mm -hmm. My idea was to meet f3 with queen h3, but here there's queen b3 check, creating oh a goodness. lateral defense <laughs> that f takes e4. It's so easy to miss these moves when you're calculating because you're sort of one track mind on your own plan. Right. Maybe queen, queen e6 or something should be played here. Just something calm. And he's just taking too long, though. Just with 45 seconds, I don't see him making it happen in this position. Yep. And what, uh, Make it what, about, queen F, what about queen f5? Try to go queen e4 and then uh -huh. queen e3 check if f3. Try to get around Interesting the idea, side. but... Whatever it is, he's got to move. You just cannot get down to five seconds against Hikaru for the rest of the game. Yeah. He, he's lost track of his time completely. <laughs> I, yes. I don't think he's looking at his clock. He might feel that this is that decisive moment because Bishop H A7 is coming, but it's probably just not as decisive as he thinks. He's like, just not looking at his clock. And that, that can't happen against Hikaru. You have to keep you have to keep track of your clock. And he's gone Queen E6 with five seconds left. And Even here, bishop takes a7. Yeah, possible. I was going to say, you could still take that. Not sure I'd do it, but it's probably still playable. Rook c5, right? That's the idea. It's so annoying. Rook c5 is coming. Bishop e4, f3. You have to take on b4 at some point. That'll be pretty much be forced by Hikaru. Right. Whether it's now or next move. I mean, knight e7, rook c7. Good job by Anish not losing on time here, but oh, Queen D7. He's gonna dagger. lose on the position. <laughs> yep. 
Okay, rook takes a7, bishop takes e2 still. I, I think king I think king f1 is the move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then a6. Some bishop f8 is e4 is a nice move, shutting down the center. I would free move bishop d3. <laughs> yeah, pretty safe. Oh, bishop here comes the, the bishop f8 treatment. Maybe he should have done it first. Okay, rook c6 check for one yep. thing is just winning on the spot, I think. And then king, g5. King g5, bishop e7, a beauty. Oh, that is just nasty. Mm, this is gross. Uh, one second, bishop f8. Yep. Yeah. Not Midnight going to make it happen. Stuck. Wow. And time problems for Anish there. Ikara doing a great job creating practical problems and jumping back out to a one point lead. This is another super important game. It's definitely going to be the last game of the five minute portion. hundred percent. Let's see. We have another Italian. <laughs> so let's see if Anish can once again, repeat his success thus far in these types of positions. Yeah. Based on, you know, the quality of Geary's positions, if he ends up down six, four, then you really start to just doubt his chances in the match because Right. Everything you're seeing is, I just feel like there's going to be a magnifying glass that just zooms in a little bit more <laughs> right. every time the, the time control just gets a little bit lower and lower. That's exactly right. Every single aspect that is not working out for Geary here is going to not exactly. work out by a factor of 10 in the three minute portion. Yeah. And not to mention even the bullet. Exactly. 10x, 10x every time. Right. So this will be big for his uh, his confidence and chances in the match. I mean, yet again, another comfortable position, nothing special, but um, he needs he needs to go into the break with a, a win for sure here. Definitely not a loss. Yeah, definitely. And um, okay, so let's see. We have a pretty much unique position here, uh, as compared to the previous times. We have two knights against two knights. One of these material. I was going to say imbalances, but that's not exactly an imbalance. Material balance. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's the opposite. It's very balanced. Very balanced. And white has the obligatory big queen side, which is not really going anywhere for the moment, but probably another slight pull for Anish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black wants okay. to play a5 in, in a lot of lines. And Yep. You know, b5 Ooh. suddenly you give the c5 square for black's knights and hikaru says look instead of going i think this is kind of instructive instead of going knight f6 to d7 to c5 he takes his knight which is terrible on g6 because of the g3 pawn and he says well let me put that knight to c5 and then knight on f6 will stand well uh, on that square that's a great point it's not always about the shortest route but yeah that knight coming to c5 is like me when i hear free donuts just everybody running to the to the dorm room in college <laughs> your elation right oh, man, now it's not the end of the world for white no i think the i mean the, the i feel like that eval bar is uh <laughs> quite far up there for how i would evaluate right. this position and a little bit you know a little <laughs> overestimation going on here slightly slightly i mean I don't really even see what White's plan should be here. Knight d5, which was approved of by the eval bar. Maybe in the event of knight takes d5, c takes d5, trying to go d4. Right. And then, for example, try to get a knight to c6, something like this. But it's far in the future. Yeah. So he's going, this is actually like a defensive type of move. He might be going knight e6, other knight to d7, knight to c5, so that the c7 pawn is covered by the knight. <laughs> Yeah, there's only, fortunately, there's only one C5 square and there's two knights. So he's going to have to make a decision. I like D4. I think this is the best time to do it. Mm -hmm. And he takes D4. I guess you play knight takes D4 and aim for a positional advantage here. Right back to D7. Another. You know, this is sort of slipped into dubious territory for Ikaro. Right. I'm trying to, is there any school of thought for like C5 here? Yeah, and that's actually C what I was thinking about just now. Trying to go for this position. Anish going rook E3 instead. Mm -hmm. 
I think I, th- I thought C5 was really interesting to, to force Black to put something on that square. F6. Ugh. Yeah, it doesn't but look I great, guess... but it's solid as hell, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's just you're not breaking my structure. No. And the knight on I F3 think... is tethered to the D pawn. So there's no knight move going for F4 stuff unless you clarify the D4 and E5 pawns. I almost feel like Anisha already missed, you know, like a, a more clear chance. Yeah, rookie two is a sign that he's not exactly seeing the way forward. Maybe double on the D file, but what are you doing from there? That pawn chain is going to survive a nuclear war. I mean, <laughs> pawn on C7 is just holding everything down. Yeah, I feel like this position has continued the exact way that it always continues when I have it. So I'm glad to see that. Like, Black almost <laughs> always just does well because D5, D takes E5. You just meet them very, very easily. The C5 square is always yours. And both knights just sit there. And it's so easy to play quick when you have the black pieces here. Gosh, imagine if, if Anish played D5 and gave up the C5 square like that. That would have gotten you kicked out of a Russian chess game for life. Yeah, just, yeah, membership. What, a crime, what, a, what is a high crime of giving up Vic Square for no reason? <laughs> we hereby kick you out of camp forever. Serious capital punishment needs to be administered. Right. <laughs> Gen- Giri knows okay. that, so he's not doing it. Yeah, he does. He does. So Queen G7, Hikaru maneuvering, both sides maneuvering. It seems like Black's making a lot more progress than White is. We're waiting for yeah. F5 at some point. And the floodgates are going to rip open. Yeah, this is Guess where that evil bar is. This is bad. White is almost lost here. For, uh, I, White Blitz has game. nothing to do. And you can take on D4, potentially play F5, hitting the, the rook once it gets there. But I think, you know, you don't, you, you don't have to do anything here for the position to improve. And, and, and positions of the big center, you know, they're very easy to overestimate in Blitz. In Blitz, it's not always about who's got the more space, who's got the more impressive looking pieces. It's about who's got the most flexibility in the position. Look at how many options Hikaru has. He's the one who decides when to take on D4. He's the one who decides when to play F5. Anish can't really make any decisions because he can never take on E5. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm so, not saying that White is totally lost. No. Uh, I was exaggerating, but it's, it's getting there. Although... So he comes shuffling, and I don't necessarily think. Oh, offer draw. There's four seconds wow. left in the five plus one. So if he's going to accept it, he probably wants to wait until now. <laughs> I'm surprised, and I feel like Black, Black must have something, whether it's f5 or e takes d4 or knight c5. He car going g5. Yeah. No, I like the decision. I, I mean, it's it's no. definitely good for Black. No risk, right? You're not scared of D5. You're not scared of DE. I mean, why not play G5? I think Anish was praying for that draw for to be accepted. That's kind of like when I offered draws to 2,700. You think there's about a 2% chance that they're yeah, ever going to take this? Basically, it has to be a win on the board for you in order to, for that draw mm-hmm. to be accepted. <laughs> right. If there's any hope that they'll win the game. No, but I don't even see how to defend against G4. And then D4 is going to collapse. You have to Maybe take. Anish needs to, yeah. Ugh. You have to take oh, God. another way to, to put it. Um, the I other thing I'd rather you could try that. to do is sack the exchange. So rookie two, g4, move the knight somewhere. I'm not proud, but knight e1, sack the exchange right. on d4, and then c7 pawn is a little loose and you move dreams of getting to f5, but I mean, it's obviously not good. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is what white has to try. Yeah, knight c2, knight e3, knight f5. Oof. Okay, F takes E5 takes... is it's like the, the two brooks suddenly are like, whoa, it's a nice Perfectly view over placed. here. It's... Right. It's like they oh. demolished you, you you got an apartment building with a view of the city, but there's a huge metal <laughs> yeah. block that was in front of it. And all of a sudden that building was demolished. Hey, I have a rent yeah, apartment with a skyline view now. Yeah, the appreciation is crazy now. The re- real estate just went up by a ton on the F file. Knight D to C5 and then Every piece is maximized for black. A4, E4 is... hit. Knight on E6 covers G5, D4. Rooks are doing everything. And this is vintage Shikara. I mean, his pawn structure is almost always fully intact and healthy, no matter how shaky his position may seem. 
And yeah. honestly, that's this part of the secret sauce. It's just impossible to break his positions. Goodness, this position is so This bad. is just yeah, this is terrible. Night other knight coming to d4. Queen c2, then it's like Ooh. exactly knight d4, and there's also gonna knight be knight d3, knight c2. <laughs> so brutal. like an octopus. Well, how do you guard knight everything? C3. Knight has to come back. Everything now. back. <laughs> and then there's gonna be some, you know, queen h6, like sacrifice town. Oh, this is it's unplayable. Queen A1. That was a mouse slip. And it falls into five different forks. Oh god. <laughs> Take C4. Rook if this two, is an epic. It's GG. The Roman Empire just took a pretty significant beating right there. Anish loses. Ikara wins. 6-4. The score after the five-minute portion, Amon. Yeah. Frustrating, very frustrating for Anish because even at the end, he climbed back to tie it. Ikaro keeps his foot on the gas pedal, keeps the legs churning. And he jumps back out to a lead. Yep, it's uh, it's definitely exactly what Hikar wanted to do. It wasn't his best format in terms of the quality, but I think his resilience shone through. Um, from tough positions, he was still scoring points. And you score points from your bad positions, whether it's a win or a draw, and you take full points from your good positions, uh, you're just going to win every match if you do that, simply put. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Anish has his work cut out for him in the three-minute portion, but first, we're going to give the players a breather. We're going to take one ourselves. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coindewist. We will be back in just a few minutes.
want to play chess online or learn how to improve? Join us at the number one chess destination in the world, chess.com. With thousands of people playing at any moment, you'll quickly find a game with someone at your level, whether you're a beginner or a grandmaster. Chess.com makes learning fun and easy. Sharpen your tactics with puzzles and enhance your strategy with our lessons by top masters. Learn from your own games with our easy-to-use analysis tool. Chess.com has everything you need to take your game to the next level. Signing up is free and easy. Join Chess.com today. Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. And as we have a look at the Smarter Chess prediction, Aman, this is as close as Smarter Chess has ever come to predicting a, a segment perfectly. I mean, it's six four. The prediction was five and a half, three and a half. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's really, uh, really impressive. I, I always uh, hate to see when he's right. And geez, that I smarter know. chess guy. It's almost like he does this for. It's almost like it's calculated with statistics. It's almost like yeah, he's a statistician. <laughs> I mean, it's it's almost like he's doing some math there. Up by two. All right, he got lucky. It. Let's get over it. Yeah, three plus one. There's no way he calls this one correctly. Three plus one prediction is five, four. Now that to me is a really interesting prediction. Now Anish needs to flip that on its head. And at the very least, I think Anish needs to go into the bullet tied. That's mm -hmm. still, and he's still the heavy underdog in the bullet. What he can't do is let Hikaru add to this lead. Exactly. You know, you know, you're going to have your work cut out for you. I mean, no, no need to make your job harder than it already is. So right, we definitely do well. Three minute, but we've been mentioning that we expect things maybe to be magnified as we get into this segment. Um, for Geary, that can't be the, the case at all. He needs to actually shift and change some of the things that are currently happening in this match. He can't just play the same way he did in the five minute um, because it's going to be even harder to spot these tactics that might win the position for him with less time on the clock. Right, and we'll see if he manages to make that to make those changes and to adapt. Um, again, they're going into this Grunfeld-like setup with Vicaro's uh, double Fianchetto, and, mm -hmm. and he's just already taking too long. Yep, and a bit I mean, different, what, right? No, no knight on e7, pot on f6 this time. So actually, the center is a little more fragile than it was in the previous uh, edition of this opening. Right, and yeah, the last time we saw that crazy game with an exchange sacrifice yep. and uh, major time pressure for Anish. Okay, so he castles, Hikaru's going to castle. And really the question, yeah, the question is, can Black maintain his center or can White apply overwhelming pressure to the center and down the C file? Let's see what happens. These are the classic type of positions where you, you know that as White, you know, probably you don't have a better position, but it's just so easy to play. Play knight c3, you know, if you get attacked, you always have knight e4, knight a4, and you just go like rook c1, and make queen d2, rook d1, and moves are so easy to play. Yeah, no, d4 is a very classic idea in the Grunfeld. Now, first of all, this isn't even a sacrifice, because bishop takes a8, there's d takes c3. Oh, you know, actually, it is a sacrifice, because here, at the end of this line, uh, White is able to take d6, but the point is that the point is that Black just takes on a8. Yeah. And as any Grunfeld player knows, this is overwhelming for Black because of the light square weaknesses. Bishop h3 is coming. So yep. this is really, really bad. Okay. That's so important instead, line. Knight b5 by Hikaru, Bishop d5, trade, and e3 cutting into Black center, a6, and a positional pawn sacrifice. E takes d4, e4. Big fan. I, I like it for, uh, for Geary. I think this is a good way to play I think he can continue even extremely directly with something like f4 and mm -hmm. he's he's gonna go for that um, queen and H5 he does and, e8. and that's one of the, the the changes that i'm i think i'm already seeing him make just more aggressive more direct and uh i think that's gonna serve him out maybe queen d7 queen takes e4 though oh oh i just forgot about that one but maybe still f3 nah Right. It's a tough choice, I guess, between trading queens and giving up the e4 pawn. And queen e5 is such <laughs> it's exactly how I would lose the game as well. Like you, you right. play your e4, f5, f4, you feel great. Hikaru in like you know five <laughs> seconds finds queen h5, queen e5. 
and you're faced with the most intense decision well, of the game. Do you sack another yeah. pawn just to keep the queens on, or do you trade the queens somehow and basically you're a pawn down playing that position on? Yep, so Gary has indeed has indeed gone for the except he didn't blunder the pawn on e4 like me. Yeah, no, it's now, queen not a h3. Blunder, do you think Hikaru is gonna see queen h3? What's the over under on whether Hikaru sees queen h3? <laughs> the over under. I think it's uh, well, it'll 60, be a 60, two and a half. 30. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think it's 30 to 40% chance Hikaru misses queen h3. So there's king h1, rook g1. But I feel like whenever that happens, there's always these nasty tricks of like rookie eight, rookie one. Um, yeah, or queen h2 or the rook lifts. Exactly. So I, I would no. be probably expecting queen h4, but he wants to keep the pressure on the knight on d5 and the pawn on f3, I think. Don't worry, Hikaru will, he sees everything. So he'll see the defense. Now, one idea is to go like this and then to go back to f6. Nice. With the idea of queen takes f3 and h4. In fact, queen h4 can still be met with knight g4. Oh. <laughs> Although, in this position, there's rook c2, and somehow white's holding the fort. Anish That's king h8. <laughs> yeah, those are some interesting lines. King h8, more prophylaxis, as we know. Right. Yeah, I mean... Because Queen now is he so threatening the exact thing? So like put a random move on a h3, terrible. Yeah, um, so let me show that again. Queen h3. Right. Rook g1, knight f6. Right, and here with king h8, I was thinking you could even try rook e8, but knight, knight f6 is even better, your idea. Yeah, but again, you run into this problem where white goes rook c2, and black is no way no way to make progress. So yeah, anyways, imagine, rook g1 imagine, by Hikaru. Imagine sacrificing your whole queen against Hikaru soundly and being worse <laughs> right <laughs> great that was fun now wait a second knight g4 maybe and then rook c2 runs into some queen f5 stuff mm. of course uh, hikaru sees it all right of course he sees it everything rook d8 maybe intending knight takes f2 but these are all one move threats yeah rook h6 can also be met by rook h5 so i think you could play rook you, you could play h3 here Whoa, queen takes d4. That's just a huge pawn. That's a and blunder. Then there's like queen d1 stuff. Let's see. This queen takes f2 as well. Right. No, this is this is a disaster. I mean, rook That's a huge c2. Blunder. That is a huge blunder. Rook c2, queen d1 is is game. This this is the kind uh, of blunder that there's no sugar coating. There doesn't even seem to be a trick to get out of it. Like. And oh, instantly knight takes f2. Yeah. And queen he, takes f2. Beautiful. Yeah, that one prepared. Rook h, okay. Or resign, or queen takes c5. The, the, the rook was hanging on c5. It's just a full rook loose in the position. Wow. That um, was a uh, convincing, well, I can't say it was a convincing game, but I liked his play the whole time. Like he had a, an idea and he went for it. e4 pawn sacrifice. He's attacking. Hey, you're going to, it's going to pay dividends in chess if you're constantly the one attacking the enemy king. It's, you know, humans don't like playing defense, simply put. No. And on, on occasion, even he, even Nicaro blunders in those types of positions. Rare, and, which means he got to punish it when it does happen. Right. You have to use every one of those opportunities. So again, they're repeating this Italian opening. And I, w I wonder how the nature of these positions is going to change, given that it's a three-minute match, that it's a three-minute time control now. Who is it going to favor? Yeah, I mean, there's an easy answer to that question, but so far, from hey, what makes, yeah, yeah, it's like, can I <laughs> right. can I get a, a medal for that one? Um, right, no, that so was far like, that's amazing. not necessarily the case. Uh, Giri, obviously, off to a good start. It's not necessarily reflective of how the whole portion is going to go, but he's got to be happy. You know, he's down two out of the five minute with great positions. So to start the three minute with a win is, is huge for his confidence going forward. He won one game, therefore we're going to see adoption. <laughs> And Incoming. basically, he's already adopted him. <laughs> it's, it's forced. One-tenth of the way there. Okay, so he's preparing, I think, the move C4, trying to hit that uh, weak pawn on C6 by opening the C file. Mm -hmm. Hikaru cooking up various nasty ideas, like D5 at some point. He's probably not aiming to take on H2. On h3 that stuff but this doesn't... is why you play the move it's not to ever take on h3 it's so that your opponent every move from now to the end of the game is like man is he gonna right. take on h3 <laughs> it, 
especially like we discussed against Sikara, the, the these ideas are always magnified in your mind. Like everything mates. Yeah, exactly. So. Bishop H3 forced mate, of course. Oh, right, right. Resign. <laughs> yeah. He's been playing knight f5 in the past. That's been a regular move. But the thing is here, I'm not sure if it... Uh, it's going to strike his fancy, but that's usually what he's been going for in very similar positions. Mm -hmm. Could be one queen e8. The maneuvering stage is underway. I like knight of five. I think it's, uh, go for it again. Um, it I might pack agree. a punch with bishop takes h6, which may have been why we saw queen e8, because like bishop h6 move is never queen. as dangerous when you can play queen f8. Yeah, so we have bishop c4, bishop d3, a bishop trade, and there's d5. And I think this is a very good version for Hikaru. He somehow managed to arrange his pieces in a way where the rook x-rays the queen, the queen defends the pawn, and everything seems to be in perfect working order. Yep, and e takes d5, careful of e4. Um, so it's, you can even uh, slip up just trying to be trying to routinely capture things. Hikaru is shaking his head, but I think he, he waited until he had a satisfactory position in this game to start shaking his head about the previous game. Oh, I yeah. think that's a common that's a, <laughs> that's a common thing where you're frustrated, but first you want to make sure you got a good position, and then you can let your frustration out. Yeah, Although this is, uh, getting it to be a loose position now, and you move that bishop on e3, and suddenly the black queen is the one that feels the pressure of the rook. Yeah, and after f5, knight g3, the attack on the pawn comes from two different sources. So you right. can't shove e4 through because if knight takes f5. Queen f8. Ooh, c4 by an Ishan again. He, Hikaru's in trouble here once more. That was played with some authority as well. Ugh. Okay, so knight takes d4. He wants, well, knight. I don't know where that arrow came from. He wants knight e5. <laughs> That arrow came out of a rocket ship. <laughs> okay. Yeah, knight c5 knight seems c5? to make sense um, because you know, takes, you take with the rook, and then for c8, you could maybe grab a4, end up up upon the end of some lines there. Yeah, rook c8, queen a4, bishop c5, you have some sort of a mass trade, but at the end of the day, I think white's going to. Mm -hmm. snap off the pawn on h4 rook d6 by hikaru chasing the queen away but it doesn't go very far yeah i mean rook a d8 it's like a4 is hanging knight b7's in the position so i don't think the plan is to double rooks at all this is a really loose position um hikaru's position is very shaky here tactically i guess knight b7 knight c7 might save <laughs> yeah. material <Whoa>. <laughs> There's yeah, that's some monkey business. Speaking of monkey business, look at this position. This is crazy. But knight c7 just exists in it. And it's the only move, I think. Otherwise, you lose yeah. an exchange. Yeah, you just lost otherwise because you have to guard the knight on d5 with the rook. So unfortunately, uh, even if a move is really weird and you're, it's just like, oh, yeah, I know this is like not great for my opponent. Hey, if it's the only move, mm -hmm. they're going to find it, even if it's bad. I mean, Yukar is thinking about something because he's taken over 20 seconds and now he's going for knight c7, which I'm sure Anish saw. Probably just queen f5. And it's important to play fast here for white. And you don't want to get sucked into, you know, taking 30 seconds and getting into a time scramble. Is there like is exactly what rook, is rook happening. c7, bishop c7, knight d6. And then if bishop d6, you take on d3. If queen d6, rook e8 check. And then oh, take on a4 at the end. Exactly. The, but at the very end of that line, what if black plays 95? You could also go queen e4 here, centralize. Okay. Oh, you can take this one. Yeah. Sorry. So I guess I meant like if knight f8, queen a4. And oh, no knight f8, queen a4. And then right. if king h7, this makes way more sense. I, I agree. No, this is big time crisis for Hikaru. Watch out for bishop c3. That's, that's like a really nasty move coming up. Yeah, it is. And it, if you force a, a, a trade of queens here, okay, knight h4 is a really good practical attempt, but Anish has g3. Up to task. White is winning. White Queen is winning. D4, Very maybe. strong pawn on d3, and don't underestimate bishop f6, bishop b2. Right. That's coming. Uh-oh. 
E5? Queen E8, Queen, Queen E8, Queen takes A4 is in White's pocket. That's true. I think B5 needs to be calculated. That's what, probably what he's doing. Okay. Is he going to take the pawn? Puts your queen so offside. In G2. He's going to wait for bishop B2. But I feel like... He hasn't he's, done it he in the best way. <laughs> no, no. Not even... <laughs> he might, might have done it in the worst way. I mean, he has a draw if he wants it. I don't think white is really risking here. Right. Queen G4. All that much. Everything is sort of anchored, but queen b3, I mean, again, Anisha's really struggling in these time scrambles, and he might even lose this. It's definitely possible. I mean, b5. Queen c8, queen, queen f5, he has to make it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a reasonable decision, um, right. honestly. <laughs> it's, it looks bad, but... Honestly? Yeah, that was the one. Not bad. I'll, I think we can work with that. Be, right, <laughs> you can roll that. Okay, that, that's a frustrating game. For Anish, another very promising endgame, probably winning. He pulls a draw out of it, but the one-point lead remains in a C3 Sicilian. Yeah, I think uh, I think that Anish is is really like it seems to take him a while to warm up to some of these time controls, like the beginning of the five-minute portion. Hey, great positions, but very poor execution or conversion. And you sort of see that, you know, at the start, but let's let's take a step back bottom line is he's getting a good position like what 75 percent of the time against the yeah. car so he, he can't complain um if he starts converting he's got every chance yeah he can't complain and he's, he's he's putting himself out there he's giving himself a chance and that's all that's all that you can that you can ask for uh but here he seems to be the car seems to be more comfortable in this lot weird line where white is a pawn on d6 that pawn's going to be captured eventually by by what is not clear and he's trying because... to make it difficult like uh, it looks crazy to give up the light squared bishop with bishop takes c6 but he's saying that the queen on d4 means no bishop takes d6 because of g7 and then if you can't develop that bishop you can't castle that quickly and you just sort of you know put the question to to black you want a long castle queen takes a7 it's like queen on d4 is so annoying wow he does it he blundered the pawn i'm pretty sure yeah clearly think... by the reaction yeah but that's that's he just Caro's whole game plan is just these sneaky like blitz ideas giving up the bishop leave the queen on d4 he probably had this position before he knows how annoying it is right he probably and he probably had it against like, seven different gms <laughs> his yeah. chess career and yeah he got trading on record. c5 he he, he wasn't it, it, there was queen a8 check which could have been considered but instead he he goes for the end game which he's very confident he can win up upon and let's see Win a pawn. I mean, how are you going to complain about a queen trade the very next move? <laughs> right now, I mean, optically speaking, black has the two bishops and they're well placed. But if you look at the long run here, white's going to get the knight to e4, and the other knight might come to e5. So, I think the the initiative is going to get neutralized. And the f6 knight d3 is Ooh. lurking. Still, if f6, e5 happens, I maintain my optimism. Then this is like knight f4 into d3 stuff, and the light square bishop will be quite powerful. Right. Okay, so knight f3 preemptively stopping f6, because then the pawn's going to hang. Knight f4, Gary chiseling his way into d3. Knight e4 Let's looks, I mean, looks like the move that comes naturally that's why we played knight d2 but you know f6 right. bishop c6 after knight d3 Oops. of course and i meant to play this move first yeah bishop c6 yeah this is uh this this is annoying so hikaru goes knight d4 which seems to be more of a bailout move and if black takes twice then i guess his point is that he goes knight f3 this is a little bit nasty because the rook keeps getting tossed around the fourth rank yeah <laughs> that is just not a not the move. <laughs> no. Uh, now taking it, here is a lot better. But the funny thing is, if you take on c1 and go bishop d4, it's a check. <laughs> like All right. Nowhere. Oh, I'm gonna take it twice, and yeah. I'm gonna be good. Oh wait, it's not letting <laughs> me move. Yeah, huge bug. <laughs> There's some weird move night before also. I don't know. Ah, interesting. 
Okay, so he did not miss the check. I, I think it's more that he just wants to play two bishops against two knights, where yes, the evaluation might be worse for, for black, but he's kind of all in on this compensation working. Yeah, I mean, but if you could get f65 in, if you could push the knights off of their active positions, I would get behind this. As it stands, I don't know. He's I'm making not... an effort. If white ever he plays 95, then there's f6, right? So like 95 is not always an option, plus it blunders at d4 pawn. And h5, right. g4 is the intention. All right, back to c2. Barrow trying to re retool his knights here, find proper spots for them. G4 yeah, I don't mind g4 meant. here. Knight d4, e4. Well, that was the idea. The other knight comes to d4. Uh, e5, maybe knight e3. Uh-huh, counterattacking and, the other rook. Yeah, that, that starts to look good because you get the f5 square. I mean, again, Icaro's up on time by an entire minute. So I'm just not seeing this happen for black. The nice thing for Giri is that Nakamura's three pawns against one, it's actually fairly immobile. Like the three pawns are kind of held at bay by this one hero pawn on b5, stopping a4, c4. So I, th right. I think Giri is still uh, in here with a shout, but it's more about the time situation. Yeah, this is the best place you could possibly come up with with your pawn. Maybe rook eight to h5. Okay, so he takes it. Bishop b8, rook g5. It's just so hard to maintain this position because of yeah. how many things are hanging. There's all pawns all over the place. And time is ticking. Knight takes b5. He probably yeah. wants g3. But he can just return to d4, unfortunately. Such a sturdy square. Ah, so maybe maybe knight takes b5, f6. That's probably what Ikaro is calculating right now. Knight ah, d6 right. check, and then rook takes e6. Right. You feel like the tactics should work out here for white um, just based on how the game has gone but you obviously have to spend your time calculating something like that because you could throw the advantage away right and it's it, when you're going for a forcing line in your opponent's time pressure that's particularly dangerous can you six though yeah this is e5 might be a threat no, so wait a wrong? second yeah rook b4 e5 uh... <laughs> yeah white loses a piece so rook has to go along the fifth rank probably you have to go like rook g5 for rook. But now it takes d4. Yeah, and then what, h3 at the end? Then yeah, G3. rook takes d4, and then depending on how white makes luft, well, black pushes it down. So like g3, h3, h3, g3. Exactly. So that's kind of why I wanted rook g5 to play h3, so it wasn't g3, but yeah, he's he's done it in a good way, and white wins these like all F5? the time. F5? <laughs> yeah, he has. The king is so far away. Looked like Anish had some sort of salvation there, but I wasn't sure what it was. Just don't play king e4 if you're Hikaru. The pawn is way too quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's... Ain't gonna happen. King g5. Maybe oh, king, king g5. G3, king... king h2? F3. F3. Same business. Down and on game time. is over. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really nice job by... Caro, I think that game, that win, came from the opening, really. Like, I thought Hikaru's opening was great, like, super good for Blitz. He left the queen on d4. Anish couldn't castle kingside easily, couldn't develop his bishop, couldn't castle queenside. Well, he did in the game, but he couldn't because he was losing a pawn. Hikaru took that thing and basically just converted all from that. So credit to the Yeah, and that, that, that's a vintage Hikaru and just, you know, he grinded that one out. You know, he, he, he played the practical opening, like you said, and even though it seemed like Geary had individual chances throughout the game, just the moves that Carl was making was causing him to think. Yep. It was never really in doubt, and, and that's what we often see. Okay, so a Karokan, little change of opening. Hikaru from... Yeah, he's a Hikaru Khan. <laughs> Now, this looks like a pretty pleasant position. Sometimes in these lines, Black just goes long castle and mate. G4, H5, H4. Yeah, I feel like it, it, it's one of those attacks that, you know, when you do it, it never works. And when it happens to you, it's mm -hmm. always mate. <laughs> yeah, I hate those double-sided positions where I, I'm bad at both sides. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll take black. No, and then I'll take white. <laughs> all right, I'll take black again. B6. Okay. R risky move. 
Knight d3 looks like very normal. I guess knight a6 should be considered as well just because it comes with tempo, but and then follow it up with b5. Right. I don't like it though. Yeah, knight a6, one of those moves that the engine is always going to be better at justifying than, than the human. Than a human. Well, that means. Okay, what about knight knight e5? Just pounce and bishop right. h5 ideas in the mm -hmm. air. I don't know what you make of that, but oh, knight e5 threatens knight takes c6 also. I like knight e5. So, okay, goes for it. And the problem is, I don't think you can avoid taking it. Yeah, and he, he goes for this. And the king's going to be going on a journey. But it's it's a solid center, and remember, Bishop H five. Don't forget about your knight on A six. Right, that, that's gonna be hanging. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, he wants to play F three and actually trap Black's knight. So that there's a twist. White's knight is safer than Black's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Center of the board versus sideline on A six. And I think a G four might have been overlooked by Anish. It just, these like small moves, right? Oh, this move defends against the threat of F3. Well, we take those for granted, but they're uh -huh. not easy to find in Blitz. And Hikaru always finds them. So what about B5, I assume C5, and then maybe C4 for white to try to pick uh -huh. away at the, at the center? Yeah, you're trying to loosen up this knight, right. get me to play D4, yeah, and safeguarding your knight at the same time. But a big think being taken here by Geary who is struggling to find a move and goes for e5. Wait, the first of all, one. black has b5. This is just wins a pawn in a that great way. That was a way. terrible move. Yeah, it was really bad. That was a terrible move. And Geary collapses. Like, that, that is what often happens against Ikaru. He gets into a tense position and he just outcalculates you, ruthlessly exploits a blunder, and that's it. You can say your prayers. Yep, because he's developing black's bishop. The uh, pawn structure couldn't be better for black. Like and he P lost a pawn. P5, C6, E5, <laughs> right. and as you mentioned, a pawn to the good. So you can long castle here as Hikaru, and of course he Absolutely. will. Absolutely. This is like the, the safest <laughs> king in history. <laughs> dream. Dream position. Ooh, A6, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A6 and <laughs> black's king regrets the decision entirely. Well, it's like in the old days, they used to announce mates. I don't know if people in the chat know, know that. You know, like, and here Steinitz against Bart 11 announced a maiden 15 or whatever. <laughs> yes. I just wonder what happens if they're wrong, but <laughs> yeah, A6 like... and Anish Giri announced maiden 10. Trust but verify, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> let me see it right. demonstrated, good sir. Of course, of course. Uh, are you doubting my abilities? <laughs> yeah, there's Do we like need to take no this greater, outside? No greater insult than, you know, <laughs> disputing a, an announcement. Are you dishonoring me? Shall we enter into a duel? <laughs> exactly. Some fisticuffs. Right. Okay. So meanwhile, Anish has made some progress in terms of probably developing some counterplay down the C file, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah. I feel like that <laughs> checkmate we were announcing is, uh, is actually going to come true or something. <laughs> that would be crazy. Should you want stopping the pawn? G3 looks tempting here for black. I actually like the move. Bishop D1, because you always have the idea of A A4 with the bishop and then Rook C1, um, plus B3, B2 with the bishop covering B1 is a disaster to allow. Right. And actually, the threat is H3. I think if, if Anish plays Bishop A4, Hikaru might go H3 and just blast through because he's going to have HG and Bishop H3 check. I'm yeah. calling it. I think he goes H3. He does. He does. He's got 58 seconds. I mean, rook c1 is a threat, but there are positions after h3 where you absolutely sack your queen and still checkmate. <laughs> Nasty. That's right. a nice shot. No, this is over. This is simply over. And the, the point is that fg, hg, king g2, bishop h3, goodbye. And, and here's the kicker. The kicker is that after oh, you lose yeah. the exchange, <laughs> okay, that's not enough. You're already lost. Whoop. Queen takes a six and you also lose the bishop. Man. Yeah, like the move bishop a4 set white's position up for like the perfect it, disaster. It, all of the people put all of the pieces on like the worst spots. H takes g3 is a sad necessity to avoid that, but probably, yeah, I mean, I bishop would play bishop, bishop a, h3, yeah. take <laughs> okay. it, and 
take a six rook h1 oh, is rook h1 rook h1 oh. mate oh my god yeah and that's seriously because of bishop a4 it, it was the worst move absolute devastation and this one's going to be aborted because the players are going to get a breather hikaru has opened up a three-point lead things are looking pretty alarming for anisha aman he, yep. he needs to do something now before the bullies got 30 minutes left we're going to take a quick breather yep. you're watching the speed chess championship presented by coinbase we'll be back in just a few minutes with the second half of the three minute portion
How many brilliant moves have you played? When do you play your best chess? How many games have you won by castling in the end game? How many opponents have you played from New Zealand? And most importantly of all, how many Botez gambits has Alexandra Botez played? Find the answers to all of these questions and many, many more at chess.com slash insights. Our new tool that lets you dive deep into all of the fun and instructive data behind your chess. Try it today. Championship Chess is just getting started this December. Don't miss the full coverage of the World Rapid and Blitz Championship from Kazakhstan coming your way December 26th through the 30th right here on chess.com. What a way to finish this year. GM Yun Ludwig Hammer will be bringing you the fast-paced action as Magnus Carlsen, fresh from the World Championship, tries to defend his 2019 title. Amon, everybody loves the World Rapid and Blitz. And... Yep. The only tournament, if I dare I say, that people love more than that is, of course, the SCC. Yeah, as we I watch mean, Shikaru. If we're ranking them, it's like clear. If, if we're... SCC, you know, what's that thing? World, cha world champion something. I world mean, maybe that's something. like a number two. World rapid. And it's up there. But SCC, yeah, guys, I mean, come it's on. It's not even close. Easy. It's really not close. Yeah. I mean, in any case, Shikaru Nakamura has opened up a three-point lead. Anish, he's got 30 minutes in the three-minute portion. You know, he has to make stuff happen. He won that first game, and I think that filled him with some confidence. But you got to beat Hikaru on so many levels, I think, in order to defeat him in a match. It, yeah. It's not even funny. Yeah. And one game here and there is nothing to write home about. You need a sustained series of brilliant games. And I think that's the issue is that, like, if, I would, you know, God forbid I get a win against Hikaru, it actually is something <laughs> to write home about. So you start getting pretty excited because you win a game, but then it's like, wait a minute, dude, he's just going to win the next like five games right, in a row. Right, he's going to win the next eight games. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's like those, he's going to grow, you know, more heads every time. Very scary. Yeah, it's a, you have to, whatever performance you produce to get a win against Hikaru, you have to do that every game. And the right. consistency to be able to do that is something that, you know, Hikaru has and that not many people are close to. No. And it, very important for Anish here not to collapse. You know, it's a three-point lead. Hikaru himself, uh, he had something similar against Svidler, I think, where, you know, the match was tied. Svidler was even leading by a point at some point. Then toward the end of the three-minute portion, Hikaru just always keeps his foot on the gas pedal. He's so consistent. He almost never plays truly bad games. And you can count blunders that he makes throughout the match on one hand. Uh, if that so that's all there is to say now gary with a pretty decent position at the opening this looks pretty equal but look at the time situation yeah that's not equal and we have to remember that you know if naka is getting a lead um in the opening on time it's it's only going to compound later like you're just doing yourself no favors i would expect gary right. to be the one that maybe takes the lead early uh on time but you know, he gear, but any again, Kettos. <laughs> it's like what Bishop a6 was really bad. Queen a4 walks right into queen a4. Now all of a sudden black is in trouble. Bishop a6 is very strange. A weird move. move. Doesn't threaten anything. And it yeah, puts let's... the bishop right into the line of fire of the queen. I mean, <laughs> let's I say just that you don't give them it. two moves, right? Bishop a6, it's like, okay, move again. Still not good. Right. <laughs> Still no threats, and now bishop c8. Ugh. Yeah, luring the queen to a4 for bishop d7. So that bishop d7 could come with <laughs> tempo so that later the bishop could remaneuver back to b7 right. via c6. And down a minute and also wasting time with bishop a6 c8, you're doing yourself no favors. Hikaru off to a, a commanding start in this game uh, right after we came back from the break. Uh, I, I think Hikaru might repeat moves. What do you think? Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, man. Surprising. <laughs> I came so close. Uh, it's offering a draw. It was funny. I, I was trying to convince uh, uh, the subject of, you know, pretending that you were close to making a draw. I, I had an old student, of, not a student, but uh, somebody who went to my local chess club. Uh, he was a kid and we were arguing. He said that when you're losing, all you have to do is give up all of your pieces uh, and lose on time. And the game will be declared drawn due to insufficient material. 
<laughs> I think this is actually a common mistake. And I was trying to explain that it, it's, it it's not your opponent's insufficient material, but you or your opponent has to have insufficient material to mate, not you <laughs> to, yes. want to win. <laughs> Anyways. There are Speaking a lot of, of players that could uh, claim some regular draws by insufficient right. material, if that were the case. No, that's a completely certified true story. Certified true story. Daniel's telling it. I gotta be careful. Right, it's always, everything I say is always true, so. Rook C7, yeah. Uh -oh. And say hello to a worse position for the rest of the game. <laughs> Welcome to the end game gulag here after Rook takes A7. I mean, he's just yeah. gonna have pain. an ape on 30 seconds to two minutes. I don't want any sight of this. <laughs> this is no. nasty. Yeah. You're gonna burn a lot of time and lose. So, you know, enjoy. Right. So, have yeah, fun. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, obviously, he's got a task ahead, tongue in cheek uh, a little bit there, that this is just losing. Um, Giri can definitely defend this position. But not only is it a tough task, but you just feel like white never risks losing as well. So, you have to be so accurate. And what's your grand prize for playing the best game of your life here as black? Uh, half a point. <laughs> a draw. That's right. Now, I would say that in a, in a classical game, actually after G5, maybe Black just makes a draw by force here, Bishop E1. Hikaru hasn't really gotten off the ground here in terms of pushing his A pawn. I, I think Rook B2 might be the most accurate. Yeah, and that Bishop C4 move is that annoying type of move where you want your Rook on A2 to cover the A pawn to stop this exact move. But you also... Bishop takes C6. Bishop C6, you missed it. Bishop e1, you take on f7 and king g2. Right. Boom, e1, boom, sorry. boom. Oh, my. Anisha's just falling right into it. Yeah, it's it's definitely rook, C, rook takes f2 he wants. I mean, even bishop d7 is probably winning. I never know how to evaluate those positions. I think it is winning, though. Uh, White doesn't yeah. have to go for it. I, I'm sure White has some alternative, although I'm not sure what it is. I, th I think you might have to go for it, actually. This will be really instructive, actually. Rick B6. So he's going to repeat. Oh, Rick F4. That's the alternative. That's a real cold shower. Oh. Oh. Man. Oh, <laughs> nasty. That is just. You lose every pawn. Oh, that are all passed, and then winning the fourth one, that is enough pawns, even in an opposite colored Bishop End game. Oof, Four point this lead. is uh, approaching the, the point, if not we're already in full throttle, where it's the Hikaru show, and he, he starts to... Uh, the, the lead, he's like, you you basically blink, and you know it's gone up by two points or something. Right. And it was 4-4, four, four, I think. Yes. And, yeah, 4-4. Four, four. And then it was 5-6, and then that, that's when the train took off. And the, the three-minute portion, man, it, it's just brutal. And another Karokan. It started this time, out well. Yep. Another Hikarokan. Now, C4 in these types of positions is pretty common. B4. That's what Anish did in the first Karokan game, I think. Yeah, I mean, he really can't complain about the, the openings that, that he's getting. Yeah, that's the one, the one area part of the game that has really gone, gone in Geary's favor. But he doesn't care if he's slightly worse out of the opening, no. even with white. As long as he just gets a position, he's fine. It's true. And it should be pointed out that this is just Karo Nakamura showing a certain style that he can play because he can play better openings than this. I mean, he's a yeah. very, very good chess player. It's not like he's just incapable of keeping up with Anish's theory or stuff in the opening, but he'll take a position because he's probably played it hundreds, thousands of times in Blitz. He knows it works out for him the majority of the time, even if the eval is maybe slightly worse. Yeah, I mean, he's a, a walking demonstration of the fact that you absolutely can have your a Blitz repertoire that could be related to your classical repertoire. But it, it, in Blitz, the most important thing is your comfort level. If you're familiar with the position and the ideas, so much more important than the objective evaluation. In a classical game, because there's a lot of time to refute stuff, objective evaluation becomes really important as well. Yep. 
Okay, so already I feel like Anish is not really getting off the ground on the queen side. No. Dikaro is in the sky at 30,000 feet. And we have you your know. pawns. Look at these guys. We need a name for that. What's, we need to translate. Oh, yeah, the, the, the row. I, I translated it as like row pawns. And the pawns are, I guess, because the pawns are in a row. Yeah, but the pawns that like a6, b6, b6, a6. <laughs> yeah, you're always ready to play the, the inverse pawn move just to keep the position closed. Of course, Nakamura doesn't want to play pawn takes here and open up the a file. He's just going to play a6 as he does. It's actually, this is one of the most annoying pawn formations ever. Probably the most annoying because you literally can never do anything with white. The only way you can break through this is to somehow sacrifice on a6, which is totally unfeasible here. Yep. And this is going Hikaru's way once again. It is. There are some end games that white can look forward to, I think. But when you're in the face of, you know, g4, h5 pawns, uh, rooks on h8, g8, that you're not really thinking about the end game, unfortunately. <laughs> Right now, <laughs> bad news for Geary. Move this queen, queen a three. Yeah, queen a three. But I mean, even queen takes a three. Is yeah, e even the end game is very depressing. I mean, bishop d three. Now h four. Here come the pawns. And I wish attacking was this easy. Just g five h five g four h four. So do you keep the queens here or do you take? Because I think Black's I position think you is take. Gonna, yeah, it's going to stay at an advantage even after capturing. Yeah, you don't lose any of the virtues of the position just because you traded queens. In fact, in in some ways you even accentuate the the the, the reality for white. Maybe Anish can hold this, but it's more time off the clock. So when you're pushing and... the pawns on the king side for Black, are you looking more at H three or G three? That's a or good question. I'm usually inclined for G3. Mm -hmm. Just I'm, I have a bias, a G3 bias, because I always feel H3, G3, especially here, is going to leave your G4 pawn frozen in place. But for now, Hikaru is delaying it and making all sorts of improving moves before he decides on anything. Yeah, there's always King D6 and like an E5 is going to eventually be oh, yeah. good for Black. So he doesn't need to rush here. And I, I think he knows that. For sure. And okay. The, oh, of course, he waited for me to say. Well, yeah, I asked here specifically, you, of course. Yeah, I walked you into that. Right, you did. <laughs> you, you walked me right into the, you backed me right up against the wall. Now, 94 <laughs> is coming, and I think here specifically. Yeah, check this guy out. <laughs> what does he know? I mean, look at it. Obviously, H3 for black. Clear, clear right. <laughs> I mean, who would ever say that they prefer G3? <laughs> right. I mean, well. Rook c8. Uh, That's a, oh, I see what he's trying to do. He's, logical, he's, logical. Yeah, he's trying to avoid the tricks from white. He's not falling into anything. Those tricks never work against Sicaro, ever. Not no. a single time, not once. Because he it, does them. Just, he's the guy that does them. So when, when he right. sees you preparing it, like, can you imagine what he's thinking? He's like, oh, that's that's cute. Like, look at you. <laughs> right. This is what I used to do when I was 13 years old and just started playing like that. Okay, Rook F3 might be coming as well, just clamping down further on White's position. And he might he might even like put the Rook on F6 and just go King C6, King B5, and King right, A4, King, you know. Venture out into the wilderness. Rook if F3, white, there yeah, it is. I'm, if I'm Black, sorry, I would go King C6 just to see how you react to that move. It's just like, do you get scared? And like, are you worried about King B5 or not? Or do you try to checkmate? Black, no, I, he's doing it. King b5, yeah. and you can always come back to c6. It's some, exactly. sort of like uh, bungee jumping. It just looks dangerous, but uh -huh. you're you can always come back to c6. Like king b5, rook b2, check. It's you don't want to take on a5, but yeah, you just yeah, see what's happening. Knight e4, rook f3 again. Icar somehow gets. I feel like his pieces fly from one side of the board to the other, and like the millisecond, but he hasn't broken through yet kudos to anish defending very well here so far but now i think you use this rook on f8 that's no longer needed there and you must be looking to play e5 e5 yeah. Yeah. plus i just jinxed him so it's only a matter of time before the blunder comes rook g takes and maybe rook is e4? it sack the exchange well white is totally paralyzed hey if uh maybe you give up both rooks here for white insufficient material draw 
<laughs> right. <It's, laughs> or stalemate. I didn't know which way you were going with that. You well, can yeah, try that, for that a that stalemate idea. It's a way to have the story that you told come true in a funny way because of stalemate. Right. It's like, look, I did it. I gave up all, all, away all my pieces, insufficient material. Or, or a Sikar is a stalemate. <laughs> okay, so that. bring the king to the other side of the board. What's going king on? King C five. King He's five. just got to play D four. He's wasting time. I feel like on purpose, like in a good way. But D four C takes D four. Oh, and the point is, oh, what is the point? Well, I thought Rook D three. Yeah, there you go. Or Rook D three. Okay. Now. Now, now so for example, is... Rook C one D four. Rook takes you know takes takes Rook takes C four, and he's trying to give away everything. Oh, there it is, renegade rook time. But the pro here's what, what black is gonna do. Oh no, it's you're not gonna, gonna get. Work. I'm. I think I'm a specialist in defending against. It's just king d6, and it's over already. It's over. It, it's over before it began. Yeah. Because rook c6, you take with a pawn, and rook d4, you take with a knight, and in either case, white has another move. Yeah. Yeah. He tried, but Hikaru basically, you know, in two moves, played instantly. Just took your idea and said, "Yeah, that's not gonna work around here." nope <laughs> no 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 it, and it rarely works in this kind of situation where the king has so much board space because you can walk to the right corner and block with the right piece so right. another win and again blink five point blink two point lead blink five point lead yep and we haven't even gotten to the bullet yet yeah like you know those sometimes they're horror movies but let's just say the concept of like in film where you have the the, the the linking and then when the eyes open it's like the thing's closer and closer to uh to you and oh it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know these like horror movies looking down a hallway that's pretty much what it's like playing hikaru nakamura right yeah th th this reminds me of one particular movie but i <laughs> i won't talk about it it's creepy <laughs> it has to do with somebody like snapping photos and the object getting closer and closer every time you, you look at the photo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like Hikaru Nakamura's lead. <laughs> I could see a meme being made out of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, there's a, it's a good template. We've, we've, I mean, we, we're doing the Lord's work here. We're really giving people you know, the material. We're, we really are. Um, Eight. You could even just go bishop h3. Yeah, shutter, or... by the way. Okay, so Hikaru is fine sort of bailing this game out, taking some more time off the clock. Yeah, pretty much a dream situation. You're not going to lose, and you're going to waste five minutes. <laughs> yeah, rook takes b2, rook c2. Draw. I think when somebody's going to offer a draw. I would even consider decline. I mean, if Yukara really wants to exercise some gamesman gamesmanship, I mean, you can decline the draw and milk milk another but it's three, like four if minutes you're, off the if clock. If you're Geary and you're thinking like, man, this is not going well, you know, what do I have to look forward to? It's the bullet. It's sort of like some, you know, gladiator fight in the arena where it's like, okay, if you guys last, uh, you know, if you last five minutes against this particular gladiator, we'll introduce weapons after that and you'll have a better right. chance and then the weapon is like you get like a stick and the other guy gets like a sword and it's like okay this isn't right. really a, this is my weapon my yeah <laughs> bullet is not friendly to look forward to as your one uh, chance to win against Hikaru. no no yeah you basically need as we discussed at the beginning you need a probably two or three point lead to have any yes. kind of shot in the bullet and, and Hikaru has done better than that. He's got a five-point lead. So right. I, think, I think he'll be fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> I see what you did there. Okay, so another Karokan. And somehow it, I feel like Hikaru has just been so much more comfortable in these positions mm -hmm. with, the, with the typical ideas of going C5 on the one hand and F6 on the other. Where's C4? You're calling for this idea. I think it needs to be tried. There it is. There like, it is. B4, C4... For black, that's it closes the position. He excels there. Yeah, no, c4 definitely is the way to punish this. And now I mean knight takes c4 is definitely possible. But then I guess knight d5 or knight c6, yeah. Mm -hmm. And bishop c3, maybe. Right. Yeah, nothing, nothing looks that impressive 
these types there, of positions. Is there like DC5 and B4? Trying to be like quite direct. There probably is. Rook C1 by Gary. Wow, still castling one. Gar doesn't care about the C file getting opened. I mean, yeah, it's one of these things about... where you deal with the C file for like one move and then you play King B8 and it's like, okay, so what? Right. Who deals with those kinds of trifles? Yeah, there you go. All right, end of story. B8? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. What's, what was the big deal? <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> C file, Shmi file. <laughs> Very temporary. Knight D6. And I think what Anish is trying to do here is take on c5 at the end of the line, claim that he has the two bishops and the queen side pawn majority. Hikaru's going to do that, though. He doesn't like his position with the queens on the board and those bishops. So yep. you're gonna, basically, you get your wish as Giri, but then you're here. It's like, OK, you still got to win this position. Are you that happy? White's better, no doubt. But Hikaru's got squares yeah. for his knights, and he's playing very quick. Yeah, and defeating Hikaru in one of these end games is just extremely difficult. It doesn't matter how big your advantage is objectively. Black doesn't really have any targets. F6, E5 is coming, and I would already take Black here. Yeah, E5 is a massive move, and if you ever trade light squared bishops, uh, guess what? You know, your car's going to win. <laughs> right. And he might win anyway, but Knight F4, yeah, Bishop is... D3, and he might even force a, a trade of light That's squared exactly. Yeah, he's going to go Bishop F1, Bishop D3, and guess what? You know, he... He gets exactly what he wants. Bishop d3 can still be played, but you also have knight takes e2, so there's no way that Hikaru's not you know, super Not playing happy. this and winning yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is tough. Oh, because rook c3, there's, yeah, there's knight takes f2, and after the, god, after the trade, rook comes into d2 and wins all of white's pawns. But now yeah. this pawn falls. Okay, he just comes back to d5. We had an Yep. Type of good knight versus bad bishop where Geary had the knight in eternity ago, back when the match was still Rookie within <laughs> reasonable bounds. <laughs> there we go. Cute Rookie move. H7. Taking Amon's advice, big mistake. Oh, yeah, he's he's in tough now. <laughs> right, that's it. Hikaru's going to well, lose the match you, now. <laughs> once you do one of my moves, I mean, it's it's a pitfall from there. Well, where, there, where there's smoke, there's fire, so... Uh, I don't know. He didn't play uh, Rook B7 there, which is like, remarkable to me, but I think it's because he wanted to get H5 and make sure that pawn wasn't stuck on H6 uh, in, in some future lines. Yeah, but I agree with you. I think the thing with that Rook trade was that Black's King, I think, could have potentially gotten to B5. I don't know. I mean, yeah. everything is good in this type of position. Yep. And he, he's just milking his advantage for now. I think it's time for H4. I agree, and then knight f4 potentially. Look at allowing g takes h5, but then the rook comes back to h7. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, go ahead. You're going to enjoy that extra pawn for yeah, just yeah, about, you know, one move. <laughs> just knock yourself out. <laughs> okay, but now h4 is so strong. h3 I, is a move you actually probably don't uh, want in the position because knight f4, your bishop has to, what, stay on e3 or h2 the whole game? This is, oh, this is so bad. Rook d5 and Thatch, just b4, I guess. Yep, b4, but a now... a5, you, a3. a5, a3, and then here comes the king. Yep, the king through the red carpet. Okay, the one thing black needs to avoid, I, I guess in the event of a rook trade, white's king may quickly access f5, so Anish doing everything he can. Mm -hmm. to hold this one together a5 yep this is really strong i mean a3 i would imagine take white's bishop on h2 and put it on e3 completely different game um, mm -hmm. the problem is that we can't guard the f4 square without you know unguarding it for one single move and that's going to cost you if we could play bishop g1 and then bishop to e3 i think white's actually really doing okay yeah, but this is these are just takeout games. I mean, there's just no hope Nothing. from the start. Rook a7, last ditch attempt to activate the rook, yep. snap off the pawn on f6, but Hikaru with an not? hour to think about it. That's a nasty little move. It stops rook f7. So Anish says, All right, I'm gonna go rook g7. Hikaru definitely missed that. But also it gives you time for bishop g1 to e3. Right. 
like your, ADA is you know you're too fancy for your own good yeah you've been lobbying for that maneuver we're back to c3 but 96 knight of horse coming in and mm -hmm. i still think this is a disaster probably king e3 was a mistake but i think i think so yeah it should be three needed but bad end game ahead it's going to be a flag and another win for hikaru and now he's he gets on one of these streaks like you said just four five six in a row easy yep. and that's and the, yeah the games feel competitive that's the worst part when you're in the game you're like man i was so like just that one move just that one tactic so individually some of these games might feel close but when hikaru's getting the better side of every close position guess what that's a you know that's a six point lead that's, that's what it looks like that's what it feels like and right. this is uh caro just crushing at the moment yeah and i mean look i mean anish yeah he's now he's getting worse positions out of the opening as well and, and that's compounding the problem mm -hmm. when he was getting better positions out of the opening that's when it felt like to me that, that he was so close you know there was one little resource one little tactic now it's starting to take on the appearance of a one-sided match, but that's through no fault of Anish Giri. I mean, he's doing his very best. Yep, yep. And uh, I think what we called kind of ended up happening, which is that things got magnified a little bit, is that you know it's pretty much the same story, but with less time right. on the clock, it's just always favoring um, Hikaru. because He's already completely winning happening. out of the opening, actually. Oh, I mean, this is what I'm talking five. about. Somehow, look at this. BD5 is just an immediate win, basically. What? Uh, CD5. Oh, or, CD5, yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, E4 is hanging. And if you take D3, you take C6. It's like terrible. Knight on H7 is. <laughs> that is so one bad. sad knight. You got to go D4. So <laughs> that is a shocking choice, but it's still. Obviously, very good. I think what he what he wants is to go maybe rook b1 and then c5 and b5, go for some sort of an attack. Bishop h3 to stop 96. He must have been concerned about something, or he saw this idea of bishop h3 and he's like, you know, <laughs> neither of your knights are going to play chess the rest of the game. Well, the thing is, uh, I mean, a bishop sack on g5 is not out of the question as a way to, yeah, and that, therefore Hikaru goes f4. He takes f3. He might even take with a knight, allowing queen g3 because if the bishop drops back to g2. Okay, no. He's not going to do that. <laughs> it's not going to be that ruthless. Wrong again. <laughs> yeah, you can't even get that one right. Right. Knight, okay. The eval bar is a fan of what Anish is doing. I don't fully understand it. I think it's not a direct, like, hey, this is good because of this. I think it's just... right. It's the just... knights actually could not participate from f8 and h7, so this is better than being down two pieces. Yeah, but it's still very tough to pay. You know, I would take the knight on f3 and then try to get the other knight to f6 and e4. Or um, the problem is, Hikaru might, yeah, Hikaru had e4 and bishop f4 as an idea. Mm -hmm. Just show that really fast. e4? This e is, takes uh, e4. I like this, though. Pawn on g4 is going to be quite strong. Knight g5 to h3. Okay. Yeah. I can live with this. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff by Anish. Just keeping his head in the game, sacking on g5. Let's see if he can score a much-needed win here. Kind of this sneaky is... move. Pawn to g6 is going to be looming in the position. Knight f3. Icaro might sack on f3, but on the other hand, probably there's nothing directly wrong with king h1. I agree, but it's it's uh, you get the feeling though if you don't sack now, g6, rook f8, and are you going to be able to ever sack? Right, the, the opportunity train on that one might have might pass shortly, and yeah, Hikaru seizes it, and queen g5 doesn't even take the pawn on f3, prioritizes activity instead. Amazing, yeah, he wanted to do bishop g3, but he wants to do it with the queen on the other side of the bishop, so it can be used actively. It's still risky for white. I mean, anytime there's a pawn on f3 like that, that's just dangling there. Rook h6, maybe? Yep. But white's going to do this weird, like, position, I think, with a like, king on h1, bishop on f2, and everything's kind of covered. But bishop g3. F2 Don't forget about king. back rank, right? Yeah. That rook on f8 is tethered. It's a pretty flimsy defense, though, for an entire back rank. King f1. Queen a6. 
king literally anywhere, right? <laughs> well, so, no, but queen f1, there was queen a6 winning for black. Oh, king f1, queen a6. Very nice. So, of course, he saw that in like a millisecond and played king h2. <laughs> yeah. And that's not an easy move to see. Queen a6. No. Like a weird I, square. I, it is a very missable move. And it's the game is essentially dead. somehow over. Yeah, it's just dead. <laughs> it's okay, demonstrating so he sees it anyway. Queen a6. Oh, there's queen f5. Oh, that was a terrible blunder. I jinxed him. Queen f5, rook h, h8. Now he has to move his queen back. And now is black like winning after g5? <laughs> there's g5. Queen there's two. all sorts of fun stuff here. Wow, what a crazy turnaround. This is not over. Don't trust the eval bar here. Rook f1, bishop e5. White can still hold on. Yep. But my goodness, queen f5 was just a little impatient there from Nakamura. Queen f5 is, is a flashy move, but rook h h8 by Giri, he saw the potential trick, queen f5, and he had the move ready. Okay, rook f1. G5. A lot of pawns. The, the, the black can take here. Yeah, I guess, this, I guess this makes sense. I would have just like thrown g5 in. Yeah, rook f3. Rook f3 wins the game immediately. Oh, yeah? That, that looks very strong. It's going to be a resignation from Hikaru. Yep, that's a huge move. And a big win by Anish, who cuts the lead to five. This is going to be the last game of the three-minute. He has to win it, and then he needs a miracle in the bullet. That's basically what he has to do. Oh, this line. Now you say, oh, this line. Is this like you've seen Nakamura play this? I've seen Nakamura. Before, I've seen only Nakamura play this, actually. I mean, Hikaru Khan <laughs> with queen takes d5. That's like a bad Scandi. Yeah, but he, he, of course, he he usually gets slightly better positions. <laughs> yeah, that's how it usually works. I mean, the the engine is like, you know, who the hell is this clown? Like, the engine the is, just is like throwing a fit. Like, no time plus for this. Two. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crazy evaluation, but that's just more two. proof to the pudding that Carl never needs an opening advantage, and yeah, he often, just doesn't, doesn't have care. One doesn't care, literally. Yeah, he just literally doesn't care. I mean, he's going to go C5 at some point, I would imagine. Obviously, you've got to watch for D5 or, and Knight B5. Oops, I did not. <laughs> that. I don't know why I just put a Knight on E4 when I didn't. Bishop H6, sure. But you're not really, like, you're not doing much with your advantage with a move like Bishop H6. Like, it's just not decisive enough, it feels like, for how good the yeah, position should be. Well, again, plus 1.5. And how do you improve your position? Unclear. Yeah, I, I always say, like, when your position is... When you take a subpar position from the opening, like, let's say, Hikaru's, it's so bad that every move you do it seriously improves it. So you're always making good moves. <laughs> Whereas, right. like, if you're in Geary's position, your position is so good, man, that... You could be making moves that worsen your position, like Bishop F1, for example. It's like, it's yeah, really and it's, it is an, it's a funny point, but it's, and it is very true. You, you have the sense of accomplishment when you're, yeah, when you're worse and your position gets better. I, I like the way Geary is playing this so far. The question is, where is the actual progress going to come from? Because Black still doesn't have any targets in his position. Yeah, completely agree. Um, doesn't need to react to this just yet. Sometimes a devious move, I was just going to say, is bishop g5. So he's playing bishop g5 on one side of the board, but he's looking at knight a4 takes b6 on the other. Ooh, so, so if you go h6, bishop takes f6, and black, that's the target, Anish. Tar <laughs> that's the target he targets. <laughs> yep, he's targeting b6. The, I the think target he's targeting targeting the rooks now. Do you think, do you do you know where he shops? I think he shops the target. Walmart? Oh, yeah, it's target, of course, yeah. <laughs> I missed the target on that one. <laughs> I mean, Hikaru's going to have a big target on his back during the bullet here, though. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, rook c7, kind of gross-looking move. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> b6 still falling, but he's going to be doing it in a, a different way. He's he going to be to... doing it in a different way and going to Tarjay. Okay. My poetry career just started and ended all in the same breath. Amazing, amazing compliment you just gave yourself. I think I heard the word career. 
right. <laughs> my abortive career. <laughs> Attempted career. My stint, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so trade on d7. Now, clearly, white has to decide between queen f4. I suppose knight takes b6 immediately is going to be met with rook takes d4. I don't know if this is what white wants. Maybe even, I don't know. Yeah, queen f4, knight h5. You just don't feel like you're getting enough. And what about just, yeah, I was, I was actually about to say bishop e3. It's kind of that yeah, but uh, attempt to try to... Oh, but hang on, if you win your pawn here, you're opening up the bishop. Not yeah, but bad. now the d5 square belongs to black. Obviously, it's not sufficient compensation for everything that's going wrong in black's position, but that's how these comebacks start, right? It's one little thing like the d5 square, then Ikaru turns, you know, one penny into, into, <laughs> into yeah. a million pounds of gold. And we're, we're seeing it happen, right? e8 to d6 incoming and the knight might end up on f5 okay before creating I mean, and pushing the pass pawn complex going to be like better soon he's not careful right <laughs> i mean the bishop trade is not out of the question although pawn takes e5 does establish the stronghold on f6 queen f4 okay queen yeah rook uh, can go pretty nicely up to d4 and you know you're guarding the b pawn but you're also ready to swing to h4 in a lot of cases and you know queen g5 gets met by rook g4 so i'm a big rook d4 guy here and then Icar is probably going to go h5 to stop rook g4 watch that happen a rook a1 queen g5 yeah uh, ooh, okay that's never a comforting <laughs> sign <laughs> right yeah however i suppose Black does not really have a way to continue the initiative. Rook Maybe C7. just seven or rook b a eight. Oh, Hikaru going with my recommendation as usual. <laughs> Whereas your move, rook b a eight, was kind of crappy, if I may Inferior say. Inferior so and not selected. <laughs> right. Queen f four encroaching upon. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> there's so many almost working things right right there's h5 g5 queen g3 yeah there's there is like a rook c5 bishop f3 business there's like rook coming to b1 at the end of lines I don't, <laughs> rook c5 is like what's going on there when you hear the term hanging by a thread i think this is a good position to use as a description eight seconds and this rook a1 good alert move though stop bishop takes f3 was being threatened mm -hmm. so Still, still a shot here in each with nine seconds. He's doing a really good job at keeping everything defended because it's that's like the hardest job that you could give to anybody when you're low oh, yeah. on time to just like watch every angle, every side of the board. Here comes like h4, king g7, g5. Yeah, I mean, and and he's played very good quality chess so far. I think he, he has no reason to be embarrassed. It's just that, you know, to compete with Ikaru in a match, really good, great, none of that is enough. You need a completely different caliber, and over. Rook A1 mate is also mate. not going to cut it. I, I mean, how for how long can you do it, right? The defending every single threat is, is I mean, it's so hard to do. Right, when Ikaru has forever yeah. uh, to think about it, and you move. Well, that concludes the three-minute portion, and it's a forgettable one for Anish. And another masterful, masterful performance by Hikaru Nakamura, who jumps out to a six-point lead. And what I'm happiest about is that we have disgraced and dishonored the smarter chess prediction, <laughs> which is totally wrong. So, yeah, that's the what, real win for us. It is, and a win for Hikaru Nakamura, who jumps out to a six-point lead. And Ish needs a miracle in the bullet, but that's why we watch the SEC. We know that miracles can happen. The players are going to catch a breath. So will we. We'll be back. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Just back in a few.
Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We've got the second match of today's doubleheader. Hikaru Nakamura facing off against Anishkiri. Daniel Naraditsky bringing you the commentary with Aman Hamilton. Aman, uh, can't say it's been an unexpected match so far, but this is the greatest part. We get to laugh at the at the three plus one prediction. Exactly. It was not a one point win by Hikaru. It was what? A four point win? Yeah, I don't even multi -play. care. I think he was seven to three. Yeah. So you called it exactly four points. And ha, ha, ha. The, the, the only person who was uh, maybe unexpected for was Smarter Chess himself. Um, but uh, Geary, as you uh, pointed out right before the break, is basically going, you know, enter the, enter the dragon. He's going into Hikaru Nakamura's wheelhouse, the bullet portion. And he's got to come out of there with way more points than Naka himself. So, hey, all I can say is good luck. Yeah, I mean, the increment definitely works in Geary's favor. Now, let's be very clear. He's not a bullet slouch. I've played bullet with him. I've seen him play bullet. His rating says a lot, 31-37. But yep. you know who's, whose rating says a lot as well? Hikaru and Nakamura. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is that everyone can be a slouch when they're playing against Hikaru like right yeah, like a great player can just look like he can make great players look like slouches and pull it yeah I mean that's the definition of that's the that's just how these things happen right that's the definition of a great player that's what Michael Jordan did to opposing teams in the basketball court um so okay so we have a Grunfeld type position once again this time with proper colors because generally Hikaru had that with white Mm -hmm. and the funny thing about bishop e6 is that after okay it goes knight c4 yeah, yeah this, th that's this what looks... that can't okay this is that, that can't happen too fast and sloppy blundering the pawn and the car is not going to forgive that mm, bishop no. e2 this is going to be a very <laughs> unsurprising did they realize victory. it's a bullet game and not a 10 second game <laughs> yeah he's just going to finish with more time than he started with <laughs> Yeah, and then it's like, when you finish with more time than you started, it's definitely a statement. But when you finish with more time than you started and you lose... And you it's lose. Like a, it's just a weird statement. <laughs> That's like the, when you enter the tilt zone. Yes. Oh, I've had many games where I finish... Okay, I want to say... Usually I play with that increment, but basically I finish with almost as much time as I started. And I started with like three minutes. I finished with 246. <laughs> and I get crushed. And then you start blundering pieces and just continue playing instantly. Yeah, yeah, as is all part of the plan. <laughs> right, right. The self punishment must proceed. This is according clinic, to schedule. By the way, this is like this is, you could win this game in a number of ways, but the way he has done it, I mean, look at those rooks: h six, h eight, doing zero. Do you remember when Hikaru had his his rooks at an open file on a closed file, and the file opened up? Uh, over under on whether the h pawn would disappear. Okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> First bullet game goes to Hikaru. Lead balloons to seven. He's and the game springs. Score. Very common mistake in that position, just to quickly show, is a lot of people take on C4, especially who aren't familiar with this line. Yes. Oops. And it's so natural yeah, to is, do. <laughs> this is basically all well known. Um, Pretty even. I mean, Cambridge Springs is one of the most underrated uh, slop setups, in my opinion. I mean, white has not found a clear advantage there, but black has to be ready to play a relatively passive position for a while. Right. Not to everyone's uh, liking, um, but the thing is, when you're playing bullet, I think this is the ideal situation for Hikaru to be in. It's like a totally equal position. Um, if the onus is on white to prove something, and if you're not proving anything, you're just taking time off the clock for no reason. Plus, you could lose the game as well. Yeah, and you just, in these equal end games, you just always feel like you're getting outplayed even when you're not. And we've talked about that. I would consider going knight f4 here, trading mm -hmm. off a pair of knights. And this bishop is not, you know, not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree, but if it moves to f6, it might become the sharpest tool in the shed. Watch out for like, you know, you move the knight on e2, bishop b4 appears on the board. Nice move. 
Right, a Probably four undermining the knight. Bring the king or something. And bishop a5 check is just something to watch for. King f1. And this move, missed by, missed by Giri. The knights, like if those were two bishops, they'd be a little more clumsy. But yeah, two knights are very uh, they're hit or miss, whether they can be coordinated well. Wow. Yeah, they're not the fastest runners on the marathon track or the sharpest shooters on the basketball court. But actually, somehow, Giri has managed to tie Hikaru down to the B5 pawn. So now what? Mm, how do you add the pressure? <laughs> That's the issue. Yep, you have to work so hard it. as white here. You have to like that's, win the pawn and then move your B pawn. <laughs> right, but first you're still in the win the pawn stage. And that's always the question of the car. How do you make further progress? And what a trap. Knight takes B5, rook D8. It makes you calculate that yep. and waste time. Yeah, plus you can just go rook D2. So you're not even... Like, right, it's not like, oh, you won the pawn. Wow, congrats. <laughs> you're still going to lose the game. Yeah. Okay, this is very unclear, but after F5, I think Black's got the practical advantage. Yep, your, your oh. rook is not going to be trapped in there. G4, good. F4, resign. Yep. This is over. G3, G3. oh, God. G2? <laughs> G2, G2 is pretty gross. No, 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 knight G5, knight F3. <laughs> Hikaru was the, calculating that for sure. Yeah, he, he definitely was. Knight C5? Yeah, and Hikaru's going to, like, see through these tactics. Like, no, but knight c5 tactics. and e3 was a, was a shot. Knight c5 and e6, I mean, it was a shot. Yeah, and then you know, it would yeah. be short-lived, and he'd win anyway. <laughs> right. Ooh, forks. <laughs> King e3 is another fork. There are some dreams that you make a draw here, but unfortunately, this is just winning. The, the knight is no match for the, the king and rook. Actually... With the bishop, uh, these nice positions can move. be a draw. Oh, man. That's so nice. It's nasty. The knight's going to get trapped. Now, okay, when it's do I just... didn't play knight d2? Yeah. I mean, you might, have, you might as well give it a shot. Because rook f2, knight d3. Right. Logical. Well, that's... I, I hope Anish is not... Uh, reenacting my old way of tilting, which is just to resign early. We've talked about that, I think. Like, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't resign necessarily on move one, but I would make one bad move. And if I was already tilted, I'd just be like, all right, I'm slightly worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, for, I, you know, but it's the genre. Like, of course, he's going to beat me easily. So I'm just going to yeah, resign. Yeah. He, let it's me save that, some time. I got double pawn. Right. Over. <laughs> knight takes d6. Speaking, knight takes d6. Knight takes d6. Just say it a few more times. <laughs> I think yeah. if I say it a few more times, you might actually do it. Knight d5. Well. Oh, nothing is working. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hopeless. If you can't speak a move into existence, then I don't know then what else. There's no hope for humanity. <laughs> One of those typical Hikaru maneuvering positions, e5. Yep. 95. We can speak okay, that way. So, yeah, I did. It, I meant the square. I didn't actually mean pawn e5. Well, it's the I, new I, way of saying moves. <laughs> all I know was I said 95 and it happened. So I just have more control of the universe than you. Yeah, but I said the e5 square. So you're like Newton and I'm like Leibniz. You know, they're <laughs> going to give you all the credit, but let's remember who actually recommended that move first. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Do no work and take all the credit. That's fine. <laughs> totally fine with me. Yeah. That's why we make such a great team. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, Anisha's up in exchange. Hikaru has this knight entrenched on b5. Bishop takes mm -hmm. c5 is another threat here. Are we going to see g4 after this bishop moves? Yeah, yes, that looks we like are. a. That looks like a fun bullet move. You just, you just kind of. Oh, I would have gone. I, I would think G three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah G three even better. That was definitely the move. But uh, okay, this is how he just chooses to shut black down. Yep, it is Bishop F two. Black just has nothing, right? There's no pawn push that looks good. <laughs> yeah, but what is White's long term game here? A five, 
or Rook D2, Rook A2. Yeah, but the problem is with White, I don't think you need a long-term game plan. Like Do Rook D3, don't... take the pawn. Yeah, Rook D3, take this pawn. Queen, queen G4, Rook takes H3, and the queen is strapped. <laughs> Yeah, black went from queen h8, bishop g7 to bishop a1, queen b2. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> there was an, 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 an inversion. King g7, rook h8. Had to be tried. King g7. He has to play d5. Just, just chuck that He's thing in just, there. once you lose confidence, you just, you don't play active moves until it's too late. That This still looks okay for black. Yeah. You could take it and then play bishop c5 and trade the rogues, take back, and it's like, you know shouldn't really lose it with that many pawns as white no I, I think black is not worse here d5 dc Ooh, bishop can have bishop and a5 rook a1 pick off that pawn no this is winning for black i think oh take that oh this Rooks. is <laughs> This is annoying, right? Bishop e7, c5, bishop d6. Yeah, and Hikaru is going to find a way to create a fortress. Now, Black's approach is pretty simple. White's pawns are terribly located. Ooh. Now, I don't like that move at all mm, by Geary. No, no. Was, why, Trey, you can always do that. Why if rush? It, if anyone wins, let's just say it's White, because like right. the, the, the real winner here is the fact that he's getting so much time off the clock. Rook c4. <laughs> uh oh okay rook, rook g6, g6 yeah. only move to to draw <laughs> in... <laughs> to scrape a draw oh that's a tricky little line but it yeah and play this for a thousand years i mean the thing is you're not even going to win the c pawn no you can come pretty close though there are definitely some tricks involving you know the right check and yeah but Promise you can never even get the bishop. To, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he took some rating off of Hikaru. Yeah, that's really. I am. I am eagerly watching as <laughs> Gary is. So does he, he finish over thirty four hundred? Well, yeah, and he's he's going to the barber shop, you know, for a couple of draws, just you know, cut the tops off. Exactly. <laughs> there. Tidy it up. Bishop Bishop H four this time. Yeah, that is an, a rating that if Hikaru ends with, he's going to have to remedy that night, the same night. He's... I like a4. You follow up with knight b3 and mm -hmm. knight b2 or knight b1. Yep, and you've got all of these dark squares. We've seen a couple of games this match. a5 is classic to prevent black from playing a5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, minus 8 for a draw is pretty hardcore. It really Rook is. FC1 and Knight C5. No, Anisha's playing great this game. Wait, there's no way. Was it really minus eight? So I, I feel think like if so. It's, it, I feel like if it's minus eight, doesn't that mean that it's minus 16 for a loss and plus zero for a win? There's no way it's plus zero. Yeah, no. I, I, I didn't know what his rating was before, and I'm just trusting the chat, which is, generally speaking, <laughs> a very wise course of action. <laughs> you can tell it's been a long day. You're Daniel trusting the chat. Like, right. I mean, this is the ultimate sign that... Good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, white seems to have all the positional advantages, but the A5 pawn is weak. Yeah, I mean, yeah that is true. Imagine being Trust. known for that. That's, 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 that's like the thing about you. It's like, yeah, you're just weak, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's how right that's remembered. your that's your calling card queenie two queenie one not a great sign queen takes before it blunders the pawn yep that's um, anish is taking queen. a while before taking it okay queen takes B7. wait a second <laughs> queen takes no B7. no no just just rook takes c7 rook takes c7 and knight c5 just simple eh so oh, but oh, bishop c8. Oh my goodness. Queen b6. Great move. Knight c6. And I feel like there's a piece that, you know, somewhere you're going to earn a piece in this line. Right. But how? No, that is a brutal move. But bishop b6. Somehow Hikaru is going to keep all of his minor pieces. I mean, it's, it's like just, black magic. It truly. Queen takes c6. Yeah. Okay. It's over. 
think that I think this will be a loss. I'd, I'd like to believe that at least. I mean, Queen D7 is a bad move, and Hikaru's going to go Knight D1, Queen E1, and probably give him A. Queen takes D5, Queen check, King H2, Queen C7, classic blunder. Right. <laughs> it's like no, that is a classic blunder. Right, right when you're going to put the whole game away and the fans go well, wild. I love this move because Geary's heading to E7. Oh, but two seconds, anything could happen. Okay. So, oh! Knight D4. Oh, my four. Oh, no! <laughs> Caro is so resourceful. It's it so frustrating just, to play against. It, it is uncanny. The what? Knight G4, Queen H4, Queen one Are you kidding me? Spotted in I mean, you know, half you, a second, obviously. Yeah, and 95 was the move there for Anish. And basically, there were like two bookends. This happened one of the first games of the match, and now toward the end of the match, it, it happened again. And they're repeating. Wow, this is major deja vu vibes. They're like repeating the same opening, which is just <laughs> bad for white. But yeah, it's just bad. Care. <laughs> B4, Bishop C1. You can even... Okay, hang on. It's not so simple. Yeah, minus 8. <laughs> I think I have a theory that part of the reason this is happening is because Ikara has not played Bullet in a long time. Maybe the, the K factor is slightly higher than usual. Damn, that, that must be... Uh... That's a good strat. I gotta remember that one. Just take take a little right. bit of time off, and then uh... <laughs> don't play for like six months, and then that already that part of the plan is going to be hard. Not to mention the part of the plan where you then proceed to win all of your games. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's a hack for Hikaru only. Right. <laughs> it's right. like those click those clickbait articles. Uh, experts don't want you to know. This is how you get free food at Chipotle. Or like, this is how you... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hikaru, I made $18,000 a day, you know, by staying home and playing chess. Right. <laughs> this is a pawn down position that just looks so good for white. <laughs> right, it does. You know, he's got so many moves in the bank. King G2, H4, Queen G4, double rooks, and the knight on C4 reigns supreme. Yeah, but I mean, if Black can get Knight B6 in, it's one of those positions where in a classical game, somebody might even take Black, but in Blitz yeah. and Bullet, these positions are a no-brainer. Just White is dominating mm -hmm. for the most Unless, part. Unless he covers Black, then Black wins. Right, then Black is to be preferred. <laughs> exactly. King H8, some prophylaxis, maybe? I mean, Knight F6... In some version, with or without rook takes d5 is going to come. So king h8, I think, is what you want, but he might be concerned about take on d5 and e6. Good job by Anish today. I, I guess you played d4. No, not even d4. Six. No, black should be winning now. Yeah, like you have weak light squares, but you just play c4, c3, and who cares? <laughs> Now let's see how Hikaru saves this one. <laughs> yeah, because that's really why at this point, I mean, is Bishop F6 playable? Rook E1. Oh, one of those moves. You got to go back to E7 and... I like this move, though. Queen E7 feels correct. Yeah, Rook takes E5. Good pre-moving. He's going to go Rook D1 and Rook D7, yep. and he's going to mate him on... Rook D8. Yeah. Can you take it? No. Oh, oh no. H5. It's... H5. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just, it, oh, queen takes d8. I think the queen takes d8 was winning for black. I don't think Ikaro had a clear follow up there. Queen f5, oh, g5, a... and then g4, king. Oh my goodness, mate on five. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, it never ends. It, it, it's like it's so impossible ruthless. to make progress. Ikaro has so many tricks. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. King h8. Finally, he has to take this. It's still not over. He's going to a5. A5. <laughs> Are you serious? And he's going to draw this. Yeah, I think he's going to Oh, queen b7, actually. I think he's going to Oh, win. no, but queen b7. I still think no, he wins. Anish needs to put his queen on b7 and start pushing that pawn to, to e queen e5. Unless he takes a draw here. Oh, my God. Again, more queens. He better repeat. Otherwise, I swear there's, a, there's just... This is a some, no, how he win. wins these is he 
he basically no but and you should play h5 or something yeah okay he's gonna lose his queen somehow or get mated on g5 <laughs> it's gonna be one but of the way things. that i'm thinking about it is the way that you know everyone feels when they play Hikaru that like oh he's gonna win or he's gonna find a way to win it's like he's he's in your head with, without you even knowing it <laughs> there's some clock being milked here because he can check all the way to d7 and d8 right yeah yeah, yeah. d8 oh, d7 b8 a7 a8 b7 c8 d7 <laughs> another insane save yeah just a big fat minus eight for Hikaru. Right. I mean, he's lost uh, 24 points in the last Hikaru three Hikaru wins these games, by the way, sometimes within four moves. Oh, you mean the Gurganidze games? The, 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 these positions, when White plays G4? <laughs> it, it, yeah, no, I was just going to say, it is impossible to play him in these positions. Like, yeah, this he takes F5, and then he always puts the Knight on E6. Or he'll induce C5, and then go Knight D7, Knight F8, Knight E6. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's crazy. It's a... Uh... He has yeah, his wheelhouse positions that he's good at, and that's exactly what you should do. And, and White's much better in most of them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like it looks terrible for Black, but there's no way to make progress. Queen e6, get the king around. White already is quite aimless. Yep. This always happens in these positions. Hikaru wants like c5 or something. He doesn't need to really do anything. Like Right. Bishop f2, queen e1 is white saying that I've got an idea, but black should always have rook h8 there. And... You're right. Oh, Normally, I mean... when you have a space disadvantage, you struggle to, you know, okay, draw another. But, you another... know, if Hikaru wanted, he could take minutes off the clock there. He's oh, not yeah. Doing that. I mean, he, something is really, really funny. Like, he is just, it's like he's listening to a, uh, I don't know. I'm forgetting the names of all comedians right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like listening to some comedian. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it sounds sounds good when you say that. Yeah, it's like he's listening <laughs> to a comedian. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Takes e5, bishop c5 check. No. Okay. Hmm. e5. Okay, carving out the d5 square for the knight. I like that move, but you know, f5 gets met with knight takes e5, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, knight takes c4 to follow. That's right. Knight takes c4, knight. Okay, so c5. Right. Ooh, allowing d5. Oh, he wants knight b6 here, which is an important follow up move. Still, I mean, take a take on d5 here, and Hikaru stands better. Yeah, this is comfortable. This is it's just one of those end games that just like slowly starts to go bad or even not so slowly. Yeah. Eight it's... minutes remaining in the match. And the king sits really nice on e4, strangely enough. Like you put your king right in the middle of the board. And yeah, who would know that the king is good in the center in an end game? Wow. I didn't. <laughs> well, didn't when realize. we say the center, people misunderstand, you know, king e2. No, it has to you've got to be e4, man. Like literally the center. <laughs> centralized gotta, gotta go the full nine yards okay so we have a trade of bishop for knight knight d5 now obviously if you're white you got to be very careful knight d5 there might even be rook takes d5 c2 and bishop a3 mm -hmm. hikaru yeah. is known to blunder such things regularly <laughs> yeah always does <laughs> and already a fantastic start you i mean if you take this with the rook and go into that end game i don't i don't know if i trust it i don't know either because trade can i d5 i guess black should be able to draw this and take another eight points off of picard's bullet right <laughs> this yeah it's just like he's just farming elo okay he's gonna plant the king on d5 the knight on b5 and play so five. methodical it's a really nice game you can do nothing as black you just sit here and in bullet it's so easy to, to tilt this position away yeah probably at this point a draw 
definitely but not a draw you're making easily no and, and not a draw you're probably making against sicaro <laughs> yes yeah, so not a draw you're making at all <laughs> i think g5 is important to throw in yeah i i think this was crucial it without this move he was trying to sneak his king to d7 and white would be winning mm -hmm. and now the king gets to e6 bishop bishop b2 <laughs> yeah I, I, that's actually what i was thinking because here okay. you're still not out of the woods. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not. You're gonna find a way to him. There we go. Yeah, and you're gonna play gonna be worse. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, you're gonna just have to prove it. Take the pawn and just show you that he beat you, and he's gonna White, make the draw. He was the one who stalemated you. It was not exactly. the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny repetition. Oh, it's minus seven now. So, oh, there we go. Hikaru has reached his cruising altitude of, yep, of you know, <laughs> a, a of big eight, eight point, point lead. <laughs> yep, exactly. It had to be eight points with you know five minutes remaining, and then H five comes out. Then of the you have to roll out the champagne corks pop, and the H five and A five is played. You might we might even see a bond cloud in the next game. Right. I have a feeling Hikaru is going to play a bond cloud in the next game. I have and a premonition. I think like previously. He was 3377. Now he's 3371. So Hikaru is actually going big brain here by lose by you know giving up so much rating. Previously, he's now losing less rating for every draw. Oh, Just genius so calculation. Yeah, it's a win overall. So he's actually not he's actually gaining rating because he's losing less of it. He's so losing he's... less. So instead of <laughs> minus eight, it's minus six now. So that's so like he plus gains two, two every points. time. Right. So he's he's gaining rating basically. He's up rating right now. That's <laughs> amazing stuff by Hikaru. All right, so queen g8, a typical maneuver, preparing g5. And we've transposed somehow into one of those Karo constructors that we had earlier in the match. Knight f4 is an idea here for black. Yeah, it's one, one of those doesn't... moves that you play, and they go king h2, and you're like, you go back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> didn't really think it through that far. <laughs> yeah, it was more of a one-ply decision. <laughs> Okay, a5 looks good. Another another just, locked up position. Yeah, it's it's optical the advantage. Like it just looks good. I'm not sure if it's enough. Um, rook c7 and <laughs> it's so annoying. He's gonna do the. I would play rook b6 here. I mean, if you're doubling, do it well. So king c8 and then he queen, wants queen to go rook f8. See, and what would be great about having a rook on b6 here is that you can move the other one out of the way. And then you'd have rook takes b7 threats, which is now not a threat. Because if right. you take on b7, you, you give up the rook on b1. So you need That's that rook. That's very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good point. Good point. It would be also, yeah, rook b2. Now, even here, gosh, there's no tactics. Oh, Hikaru barely escapes by one tempo. Yeah, pretty amazing. He's going to reroute the king. But white should be playing for f3 here. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, Weird. it's the definition of from the frying pan into the fire. I think I was gearing up for that. Where is F3? Like, <laughs> put this move on the board, bud. Yeah, put this move, eh? Queen B2, Queen B2. Okay. For some reason he pre-moved Rook B3 and then back to B2. <laughs> Queen. Queen there's not much happening here. I don't know where F3 is, but we're not. Well, both sides that. are preparing for the opening of the F file. I think Black's doing so much more successfully than White. Here comes the king again. You've got this pawn on F6 with like three major pieces around it. It's like a cheerleading routine. You've got all the guys right, it's so, supporting from the bottom. This might be the weirdest. I, Black brought his king from the king side to the queen side, then back to the king side. Back to the queen side and now back to the king side again. Now, like, <laughs> fully broken. <laughs> this no one wants the... to take the other guy's pot. This might be the most convoluted three-move repetition I've ever seen, as well as the most amount of consecutive draws I've ever seen in the SEC bullet match. Okay, I guess it won't be a draw. <laughs> the floodgates have, have opened. There. All right, here we go. Are they trying? Maybe they're trying to ensure that this is the last game of the match, but... I don't think that's going to happen. That was quite clever, though, by Yuri. Now he has Rook F4. Four. Now this white should win this. What are you thinking about train rooks? 
Oh my God. What? Why would you do that? That is just unthinkable. Now you just basically lose. <laughs> Right, right. Now, uh, well, I think you should be disqualified from all tournaments. Yeah. I mean, this is a ridiculous technique in the end game. No, but no, really, no, Rook no. F4 was screaming. Man, oh, man. And after all, a draw. A different repetition. Right. There have been a this lot of draws. It, 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 I'm sure there's a stat, you know, like most draws in an SCC match. I feel like this is it. We're experiencing this in the last, like, seven games yeah they made <laughs> quite a few of them indeed quite a few of them indeed and yeah i've seen better opening play by white in in my life but <laughs> yeah it's not it's going to be purely cosmetic of course it's an eight point lead another commanding match among nobody wins matches like this i mean just wire to wire it was tied briefly at the start, but once he starts pulling away, like that's it. Yep. You know, once the three pointers start to fall, it's just you're busted. So quickly, he played an 81, like Rook C4, it's King D3. Rook C4, right? King D3, yeah. Okay, now it kind of backfired on him a little bit. <laughs> so King D3, Rook D4, Bishop A3, and then like Knight F2, or Rook takes A4, B3. Yeah. Do you see oh, how quickly he played in 81, that blunder? Do you see how quickly he played that? Uh, he, did he play it pretty quickly? It was a pretty fast, it was like a fast blunder. Really was it played blunder. with like less than five seconds? Really impl time? impressive blunder. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, bishop a3, rook a4 would be one way the game could liquidate. Black should not lose this. Can't, should. Right, in theory, hypothetically. Okay. Throw in rook c4 and knight a4, maybe? Well, king b1, probably not the best. He's going to bring the rook around to d7. Ah, yes, classic. Rook behind the pawn. Excellent. Rook technique. behind the pawn. There we go. Time for the, time for the inevitable advance of the passer. <laughs> I, hey, I joke, but I'm actually pretty serious. I think that was a great plan. Yeah, but now White is somehow getting and White's going to be better. <laughs> okay. Thank you, three. Look at this. These knights are just jumping everywhere. Check. Careful. E5. Position sharpens, and Hikaru threatens E6, and he very much is still playing for a win here. Yeah, the game's over, actually. White wins. <laughs> <laughs> I think White's actually winning. Because it's not about the quantity of fast pawns, but about the quality. Look at this restraint. Like, just the move knight to f4. He knight wants to play f4. e6 with, you know, more poison than just the pawn. He wants it's knight just, g6. And I, what I said, I was not joking when I said, it doesn't matter how much material you leave him with. Whatever he has, it's like a chef, you know? broccoli and brussels sprouts and some sort of spoiled meat it's like the tv shows chopped like you can make a delicacy for sure and that's what we always see here and it's already look at the eval bar oh my goodness he's coming to e8 with a rook and i think he's gonna win this game it's kind of like what you're taught to say as a kid trash talking in bug house when someone says like hey show me what material you have you're like hey what do you have you're supposed to say mating material all the time right what do you have there mating material yeah Everything Enough to is beat you. material. And that's the same okay. with the car here. And a, a draw to end the match? No, he's playing for it. 93. He wants to win. Time's up. I don't know you about know, he that. Wants to, he wants this game to be uh, that extended. That was an interesting choice. Yeah, I, I think this game might end in a draw. What do you think? But I don't really know. It's, it's kind of hard to say. No. No, I'm going to go with uh, win for Hikaru. Win, yeah, I think that's a reasonable, you know, there, there's room for disagreement here. Is Hikaru gonna like, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Rook 93, he's like just trying not to play the move in AP2. Right, it takes B2, <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> but the real test is gonna be does he take the bishop on F6? Okay, at this point, oh, he takes this. Well, because yeah, now he can play on. All three. right. Okay, how about, how about taking the pawn on B2? 
Okay, he, now he, he wants has king to. a2. He wants to play king a2, but of course and it he... almost works because after king c2 yes. it's stalemate. <laughs> king but c3 cold shower. He didn't want to lose that much, right? And king c3 is indeed a cold shower, but a cold shower for Anish Giri, who loses by eight points. Yet another masterful performance by Hikaru Nakamura. Seriously, I mean, there isn't much to say. I'm on this. Is there's a reason why he won three out of the four years. No, he's a phenomenal player, and he's, it was just on display today. I think it started uh, very close, and Kiri had tons of chances. But that's the thing. In a long match, Hikaru Nakamura, you know, it's hard to find a rival because he just keeps up the same level of consistency, and you have to play. You have to have your best chess day just to be competitive. And you, know. and you have to go into the bullet with a lead, and then in the yes. bullet, <laughs> just like they said of Alexander Alakai, you got to beat him in the opening middle game and end game. Well, you got to beat Hikaru in each segment, and when he's on form, that's well nigh impossible to do. But we will have the players for an interview right on the other side of the brace. You're watching the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Player interviews coming up. Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We are very glad and thankful to have the players here for a quick interview, Hikaru Nakamura and Anish Giri. Hikaru, congratulations on another excellent win. Uh, it felt like throughout the match, you were not necessarily getting the best objective positions out of the opening, but you seemed very comfortable with those positions. Do you think that was one of the keys to the match? And what were your feelings about the match overall? Yeah, I mean, I think, first of all, a lot of credit to go to Anish. He knows his theory quite well, and he got some very good positions in the Italian, obviously. Um, I mean, White's, White's a little bit better, and uh, I chose not to play, let's just say, the most uh, most testing lines. I, I think that's a simple way of putting it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Anish, Anish held his own. But again, I like, like the match against Peter, there was always the big elephant in, in the room, which is that if it gets to the bullet portion and Anish isn't ahead by quite a big margin, I think I, I always have some chances. So uh, it, was, it was pretty smooth, but there was this one moment when I just uh, allowed this uh, queen takes d4, knight takes f2, which was insane oh, yes. because if I go rook h5, I'm winning. And I even saw rook h5. And then for some reason, I thought after bishop c1, queen d4, there was some tactic. Like, I don't know if I thought there was rook c4 or something, but... Uh, Why didn't you I mean, play at the thing. first place? It's not, the, the big, that um, after I went f3, you went king h1, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But you you could go queen h4, I think, right away without king h1. I thought that was stronger even. Yeah. Because if I go rook f6, mm -hmm. you have bishop c1 always. So I didn't see any counterplay there. Yeah, I think I thought just queen h4, you go like rook d8 and rook e2, and, and yeah, this was my plan. Yeah, but uh, I thought you have maybe bishop a3, then some. I yeah, but know, three rook f six. Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, I'm sure uh, in a slow game, it's it's probably winning. But uh, there, but yeah, I just kind of didn't couldn't find my way through. And then, I mean, but I think once I switched the Karo Khan from then on, it felt felt very very smooth, is is what I would say. That seems like a pretty good summary. I know all the chat was following along uh, with that one. Yeah, think, as yeah, as were we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only <laughs> obviously right there with you, uh, Anish. 
over to you. I mean, the uh, the match, I think you'd be the first to admit, you know, you're an underdog going in. Did you have it sort of in your mind as well, kind of like what Hikar was saying, that you felt like you needed to sort of overperform in the five and three minute portions and bullet was always going to be a struggle? Or um, no, I think, uh, I mean, okay, if I play a bullet specialist, you know, you have those feeder masters, you know, who are very good at bullets. Yes. Okay, but I mean, I play Hikaru. He's a top, top grandmaster in general. Uh, the Blitz also one of the strongest Blitz players in the world. Uh, strong, one of the strongest Trappist players in the world. So it's not like it's not like I have to own Hikaru in Blitz and then. Uh, <laughs> so it, it, I mean, that would be the strategy. I understand that strategy. If if I'm facing, yeah, you have those Kida masters or even 2003, you know, bullet specialists. Okay, that's I understand. My strategy was, uh, I I'm sort of uh, all I, I'm gonna try to play the bullet. Uh, you know. Um, I mean, I cannot play it on equal terms, but I'm, I, I think that uh, there are also so many bullet games that uh, even a four-point deficit is gone in uh, 10 minutes, yeah, sometimes. So exactly. you, have to, you have to hold your own in bullets in these matches, I think, uh, if you want to have a chance. So basically, I thought I had no chance. Let's sum it up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had no chance, but um, no, well, the problem with playing Hikaru in a long match is that uh, I like playing Hikaru in short matches. Because I think he's much more skilled in the long term in Bullet. Uh, you know, if you play a thousand games, Hikaru will do better. Obviously, is something he's been doing since his childhood. He's uh, probably uh, best or uh, after Magnus, the second best uh, Blitz player, Bullet player in the world. So uh, I, I'm happy when I play Hikaru in short matches, in a one game, uh, two game, three, four game matches, because then um, things can go uh, my way. But uh, yeah, in the long run, it's hard. Um, and uh, yeah, to be honest, the score could have been closer. I think right. this Karokan, it's, the thing is that I kind of, I'm fascinated by these positions. I find them very interesting, uh, you know, when Black goes G5. So I was kind of just, I just wanted out of curiosity to keep playing it because I sort of enjoy playing it, but I just kept losing the games. And of course, it would have been more efficient to not go there. I already lost to Hikaru in that position once before this, uh, in some other tournament, if Hikaru remembers, yeah, with this um, on chess.com, we played once in the, um, in the uh, for the teams, when I played for the chess brass, this arena. And uh, then I, I faced remember, you. Yeah. yeah, I faced you there as well. And I played E4, you played C6, and I also went for the same line and I lost the same way. Uh, I got some plus in the opening, probably. And then, um, uh, but <laughs> I, I kind of just, I just like these positions. I mean, okay, for classical games, for rapids or whatever. So I just wanted to, yeah, just to play those, but it just doesn't, didn't work for, for me. I mean, somehow it takes me a lot of time and uh, they keep. Um, the crisis dr drags out yeah like you keep moving we both keep moving you move faster uh, <laughs> and then when critical position comes around uh, it's very complex and you have much more time and okay you're you're a good player so it, it was just a bad idea i should never have gone in there in the first place and then the score would have been closer i don't think there was one moment in the match when i uh, won two games in a row hikaru maybe w was slightly annoyed and i uh, caught up in the score yeah in the five minute uh, portion but um yep. after that i lost two as well so um that was maybe the moment where i could have somehow tried to take over the control of the match but uh, otherwise it was just all about the difference and uh, mainly what i was annoyed about in in the end already was clear i'm not going to catch up ever but i was hoping to um win a win the game in the bullet portion uh, as well then at least i would have uh, uh, had the satisfaction of that but finally i didn't manage to convert a single game hikaru's defense is just incredibly slippery and uh, yeah it just didn't, didn't work out i had many good positions but i didn't win um, one that was really really good insight we appreciate that one last quick question for you hikaru before we let you go you're playing ding liren in the semifinals. have you faced him before and uh any lessons or things that you're going to apply from your sec experience so far to the semifinal match well, I mean, I, I guess first and foremost, uh, I was a little surprised that Ding Ding beat Levon, um, but he's, he's a very strong player, of course. I, I think yeah, we've, we've all played each other a million times. I mean, I don't know. I feel like uh, Anish, like I've, I've, pl I've played Anish probably like, I, I'm going to just estimate at least 200 games to include online, at least 200, if not more. And I think against Ding, it's actually quite a bit less, but it's still probably, I mean, something like 50 games. So uh, the main thing I would say is uh, what I always say, which is just, if I can keep it close until bullet, I think I have good chances. Um, but I, I feel that uh, the, the main thing is that I just just avoid the tilt. I mean, I think against Peter, I tilted. If I tilted the way that I did against Peter against Anish, I think I lose the match. So um, that's that's really just the main thing is to avoid the tilt. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Nice. Excellent. Well, we really appreciate your insight. And thank you for coming on for the interview. Uh, what an amazing match. And Hikaru, congratulations once again. Thank you. Guys. Have a good one, guys. Thanks, guys. All um, right. <clears throat> Daniel, Double header is, uh, in the books. <laughs> that is pretty uh, 
pretty exciting today. I mean, we just got two of the, uh, definitely the quality wise, some of the best matches you're going to get, obviously in the speech chess championship, no match is, is ever you know, not exciting. That's the best part about this. There are tons of top players in the world. And speaking of top players in the world and exciting matches, uh, Tanya, I think we have one of the best ones to look forward to. We do at 10 a.m. Pacific, Thursday, December the 9th. Yet again, in case you're experiencing chess withdrawals during the rest day, no, 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 no. We've got So Caruana for you, the next in this line of epic SCC matches coming your way on Thursday. And speaking of epic, uh, we've got a new video, a uh, new YouTube video that uh, we would like to announce where James Canty, none other than Canty, breaks down an amazing chess game between two engines, Dragon and Stofaleves. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So make sure to check out Stofles. I'm getting, I'm getting coached by Bic <laughs> on air. Stofles. Uh, see, not already not bad. Make sure to check out the chess.com YouTube channel for this very educational new video. And with that, I'm on. I think it. the time I got through it. <laughs> I got through the double header. It was an amazing day of chess. But now I think sadly it is time for us to pack up to take some rest and to prepare for more chess tomorrow morning as the world championship continues. What a month. Yeah. I mean, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, Daniel, because when I said you got through it, I meant you got through the name. Uh, oh, but well, yeah, there was too. a double header day of commentary and all uh, that. Hard well, that was minor. Doing. I'm sorry for yeah. drawing your attention to that minor <laughs> no, no, part. No, no. It's, it's, the hard but, part was uh, really the name. It's impressive. Well, yeah. Double header <laughs> shift for you, Daniel. Uh, it's uh, always a pleasure commentating alongside you and to get to do it in uh, a high profile match like this, where you get to see literally one of the best bullet bliss players in the world. Um, just basically do his stuff. Um, this was awesome. Likewise, Amon, this was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you to all of the chat and the audience on YouTube and Twitch and to our excellent production team for another flawless production, both morning and afternoon. And with that, we wish you a great rest of the day. We will see you later. World Championship resumes tomorrow morning. But for now, have a great rest of your day and goodbye. Bye, guys.